All right, we are back with week five of the Innovators Think Tank. Cash Money, Kev, how are you? Good, man. How... Yeah, okay, my mic's working. Awesome, awesome. Little mic test. We got you loud and clear, man. How are you? Great, brother, great. You know, I'm just excited for this Think Tank today. I've heard we got some uh, great speakers coming in. We're going to give it uh, five to ten minutes, I think, and they should just start rolling in. Yeah, exactly. We got a good lineup today, Benjamin. I see you uh, coming in quick as a listener right at two. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Think Tank, this is where we're bringing in anybody with a project, a business, an idea, and we're helping them collaborate with some big thinkers, people with different perspective, education, expertise. Uh, so we're really glad you're here, and uh, hopefully along the way you can c contribute, ask some questions, and always feel free to come up to the stage, my friend. So as uh, we get here in the next 10 minutes, as Cash Money Kev said, we'll have some people rolling on in. Uh, we got some awesome businesses joining us today. Awesome projects joining us. This is going to be sweet. Matia, we got you uh, with the mic as well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Doing very well. It's get the this, fifth uh, one. Computer booting up. One of the most hype. I'm excited. I heard about Mark, the listeners coming in, in as well. Excited to be here. Maddie, I'm I'm glad you're here to co-host, man. It's always always a pleasure to have you. Mark, how's it going, my friend? Welcome on into the think tank. We're we're casually just chilling here in the first, you know, five, ten minutes. We got some people coming. Uh, some great businesses. We'd love to have you on up to the front of the, the tank to chat. In the meantime, feel free to come on in. Um yeah, it's always great to have you. Hey guys. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm uh, I'm excited to uh, listen in and contribute where I can. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. No worries. When I was going over, uh, you know, potential people that could come on in and provide some insight, I, I was was looking at you, and it just seemed obvious to invite you on in. So, uh, I really appreciate you being here right at two. Generally, some people, you know, it takes a minute to trickle in, but once they do, we're we're rocking. No, it's my pleasure. So, my pleasure to be here, Josh, and uh, thanks for the kind words. Oh, no problem, Mark. Yeah, uh, I'm really glad you're here. So, this is the fifth time we've done this think tank. We've done it. The last four Saturdays at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, so now this being the fifth tank, I'm not sure, Mark, how familiar you are if you listen to anything in the past. But we're bringing anybody with a project, a business, or an idea to the front of this tank. We have a lot of great people coming with a different perspective, a different background, such as yourself, that can contribute to moving their project to the next level. Um, innovation can happen in real time, especially when we deploy some some meaningful tools when we talk about it through the lens of such. And uh, so I'm excited to have you here this week. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Cool. I'm excited too. Yeah, excellent. Benjamin, how's it going, man? It's great to see you in the tank. Have we had you, have we had you here before? You can give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. We are glad you're here now. That's all that matters. Hamza, welcome on into the Innovators Think Tank, my friend. We're, we're all hanging out, just having a quick chat before all of our businesses come. Benjamin, awesome to have you back, Ben. I'm glad you're here. Really, Hamza, thanks so much for dropping in. The Innovators Think Tank is, is just getting going, but you know we have a couple businesses that will be rolling in, talking about what they're doing. Um, some startups, people just with some ideas. So, you know, Hamza, we'd love to have you up to the stage. I'd love to chat with you and, and you know, hear about what you're doing. Uh, hear about your background, your expertise, you know, what you're interested in. And we're really excited to have you contribute or just listen in on the tank. So I'll give you that speaker invite. You can use that however you want, my friend. Great, guys. I'm going to take a moment here. I'm going to kick off a couple key invites. Daniel, B. Steven, two of my favorite people. Welcome on back into the tank, guys. B. Steven, it's so great to have you. Cash Money Kev waving at our boys. Hey, so for Mark, Hamza, Benjamin, the folks who are tuning in, maybe the first or second time this week, Daniel and B. Steven have, have been with us since, I think, week one or two. Um, so, you know, Steven, that being the case, thanks so much for coming in, man. I was really excited to have you. I wanted to make sure to, to touch base with you during the week and make sure you were coming. So uh, we're excited to have you. I do want to know, Steven, you've been in the tank four weeks now. And I'd love to hear a little bit from you on if it's had any impact in your mindset and your approach 
Um, if any of the things we've been talking about have helped you go to the next level, I, I'd love to have you, uh, you know, up to the stage and come talk about this. Let me kick you a speaker invite. Great. And Daniels, I think this is what week, week three, you dropping into the tank. I'd love to hear from you. I know we had you talking about a project. You were trying to recruit a team. We talked a while about aligning uh, your, your team members and attracting the right ones. Um, it, you know, I really liked that conversation we had, Daniel. So thanks so much for, for dropping in there. That was, you know, that was just great. If you want to come up to the front of the tank, yeah, please get in here. Let's. Daniel, welcome up to the tank, man. See, we got you connected now. So, hey, it's awesome to have all, all eight right now locked in. Daniel, if you want to tell these folks, even the new folks into the tank, over the last couple of weeks, how has this impacted you or, you know, helped you kind of navigate what you're working on, uh, given the lens of innovation that we've been able to kind of bring to the discussion and to your project? What's up, Steven? I've been here. Daniel, I think your mic was muted there. Steven, what's, what's up, brother? Tell us, tell us a little bit about how, how this space has, you know, maybe been impactful for you over the past couple of weeks. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for coming up as a speaker, my friend. Okay. Thank you um, for this great opportunity to, to speak on this space once again. Um, well, this space has been really impactful to me um, for the past, um, I think, four editions. Uh, I've been part of about four editions of this space, and um, I've been able to establish you know, real connections with people um, here on this space. I think after the first space, I... I, I no, welcome I, in, brother. Yeah, yeah I, I got to collaborate with some folks who, who reached out to me. I think Toby is, is one of those yeah, valuable connections I established in, in this space. And um, I think we've been working together and um, been doing great stuff together. Wow. Uh, like, um, even Steve, this I moment. love that. I want to just take a second that in this tank, not only are we collaborating, but we're connecting. And I remember that session when Toby and you were able to talk about how you could work together and to hear that you are already doing that just shows that this tank is, you know, not only connecting people, but helping them get to the next level. So, you know, I, I really, I want to say thank you for, for sharing that. Exactly, yeah. And um, the, this tank has been so resourceful. A lot of great speakers have been, have been coming up, you know, inspiring. And I've been, been greatly inspired, you know, with a, a lot of these sessions. And, um, you know, and especially during my, 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 um, the, the time I was brought up, yeah, I, I got several, several feedbacks and several resources uh, from Vinkitesh and and the likes of um, wow. uh, the the other guy I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah, so I got... Wow. Steve I think you're talking about so Vance. Much. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was Vance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Regardless, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah Vance, it'll be great. Mm. Um, regardless, Stephen, you know, you being here for now five weeks in a row, uh, and, and sharing a little bit on how it's impacted you is just so awesome. Noah, I see we, we have you up as a speaker, my friend. Uh, me and Cash Money Kev are making a, a big hoot about, you know, you coming in and, and being able to talk with us. If you're if you're live up on stage, my friend, I'd love to, to speak with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, no problem, Noah. So it, it seems that you're a man of action, a man of uh, many talents and out here ripping it up. <laughs> Would you mind telling everybody who's, who's maybe, you know, not sure, just a little bit of who you are and, and you know, what you do? <clears throat> yeah, well, thanks for the kind words. That's, that's very nice. Sure. Um, yeah, I just, I like building things. I like creating things. Um, and entrepreneurship is just so much fun because you get to, you know, come up with some vision, come up with some idea of how you're going to make something come into existence. And then you get to spend time making that actually happen. And I, I just really like how, with entrepreneurship, creating your own business, like you get to make all the decisions and there's a lot of learning in that. Like, I think one of the funnest things 
in life is just learning, like learning how to uh, do new things, learning how to build a business. Um, so that's why I'm really drawn to yes. it. And it's, it's a lot of fun. I think it's really motivating. And uh, that's, that's why I've been doing this um, for a little while. So I've, I've, I don't know, I've probably been an entrepreneur for the last five or six years. Like I always had like some kind of side business uh, going on even back when I was in college. Um, in college, I did like a computer science degree, got into software stuff, uh, worked at a couple of tech companies. Um, but yeah, I always had like some kind of business going on the side. And when I first kind of started like a, a startup, I was, I was kind of following like the YC crowd of like trying to make a startup that's like huge and like trying to like go big and trying to raise money sure. and stuff like that. Um, so my first kind of startup was called Hockey Pass. And it didn't really go that well. Um, it was just, it was stressful. There's, there's a lot to try to make it work. It was just really hard. And so that was kind of when I kind of found like this indie hacker community on Twitter. And I found like the indie hackers website and bootstrappers and that kind of whole community. And that just, that just made a lot more sense with what I wanted to do. And so kind of since then, probably, yeah, like four years ago, I've kind of been more on this path of just trying to make an online business that works at least for myself, you know, it's, it's smaller scale. Um, but you know, you can make a really good, uh, profitable business, um, that's at a smaller scale and you don't have to go raise tons of money and try to build like a big unicorn or something. And so that's kind of been what I've been doing and I've had at least a couple successes. Um, I, I did like a little micro SaaS called support man that was built on top of Slack and intercom. So it was kind of built on top of those platforms and I worked on that for like a year on the side and then sold it for $27,000. So that was at least something. Um, and then after that, I really liked this. Um, I, I really liked this thesis of, I kind of had this thesis that it's really valuable for indie hackers and like bootstrappers to build on top of another platform. Because then, like, you kind of, your customer is kind of defined for you. It's, like, easy to know where to find them. It's, like, your customer is all, like, using this this tool. Um, and so the marketing to them, I think, is easier. A lot of platforms have even, like, a marketplace where you can, you can put your product sure. up on sure. their marketplace and people can find you that way. And so I was exploring different platforms to build on. Um, and that's when I found... Notion. I was using Notion for a while, and I really loved it. And so I was trying to think, what could I build on top of Notion? And uh, that's when I started building, started creating Potion, um, which is like this website builder that allows you to create a website on top of Notion. So you just create all your content in Notion, and it automatically updates your your pages um, to your website, and and Potion hosts the wow. website for you. Um, so it, yeah, it was like this kind of cool tool, but it was very, you know, it's very specific for Notion users. I wasn't like trying to compete. I think, I think that's one of the good things about a niche or, you know, building on a platform. You're not competing with the WordPresses and um, all like these big, you know, huge companies that are also doing, you know, website kind of stuff. It was, it was very much niched down to Notion users. Um, so anyways, just like the last month I sold Potion and so now I'm kind of trying to figure out what's next and it's, it's been a lot of fun. So I don't, I don't know if I answered your question. This is awesome. Kind of went, yeah. No, I no, went you, far. I, I want to, <laughs> you rock, man. Thank you so much for sharing all that. I wanted you to be able to share, you know, kind of some of your story for, you know, however you wanted to do that, because, you know, in a real way, you've been pretty successful on taking ideas to impact, which for just for anybody joining us right now, for, for those who don't know, for us, that's the definition of innovation. And so, Noah, I'm so glad you're here because you said, you know, one thing that you love is coming up with an idea and figuring out how to make it happen. Uh, and you love the, the steps along the way there. Um, taking ideas to impact is just so meaningful. And so I, I love that you're here. I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about what you're doing because anybody just joining into this tank uh, wants to hear from somebody who has made it happen, who, you know, maybe has bootstrapped something. Uh, and had to work through those failures, Noah, and then and then uh, figure out how to you know fix them and, and get to where they want to go. And so I'd love to you know really take one of your projects and talk in detail if we could, Noah, uh, you know about what you were doing. I'd love to kind of go through and help help everybody in the tank understand what you did um, and maybe you know where you got to certain places that you needed to create 
uh, you know, minimum awesome products and how you went about that. I think there's a lot of insight that we can get uh, as well. Uh, just know one thing as well, as you said, that that indie community, you know, really like inspired you to take a different direction uh, or, you know, and inspired you to kind of get some more exposure and you kind of saw a whole vision there. Um, I think the power of community is so, so, so important uh, for me. Collaboration, anybody, you know, who's tuned in over time knows this, that I say this all the time. Collaboration is the new currency. And if we can come together, uh, you know, bring in different expertise, different education, different backgrounds, uh, we really can push ideas. So, no, I, I want to thank you so much for coming. Um, just real quick, we have a couple people joining for the fifth week in a row now. Isaac, B. Steven, Dave, I see you in here, man. Thank you so much for coming. Um, folks who have joined the take know about Dave and know the great work that he does. Um, so, you know, great to have you back, sir. Um, Noah, what I'd like to do is give you an opportunity just to tell us a little bit that you had that first project that you worked, uh, worked on and you were able to, to sell. Uh, I want to kind of talk about that. And then we have somebody in the tank uh, who has a great launch for us. Okay. They're going to be launching a product live in this tank today. The app is just now finished. And we're going to let them come on up here in a couple moments. Um, right here, we have Tech in Schools Initiative. Okay, everybody, if you'd like to get a little precursor on what we're going to be doing here soon, go ahead and, and click on that profile. Give them a follow. Look into what they're doing. Uh, we're about to get a live look on an app launch. Get our hands on it. Give some feedback um, and do some cool stuff there. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, Noah, I'm just saying Cash Money, Kevin, I were really excited to have you on. I want you to talk a little bit about that first project. Um, I'd like to do that for a little bit and then let's get to an app launch. Why don't we? So, uh, Noah, I'll let you go ahead and take the stage. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm guessing support man is what you're kind of interested in me talking a little bit more about what that was. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and start with that first project. And I know that yeah. it's closed now and you already exited. Um, so if you yep. just want to encompass that and if you can help people, everybody here is working on a project, a business or an idea, like it's Saturday, you know, for us at two, I don't know what it time is, is for you guys, but no, everybody's hungry to learn more. And so if, while you're talking about it, if you can give us kind of the, the lens of an innovator, somebody who is taking an idea to impact uh, along the way, what were the troubles and kind of navigate it like that, I, I think it would be really helpful for some of the folks. Yeah, so I, a lot of times, you know, especially like bootstrapping, I think where I try to start is like finding a problem to solve that people are willing to spend money on. And a lot of times with like a bootstrap business, like if you serve other businesses that like, obviously they have money, they're making money, serving those kind of customers, it, it's kind of easier to ask them to pay and get them to pay like higher prices than, you know, if you're making a product for pro consumers or even for just like people that are using it as like a hobby or something like that. Um, so with support, man, I really was looking at the intercom platform because intercom I mean, you guys probably know, like their pricing is, is kind of crazy. Like people, people like to uh, complain about how outrageous their pricing is, but you know, the good thing about that is like, it's very, it's expensive and pretty much it's all like big companies for the most part that are using intercom. And so it's kind of like this nice little place to find bigger companies to serve and to do something for. And so I kind of had that as, as an assumption in mind when I started support man of like, all right, I'm going to try to figure out some problem that these companies have that intercom is not completely solving for them. And how can I then, you know, build something to do that? So how I kind of started was I just reached out to people that were using intercom. There's this cool website called, I think it's called built with, maybe it's like builtwith.com. It basically is this tool that you can search different tools and it will find companies that are using that tool. And the way it can do that is because people are putting like intercom on their website, you know, to, to do live chat and stuff. So it can find basically companies that are using that and using that. I then reached out to, I think I like searched for people like the companies on LinkedIn, tried to find like their support managers, like their people that would be in charge of like the intercom stuff. And I just try to get conversations with people. And I think I had around 25 conversations with like different support managers. Um, that was kind of who I was targeting and just trying to like learn from them, learn what problems they had, what issues they had. And one kind of pattern I started to see is that a lot of these companies that are using intercom are also using Slack. And so I kind of had this idea of like, what if I took the metrics, the data that support teams cared about from intercom and just like 
made it easier for them to get all that data um, in their Slack where they're already having conversations, maybe like handle like some notifications and things like that in Slack. And so that's kind of where the idea came from. And I was trying to get feedback and, and then just started like kind of building a, a uh, solution for that. And um, yeah, that's kind of how it started. Got sure. some of my first customers from the people. No, do I you met. mind if I real quick yeah. just chime in? I just want to say for anybody, you know, joining to the tank right now, thanks so much. Noah's going over a project that he successfully exited. And just for, for, you know, just some background in my mind and for my studies, I've seen that there's uh, really an algorithm of innovation. And as Noah's talking, I feel like it's so important to kind of piece that up and talk about the clean points uh, along the way that contributed to this. So Noah, I just want to say the first thing that you said is you got some insight, you gathered insight, you looked into the problems that these businesses were having. Uh, and you not only did that, but you mm -hmm. went and talked to over 25 people in person and or, or virtually whatever that looked like yep. to, to really understand where the, the holes could be. Right. So that was the first step insight. And you gathered a lot of insight that led to the idea, which in, in my purview, uh, I call the ink. phase step two of the mm -hmm. innovation algorithm and you kind of incubated on those 25 calls that you had the problems that they were having and you came up with the idea let's take this this these metrics from uh, intercom and let's make it accessible in slack right so that was you had the idea you were on incubate and then and then you went to the investigate phase you started building it how could you actually do that and i think that's that's probably right where you were headed right is you had to start building this and figure out what tools were at your disposal to do that. Maybe you had to make some. You want to talk a little bit yep. on how you investigated this product? Yeah, I mean, I think at, at some, like you can talk to people like I did, but at the end of the day, like you're not going to really be completely sure that like there's something there until like you've got something that people are like have in hands. They can try it out. They can test it. And like you have people that are like, Hey, I'm like willing to pay for this. Um, and, and you have them paying, like, that's like the ultimate, like, okay, like, you know, you're getting closer to product market fit. Like, you know, you probably have a little bit more work to do, but that's like, what's really uh, validating ideas is people willing to pay for something. And so, yeah, I basically just like started building um, a product and building like an MVP and then had some of those people I'd talked to that were interested, try it out, give me feedback as I was going and got my first couple paying customers from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise it was a pretty small scale business. Like I think I only got that, it was, it was pretty small SaaS, I only got it up to like 10 paying customers, but they were paying a decent amount because like I said, like they were, you know, they were bigger companies that had a lot of employees using this tool and using Intercom. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was kind of how I got it to that next stage. and. And where I got the customers was from the intercom marketplace. So I just put, put support man, the, the app I built on the marketplace and companies would find it that way and reach out and I'd have like a conversation and uh, hopefully they'd start using it. But it was, it was really pretty simple. And I only worked on that one for around seven months or so before I decided I wanted to kind of move to something else. And that's when I, I sold it to somebody. Um, so I, I, in some ways I didn't really, I, I never almost left that, I guess what you're calling that innovation stage. Like it was, it was still pretty early in that business. I'm sure yeah. there's a lot more to do, more steps to take to really find product market fit and really kind of push it to the next level. But I just kind of absolutely I wanted to basically go to something else. Well, well no, um, that can be a really great place to exit. Um, you know, obviously if you're locked in and passionate about that project, you know, maybe exiting doesn't make sense, but uh, at the point where you build an MVP that has some people that really, you know, they're liking it, they're giving you good feedback, you know, that's an, it's really an optimal point to kind of take that to market, so to say. And I don't mean launch the product, but I mean, take, take the evidence of it doing well to people who might want to take it even further. So they'll say, hey, I'll take your MVP off your hands and we're going to go ahead and take it, you know, maybe integrate it into a different platform or make it its own thing completely. Um, and so, you know, I just, I, I, I want to say that, as an innovator, when you found the right place to exit, you know, I think that, that that was a great idea, especially given that you wanted to turn your attention somewhere else. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, really, I think passion reduces friction when creating value. 
And so Noah, when you were passionate about making that project and it was at the forefront of your mind, you know, I think I'm sure you were working on it and thinking on it often. And I'm sure you got to that point where you're like, I, I need something new. And so I think it's cool that you found a way to, you know, capitalize on the exit. And, and then you went on to work on another project. Is that right? Yeah, that's kind of when I started working on, on Potion. But yeah, I'd, I'd say, I mean, that's like the beauty of bootstrapping or indie hacking. Like you can just be very flexible and be very kind of dynamic in your decision making of like, you know, like I, yeah, go work on something that you're passionate about and care about and want to do. And so if whatever you're doing isn't, isn't really cutting it or it's not something you're interested in anymore, like you might as well move to something else. I think obviously the only thing there you don't want to fall into is, you know, not just like giving up too early on everything because you won't get anywhere if you're doing that. So you kind of have to know yourself, like, you know, are you someone that kind of moves away from things when it gets too hard? Um, and maybe you should push through things a little bit more. Or maybe there's other people, just the personality, I think, where it's like they'll stick to one thing maybe too long, where it's like maybe they should have moved on if it wasn't working and, and tried something else out. So you kind of have to know where you're, where you're at there, I think. Yeah, it's sort of a sunk cost thing. They kind of feel like they put yeah. a lot of time and effort and energy into it. And so they can't, you know, giving it up to them is, is more harmful than, uh, you know, continuing to pour time, money, energy, all that into it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you got to kind of know where you lie with your personality there. And, and, and as you build more things, you'll probably kind of learn where you're at with that about yourself. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So Noah, you know, I'm just curious, we'll, we'll go ahead and do this for, for a little bit. I'm really excited to get our, our tech launch going here soon, but equally as excited to be chatting with you, my friend, if you want to tell us a little bit on, you know, uh, what gave you the, the insight to start Potion? What's the vision there? What are you doing? Um, and, and where are you at right now with the project? I think we'd all love to hear a little bit about that. You know, and I, I think that'd be great. We have a, a couple awesome speakers in here. B. Steven, by the way, uh, has a, a plugin for WordPress that helps to optimize the, the workability of the site during high usage hours. Um, and, and so, you know, he came in and, and talked for a while and has been pretty successful on pushing that further and further. So I don't know if there's, nice. you know, collaboration uh, points there, but um, so just to say that we have some speakers up here who are by no means, you know, not crushing it. So uh, we'd love to hear, you know, what you're doing or what inspired Potion um, and then maybe where you're at right now working on the project. Yeah, so I started Potion a little over two years ago, and yeah, I kind of found the idea looking, like, kind of using that same um, thesis of, like, building on top of a platform, and one of the things I noticed with a lot of the intercom apps that were doing really well, like indie hackers that were building intercom apps, I, I was able to talk to some of them, and what, you know, I, the pattern I saw was, like, basically anyone that was really early to intercom with, like, building on top of it they were doing pretty well because, you know, there was a void there and they kind of filled it early. And so just being early to a platform was helpful. And so that's where Notion kind of piqued my interest because Notion didn't even have like an open API yet. It was pretty new. Like everyone was talking about it, like on Twitter and on Reddit. Um, so it was kind of like a new tool that um, everyone was kind of excited about. And so I was trying to think what I could build on top of that. And I found this tool called Fruition. And what it was was like this really hacky way to kind of like do some things with your domain to point it to a public Notion URL. So Notion allows you to kind of create these public pages. Um, and so they had like this really hacky way. You had to like know how to like move, put some code on Cloudflare and do this kind of hacky thing to, to make it your public Notion page actually have your custom domain. And so when I was looking at that, I could see there was hundreds of people that were doing this. And it was just this free little thing um, that someone had posted that you could do. And I saw that as like some demand, like people want to create a website and they want it to do it with Notion. And this is like this really hacky thing, but still there's hundreds of people doing it. Like how could I make that just a lot easier and straightforward? Like it just seemed like there was something there for sure. And, um, yeah, so I, I kind of just did some more research, and that's where I kind of came with the potion idea and just started working on it. And I had so much kind of like conviction and confidence in it that I, I really didn't do a ton more. Um, like I didn't go and like talk to tons of potential customers or anything like that. Like I just I just started building it because I just had the confidence that there was something there. And uh, that's kind of how potion started. Um, it, it, did, it went pretty well from when I, I launched it and just kind of kept growing. And 
I just sold it for, well, I've been public with all the numbers the whole way, which has also been kind of fun, just like billing in public and stuff like that. Um, and that's kind of how I've built my Twitter audience is just by trying to share valuable info about how to like run a business and, and sharing my experience from Potion. And so, yeah, I, I sold it for 300K like a month ago. And um, so- Congratulations, man. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's ended out pretty well. I've been uh, happy with how it's gone and I, I built it up to around 7K MRR um, before selling it. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at with, with that. And it's, it's been a fun journey. So, so you had successfully now created two projects that you've exited one for, um, you know, let, let's say like 20 to 30,000, one for 300,000. Um, and now in a real way, Noah, you're looking for the next thing. Do you have, you have your eye yep. on something? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I like the last four months I've like prototyped out like four different ideas um, and just like tested different things. And I haven't, I've kind of done it behind the scenes. I'll probably share more about that on Twitter at some point. Uh, but I think I found an idea I'm pretty excited about, um, but I haven't really shared much about it yet. I'm still kind of in the early okay. phases of figuring out what it is. Well, um, maybe what we could do, you know, Noah, and, I, and maybe maybe the tank could even push you. Uh, apologies for stepping on your toes. I just, I, I love this. So, you, you know, you're on the brink of like building in public and, you know, a new idea. Maybe next week or the week after we have you come on with what you're working on we try to bring in you know just a, a great audience and some great speakers uh, maybe see if there's a team that can be built you know feedback that can be given uh, resources that can be connected with you know all, all the great things you know i would love to to have you come up you know with those projects i understand you haven't launched them yet publicly um but just just an invitation to you to absolutely bring those in and, and we can try to anticipate that for you know weeks to come yeah, that'd be cool. I'd be up for that. It'd be fun to chat about it here once once I get closer to launching it and figuring out what it, you know, being ready for that. That sounds Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. No, thank you. Um, thanks so much for taking, you know, time that the last, you know, 20 or 30 minutes to talk to everybody. You know, this is recorded and I think a lot of people get their hands on it, especially that first bit. And I, I hope they get inspired. I hope they hear that, you know, even just coming across a new community you know, lunging into it, failing forward fast and, and making it happen is the way to, to do it. Uh, and that there's a lot of uh, good energy and, and knowledge that comes from just doing it. Um, so Noah, I appreciate you telling everybody how you did it with these last two companies. And thank you so much. So just to pivot. Yeah, thanks oh, for having me. Yeah, yeah. Is there any, any notes that you wanted to tell anybody? Or, you know, like I said, this is recorded. We got some cool people in here. If you're looking for any specific team members, you know, interested in collaborating with any types of people, feel free to announce it here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I feel like too early to know exactly like who I, so yeah, I, I basically, I do want to work with some people, like the last businesses I've done has been all like solo. I've, I kind of done everything myself and I, I could see like this business um, starting out that way as well. Maybe, you know, maybe it's the first multiple months, maybe it could even be the first year I'm kind of solo, but Eventually, I do want to build it out to like having a small team. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And that's like something I haven't done before, but like a step I want to take um, with this next business. So yeah, I don't, I don't really know yet, um, but hopefully I'll no figure problem. that out. And uh, uh, yeah, it should be something in the future that could maybe make sense. I bet you there's a lot of people that'd be waiting to hear from you. You've had success a couple of times. I'm sure you got more coming your way. Uh, thanks again, Noah. We really appreciate you. So we got, we got a, a launch going on right now, Second Schools Initiative, uh, you know, something that, that to me, you know, lands pretty close to home. I, I love what, what mission they're on. Uh, however, I want them to come on up, talk a little bit about it, and then let's go ahead and get a, prog a product launch going. Uh, Cash Money Kevin Matia will be getting a number of more attendees, a number of more people um, that, that should be coming in that are really excited about what you're doing. So I want to give you an opportunity to come up to the front of the tank, tell everybody what you got going on, uh, talk to us a little bit about the, the project, and then let's all get ready to get our hands on some, some good new tech. Hey, what's up, guys? You hear me? We can hear you, man. It's great. Great to have you. Uh, please tell us your name. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Uh, so my name is Ross, and we are Tech in Schools Initiative, and I'm here with my team members. 
And we are going through the first phases of our launch of our AI to students and developers. And we do a stable diffusion um, in 25 different models, Claude and GPT-4 Unlimited with plugins, not OpenAI, fine-tuned, but we're partnered with OpenAI. So under the hood, we're using fine-tunings and all this fun stuff. But on the front end, it's like the most insane way to learn. And uh, we have literally built some of the products with the product, which is crazy. And the thing I'm launching, well, working on right now is uh, like taking an image and editing the image with text and then it returning 20 variations of that image across different diffusing diffusers and different models. So like imagine generating one image on Stable Diffusion, Open Journey, and all the other 25 other, other models available. It's wow. what stability AI is doing. It's open source. So the thing is, you just got to build it. And we're using, like, oh, we have access to over 100,000 GPUs, which is making this happen, which is crazy. Ross, this is incredible. So obviously, this has been a whole journey to get to where we are right now on the tank. You have some team members joining you. Uh, you know, you guys have, a, have a, a product that's ready to come to life. How long have you been working on this? What inspired you to even take this take this on? Uh, this project, about five months uh, since the launch of OpenAI, I reached out to partner with them. Uh, so we did that, and we got access pretty much immediately. Um, and then, but before that, I was building the you know the tech uh, our tech company like for years. Like, like we have software that's not AI related, like website builders, um, like over a hundred different tools that basically are everything that's paid, but free because students can't afford it. And we give them like C panels and servers, everything they need to develop and build products and learn. And then recently this AI thing happened. So I was like, okay, we got to build something. So then I was like, how do we take every single AI, everything you could do with AI and put it into one platform. So you can chat with over a hundred different personalities over five different large language models. So Claude, Bison, which is Google, if you don't know, it just came out. And GPT-4, 3, and 3.5. And you can use Google with them, and which is really cool. But then I wanted to go further and do images. And next is text to video, coming soon. Holy cow, so you're, yeah, you're already headed somewhere with this. This is yeah. awesome. So uh, have you already had a, a a, like let's say a minimum viable product you know before yeah, or we guys either... want to know how i went from like nothing to like SaaS because it's the first time i've done that that i did in the last six months and we now yeah. have um like people paying which is crazy like a bunch of students and developers from all over the country um, and we uh, offer everyone that's a student that can verify at 50 percent off but what's different about us is we're unlimited so there's no token count Okay, that, incredible. Yeah, that's what's different. This is awesome. This is awesome. So uh, just to give everybody an opportunity in the tank to start getting their hands on this while you and I talk, uh, you know, can, can Cash Money cover Mattia, or if you'd like to, uh, go ahead and put in the nest a link, an app, some instructions, you can talk us through it. Um, I think it'd be awesome to go ahead and, you know, if you'd like, uh, hit the red button, let's get get a couple people on there, at least while we're talking. And then I want to hear more about your journey, um, talk more about where you guys are right now, talk about how we can get you even further. Um, so the, for this particular thing, the interesting thing about it was I built it for me because GPT, uh, chat GPT is like really annoying and doesn't like finished text and it's not like connected to the internet and there's like a lot of issues. So I built it as a tech demo. And then when I was, I was in one of our schools and I was showing some students and teachers and they asked where the bot where to buy it, and like there was nowhere to buy it because it wasn't a product. Okay, sure, sure. And so I, I had to figure out like I'm I'm a developer, so like that wasn't the hard part. The hard part was, I I never really made an outside SaaS platform. It was very almost internal, for like students. So this one was it had to be available to the public because you know people were going to use like data and stuff and like they had to pay for that is different than like anything else you've ever done. So um, what I did 
was I just went to, and this is the crazy part. So like, if you're like not an engineer, like you need to know what Vercel is. <laughs> because Tell us more. What, what, and what is this called, Vercel? Yeah, so basically like I know a lot about engineering. I'm a full-stack engineer, but I'm also lazy. So when this whole thing happened and we were like, well, we have to build like an entire customer portal. I was just like, mm, don't want to do that. So what I did was I went to Vercel and I built it in Node.js and I used their starter template. So like when when you it, like when you see this, the actual website and all that, you'll see like it looks like the starter template on Vercel because it's really good. And that's the thing a lot of people don't understand is like their 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 demos and templates are like absolutely insane. Okay, and this like, is awesome. So you you were leveraging some existing infrastructure um that yeah. you were able to find somewhere to kind of to, to, to help build what you're doing oh yeah but you don't even gotta look anywhere you just go to their website and hit create new project and it's a template it's called SAS. like yeah, it's okay crazy. so let's get this link in, in the in the resources here uh, cash money kev if, or matia or you know ross even if you want to push it in there i know some people would really really enjoy that maybe if you just want to say how to spell it real quick um, it's we'll, v -E -R -C -E -L. one of our guys will put it in and there's like, it's like a developer platform. Like, cause you know how there's like UI and UX, you guys familiar with that? Uh, for those who aren't, please go ahead and tell us. So it's like user interface and user experience. There's like a new one and it's called DX, developer experience. And that's what Vercel does. Sure, so it helps to, to get you, you know, off the ground and into the right templates. From like point right A to point B quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And Absolutely. so that's incredible. We leveraged that. And then we just like gave all the students like a promo code and they all had to go through Stripe, which was good. Cause then I don't have to worry. Like you don't have to worry about the money part. That's annoying. And okay. then we, and then we built it and then we just started iterating and iterating. And we're on like version seven of almost every app right now. We even just introduced like baby or baby artificial general intelligence called baby AGI right into the platform for free. Very, very interesting. So right now, if somebody wants you to go ahead and get their hands on this, what would they do? So if they want a discount on the whole platform, they can just DM me, but the website's myapps.ai, and you can read about all the different products there. Okay. Um, okay. So it's called myapps.ai. Yeah. And basically it, unlike all the other platforms, cause like we, we just give you everything, like you get everything. So you're going to have Almost, you could talk to any LLM that's out right now, including ones that are like unobtainable, like Claude and Claude 100K. And if you don't know what that means, it means like you can take the whole Great Gatsby and paste it into a prompt. Okay, because obviously a, a big restriction of uh, Chat GPT for anybody who knows using that, even the four, is that you can only put so much into it and only get so much out. Right, and so Claude, we fixed that problem, and we have a product called like it's the, each of the products have their own names. So uh, I'll tell you like a little bit about each one and what they do and why we built them in the way that we built them. They're all weird and different. So yeah. the main product is called AI Tutor. And that's what you can get if you pay um, like the cheapest amount, you get one app called AI Tutor. And it's basically unlimited GPT 3.5 plus four, which is good, like really good. Like that doesn't exist anywhere, not even open AI. Um, they, it's five messages per hour, by the way, even when you pay them 30 bucks. Then we have AI Tutor Plus, which is slightly different. So we created a technology called React. Not like the website stuff, but it's called Reason Action, short in React. And it goes on Google and all search engines with your prompt. So you can ask something that the LLM won't know, like, is the Queen Elizabeth alive? And then it will go on Google search and come back and tell you no. Okay, so what you're doing is filling in a lot of the holes that ChatGPT was having by allowing the, even it for it to search data that go beyond ChatGPT's data uh, inputs, which will, I think ends in like 2021 or something in September. So, so you're filling in a hole right. where it can actually scrape the internet. And then how, how are you guys, um, if you could just touch on this a little bit, keeping up with this same level of integrity from the scraped web searches in, in addressing true information um, that let's say chat GPT does question. with. Wait till you hear this answer. So yeah, I love first it. We, we saw that was happening right away. And so we had to alter it immediately. 
And so what we did is we added um, Reason Act or React. We added to it um, a discussion and then fact checking. So we basically allow Claude, which is another LLM, to fact check GPT, who uses and the internet. Ross, real quick, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. We have a couple, a lot of new people in the, in the tank. I want to make sure they know exactly what's yeah, going go on. Yeah, go for here. it. So, hey, anybody joining the tank, guys, this is the Innovators Think Tank week number five. We've been going now five weeks. We bring up anybody working on a project, a business, an idea, and we help them collaborate with some big thinkers. So I, I thank everybody for coming in today. Um, you know, I see you, Marlon, Hamza has now been here for a while. Kiro, Atta, you guys are great, man. Thanks so much for dropping in. Uh, we have Ross here who's launching, you know, some new products in the suite of products he has. Um, and right now we're discussing a little bit about data or, uh, yeah, data, uh, let's say, not, not security, but let's say authenticated data from the holes being filled in with his platform um, that Chad GPT is not getting from, from the internet. So, folks, just want to give you a quick update. And, and Ross, go ahead, take it away. I just wanted to get people uh, back, back. No, no, you're fine. Uh, and so we figured out that you could use LLMs to be like a team and work together. So we had it ask itself like four questions before it returned the answer. And it could do this all lightning speed using Google search API. Like they literally give you the search keys. So you started taking these LLMs, you, you, you realized the holes in them and now you're having them work together. Can you explain right. what questions they're even asking each other? Well, I can just give you a really super basic example. So let's say yeah, you want please. chat GPT or you want the AI to teach you uh, how to code, right? So if you say, teach me how to code, it's going to just start giving you random things, right? So on our system, and uh, what we've done is we allow it to, like, one, think a little bit before it speaks, and we introduce new commands to it. So, like, there's forward slash learn more, forward slash test me. So if you want to be tested, forward slash teach me. And these Ross, are all part of our module for a second. Structure. Cash Money Kev, can you confirm that it's not me that, that is out here? Is it Ross? Is it me? Do you hear me? Matia. I, I, did anybody, not hear, uh, I did not hear Ross hear drop out. Well, I think I, I may have cut out or, or Ross disconnected. Do you hear me? Or is it good? No? I, I can hear you, Ross. Oh, thank God. I don't know what's happening. Your service just dropped. It's crazy. I think this is Josh why I need to hire more people at Twitter. That's um, it. I think I'm back in. But, Sorry about uh, that, Ross. I think I disconnected. Or, or no, you're good. Happened, so I, I'm locked back in. Would you mind you're taking good. back 30 seconds so that way I can? Yeah, yeah. Out? So we, we created more guidance. So like instead of it just answering your question, it has like it, we, we created forward slashes. So like if you want to learn about something, forward slash learn any topic. It could be forward slash learn how to plant. It's going to go and create like a whole entire lesson plan about plants for you, teach you, test you. And, and then like even bolster your knowledge more. And it's gonna create a prompt for itself. So think about like if, if the chat could prompt itself, that's what we're doing. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's, that's really interesting. And then that, those are working together to give us what is AI Tutor Plus. Well, yeah, so think about it. Like you said, I wanna learn about plants. It's gonna say, here's plants. But what if before it said that, it said it had like five thoughts. So we go through four thoughts before output. So thought one is, what am I actually doing? And it answers it. I am going to answer a question about plants. Thought two, what does the user want? The user wants to learn, be descriptive and thorough. Like it answers these questions and then answers you with all that in mind. Okay, I totally see it. So it's just helping to give much more instruction that you don't actually have to write out to the language model to give a better result. And that result's not limited by output. If anything, you guys Correct. have bolstered that to now include curriculums things like testing right right okay and so like for example the last thing that it does in its like loop is it says now write a prompt for a large language model with this information so then it prompts itself a prompt on how to give you what you want so that for you it's all seamless you can type the word plants very very interesting and now how do i make sure i'm not studying something that i totally don't want to study <laughs> Like, uh, in the extent, what do you mean? So, uh, so it, it's asking itself to, you know, essentially set some better parameters before, you know, you're just typing plants, but what it's done beforehand is really charged yeah. the prompt with much more information, right? 
Yeah, so for example, if you just actually just write the word plants, it's just going to tell you what plants are, and it's going to say, are you looking to learn more? Okay. Like it's not so so I guess start. expanding it to different topics, if it can generate, and, and, and by no means am I, I this is an incredible discussion and uh, really cool stuff, just, just want to say. Um, so given that I wanted to learn about astrophysics or quantum theory <laughs> or something like that, um, is the does it build a just completely a accurate curriculum like what like uh yeah it, it does um i i that, that's I'm not crazy gonna... isn't it ross that's like a crazy innovation well yeah so basically i'll show you so um for people that want to try it there's a way that you could sign up and of course give you a discount for twitter spaces i'll make a code called spaces but uh josh uh in your dms i'm gonna show you something because it's like the only way it's hard to explain Okay. But if you want to screw like take screenshots, this is a private URL, so please don't send it out. Okay. But and then I can post those into the into the nest. No, but don't post this link. No, not not that link. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna can post I, something. I can take screenshots. For, uh, if you can block out the URL, yeah, this is just for you to understand you what I'm saying right now. I love it. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm so on it now. If you're on it right now, you see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I see all, I see all my tiles. So tell okay. me, talk, talk me through what I'm looking so at. This is, what this is you, cool. What do you want to do? I want to learn how to – I want to learn how to be an astrophysicist. Okay. So just go to at Tutor AI or Ad Tutor, whatever we're calling it. I forget what it's okay. called. Okay. Yep. Tutor AI. One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just tell it what you want to do. Okay. Do you want me to make it more simple than an astrophysicist? You no. know what I even do whatever I, you want. Okay, I want to take a, a note from anybody in the crowd. What do you guys want me to be? <laughs> what do I what do I want to become? Let, I'll let you guys kind of guide it. What, <laughs> what do we want here? Yeah, um, I want to, I want you to become an astrophysicist. <laughs> do Why it. not? You got it. All right. Yeah. Why not? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. All right. I'm gonna. I want to become an astrophysicist. And then that, when you're ready to get the job, you can use career AI. Okay. Okay. Well, I got to learn how to become one first. Yeah. You know first, I mean? you got to learn. So I got to learn. All right. So I'm gonna say I want to become an astrophysicist. Just type it in. It says that's great. Astrophysician. Uh, uh, physics is a fascinating field that involves the study of the physical properties, behavior, and structure. It, a little laggy structure of the universe to become an astrophysicist you will need to pursue higher education in physics astronomy or related fields here are some steps you can take to start your journey towards becoming an astrophysicist uh, focus on your education take courses in physics mathematics and astronomy to build a strong foundation in the field pursue higher education by obtaining a bachelor's degree in physics or astronomy followed by a master's degree and phd in astrophysics gain research experience Participate in research opportunities. Uh, so it kind of goes and says, build your skills, network with professionals. So how could I get this to give me curriculum to get on my way to being an astronaut? You got to ask for it. I got to ask for it. Okay. So I'll say. Um, but before you do that, I want to I want to show you one thing. This is one, one of the things we're testing today. Do yeah. uh, in the chat forward slash imagine. Okay. And then space a school. Tell me if you see a school. So so I do forward slash and then type imagine. Yep, space, a school. Yep. A school. A school. A space school. Yeah, whatever, a school, whatever. Yeah, okay. All right, you got this in. It says, give me a few seconds while I draw a school. Wait, what? what? Okay, for anybody listening, I don't have my, my Twitter open. I'm obviously on this app, but it says, you know, give me a second. Oh, it said, sorry, I had issues requesting this image. Check your API key. Okay, cool. Do it one more time. You got it. So I'm going to go slash imagine a school. We're getting it more time. Yeah, just push the update. So I want to see if it works. So this is cool. In the think tank, guys, if you're anybody tuning in, I, I don't know. Uh, who's all in here right now? Thanks so much for tuning in. We're taking anybody with a project, a business, or an idea. Uh, we're bringing them to the front of the tank. We're giving them feedback, and we're helping them collaborate. I'm right now live on this demo of the app, and we're talking through it, and it's some cool stuff. I got another sorry I had issues requesting this image. 
uh, check your API key. Yeah, so just like um, refresh, and then you can try again, but not yet. So ask it for a curriculum. You got it. About whatever in whatever. And okay. tell it to be thorough. Okay, so I would say I like thorough. I'm going to say uh, please write me a thorough curriculum for astrophysics that would help me become. Oh, by the way, before you do this, on the top, what do you see? Four or three? I'm going to copy my question real quick just in case I lose it. Oh, Sorry, no. guys. We're in real time working right now. So uh, let me see. At the top, I see 3.5 turbo. Change it. You got it. To four? Yeah. All right. You got it. Sorry about that. New user. I'm a new user. You're you good. guys are on there. Make sure you know. Change that to four. Now, so, you should be able to ask for something. I should give it to you. All right. Cool. So I, I said, uh, please write me a thorough curriculum for astrophysics that would help me become an astrophysicist. How's that sound? It's good, but I would ask it in particular things. So, um, like, what is, like, the, give me, like, the first lesson from the, a curriculum for ast- astrophysics. Give me one random lesson so you can see, like, yeah, yeah, okay. And you could say, make it like a three-hour lesson, or you could say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell it to pick any lesson that it thinks would be best for me to learn. About, oh, uh, you, as know a what? you know what you're looking for, I think? That's funny. Well, do that, and I'm going to send you something else, too. Also, don't Let's share it. Okay. I won't. Hold on. Okay, so we, are, we push this thing called the instructor, which I think is what you're talking about. I'll show you. So on the link I send you, everything's pretty much the same, except there's no personalities. You're just going to choose. Um... And guys, just so you know, I just clicked on this, um, this app that we went ahead and posted the link, the public link in the nest. So if you guys want, go ahead and click on that. You'll actually be able to see the whole suite that he's referring to right now in real time if you go under ai tools in the app in the nest um you'll see ai tutor ai tutor plus you can click on those and read about what what all we're talking about here this is really cool stuff um this definitely is you know the next generation of of uh education weaving in large language model uh, lar- large language models um so i really you know i think this is a really cool uh, um, thing to be talking about. I, I got your new link. Let's see. Okay. So this is called, this is new product. It's being added next week. It's called EDU pal. So the experiment is having it prompt itself. This is what I was talking to you about. Okay. Okay. So if you're going to say hi to it, it'll take over. It'll tell you how to use it. It comes with its own help and documentation in text. So do I want to leave it on default or do I want to no. change EDU the, pal. what was that? EDU pal. So this is what's coming, and this is EDU what we're pal. Doing. Okay, yeah. So I'll change it GPT four and yep. then EDU pal. And then watch. This is actual magic. So what do you want me to type into the box? I mean, I'll, I'll tell everybody say, what I'm seeing here. You could say your name and who you are, or hi. So you want to start it off? Okay, really. So I'll just say hi. I'm Josh. Yep. All right, we're doing it. Hello, Josh. I'm EDU pal, your AI tutor, version two point five created by AI Tutor. Let's get started by understanding your preferences for a personalized learning experience. Here's your current configuration. Depth, none. Learning style, none. Communication style, none. Tone style, none. Reasoning framework, none. Emojis, check mark. Uh, now English. you can say, like preset, give me like a general configuration for like okay. a, co- a college student or an adult. So it can do like a general config for you. Yep. I'm going to say, give me a general configuration for a college student. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can be like, uh, what you want to learn. Okay. This is awesome. So now it says, sure. Here's 
a general configuration for a college student. So guys, based on those same things, this is what I guess it's saying a college student would do. Depth is five out of 10. And this is undergraduate. Learning yeah. style is inductive. Um, what is inductive? Uh, what does that mean in terms of so there's just there's like, like things type. like bark, like yeah. exams that tell like your learning style? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to just say that real quick, maybe some people would like to hear what, what uh, even so inductive some, is. Some people like when you give examples, like it's like this or that. And like that's a type that you can choose. Then there's like um, sort of like not argumentative, but debate style. So yeah. like it would let you kind of debate with the AI. And then there's like regular learning style, which is the inductive where you like listen and you learn and then you get information and you like can compound on that information. Sure. If anybody's curious about your learning style, there's something called a VARK test, V-A-R-K. Uh, maybe Kev or Mattia, if we could get a link in there, people can take that. Uh, but it's always interesting to kind of take something like that. It's not that it's all facts, but at least gives you some interesting thing to, to chew on. So I'll keep going. We have communication style, informative, tone style, friendly, reasoning framework, deductive, emojis, check. It says, please let me know if you'd like to make any adjustments to this configuration or if you're ready to proceed with the setup. So I'm going to well, say let's proceed. Yeah, well, you can also say, like, what are your commands? Okay, I'll ask you that. Because you don't know. Yeah, okay, exactly. This says, here is a list of my available commands. So, guys, I'm going to read this off. This is a, a new launch, a new thing that's going to be coming from this suite of products. Uh, we're just getting our, our hands on the, the beginning part. So, so, okay, it says, here's a list of my available commands. Um, it says backslash, forward slash, uh, sorry, uh, test your knowledge. Um, so you do slash and then test is what you'd write. And that will allow you to test your knowledge, uh, your understanding, and problem-solving skills. Uh, backslash configure is for to configure. Then I can do slash plan, which is create a lesson plan based on your preferences. Slash search, which and I think that's why you guided me here, right? That's what I wanted. Create a lesson plan, right? Based on my preferences. Yep. So what I could do is uh, slash plan space, uh, give me an introduction to astrophysics. Would that work okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Slash plan. Boom. This is probably our first public demo like this. It's pretty cool. So it said, uh, self reminder, I will teach you in a five out of 10 uh, depth, as it was saying, undergraduate. Inductive learning style just kind of reinforces that. Uh, yep. Gave some assumptions, says, since you're at uh, an undergraduate depth level, I assume you know basic physics concepts, such as Newton's laws, energy conservation, and electromagnetism. Um, then just showed me what emojis were about to be coming down the pike. <laughs> an undergraduate student lesson uh, plan for introduction to astrophysics. And then it goes ahead and, okay, this is cool, guys. This is really cool. So the, it lays out now and says, uh, the first one says, number one, introduction to astrophysics and its branches. Number two, overview of celestial objects and their class, uh, classifications. So it has eight different things for me. And it says, please say slash start to start the lesson plan. So I can start becoming an astrophysicist, uh, which I've always wanted to do. So let me hit slash start. Um, gives the same kind of self reminders, making sure that looks like it's being accurate on the configuration you set. Um, then it blasts me into lesson one, guys. Introduction to astrophysics and its branches. It even has an emoji. Um, man, it's just pumping out information on you know introduction to astrophysics let's see gives with this several branches now it says please say slash continue to proceed to the next lesson or slash test uh, uh slash test to test your understanding so this is really cool so i'm gonna hit slash test um and now i guess in real time you know it's saying great let's test your understanding of the introduction to astrophysics um now we got three different questions wow um, for question number one, what is astrophysics and how does it differ from astronomy? Two, name three branches of astrophysics and briefly describe each. Three, how has astrophysics contributed to our understanding of the universe? Um, and then it says, please provide your answers and I'll give you feedback on your understanding. Um, so very interesting. So now at this point, let's say I wanted it to give me 
like a diagram or something. Could I ask it to give me that? Uh, so no, that's actually coming soon in the next two weeks. So we're going to okay. be creating, uh, we have, it's going to run code in Python and return a graph. Okay, this is really cool. Um, and so what this does is, it, you're not saying that ChatGPT4 cannot do this, but that it's well restrained because it's it's stopping its data after, or yeah, after 2021. It's not searching the web. Uh, it can't go back and forth with different language models to set deeper level of prompts that help you be more successful as a user, right? Um, yeah, pretty much. So, so you know, this is this is really really neat neat stuff. Um, what what other places on this, you know, would you like to drive me to that you think folks maybe? Let's say we have a bunch of innovators in a think tank, and they all want to take their stuff to the next level, and they want a tool that could help them do that. Right. And they want to be able to uh, use that to explore their ideas, gain more insight, uh, things like that. Maybe walk me through what tools in this chest would be useful for an innovator. Um, OK, hold on. I'll show you. I'm going to send you another private link. All right. Also, gotta... Where are you uh, posting these things? Where, where can I see it? Um, in the nest is a good place if you want to post Where it. is the nest? Where is this place? Oh, at the very top. Or if you go into the comments in the bottom right. There's no, but where purple. you were putting like a picture. Where did you put any pictures? Or you didn't oh, I, I didn't put any pictures. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't put anything. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I didn't want to like, because I, I think I would have to like on the top scratch okay. out the link. And I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to ruin anything for you, my friend. <laughs> I know we're going to get live so, launch. So. Yeah. Check this out. This is another module. Okay. This is totally uh, different. And real quick, Ross, I, I don't know. We probably have recycled a number of people, got some new people in here. They're like, what's going on? Um, oh. Hey, anybody just now joining? Uh, this isn't the Innovators Think Tank. We're on week five. Uh, we have, you know, a number of businesses, startups, people with great ideas that come and join us. And on the speaker panel and myself, what we do is we collaborate. Collaboration is the new currency. And so people with different expertise, uh, different backgrounds, perspectives, education, when they come together and start asking quality questions, you get quality results. Um, and with that, you know, I, I welcome anybody to come up to this tank, ask questions about the use of this. Um, feel free to, you know, DM me or anybody, you know, in the tank. Uh, if you need something, this is a community of innovators and everybody's pushing the thread. So uh, thanks for joining us. Ross, right back to you, my friend. In Ross, I think you might have a, a muted mic. Oh, yeah, I do. The, so this is uh, for uh, like college students and adults that are building businesses, this tool. And it's available as part of, like, inside the subscription. So, like, they don't... So when I that. go, I won't say the URL, but the link that you sent me when I click it, I'm on an iPhone. It's a Safari oh, camera. Oh, do it on a computer. Pages. Do computer. Better. Okay. Okay. Wait, Everybody this whole time you're on a phone? This whole time? I will, no, I, I'm on both. I'm on both. Okay, so when you did the image thing, imagine. Where were you? Uh, imagine I was on my phone. Try that on the computer. You got it. All right, everybody bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and switch switch here. This will be a better experience. Oh, it's so everybody. much better. Okay, you got like, it. Because, like, I you didn't perfect the phone stuff yet. We have an app coming, which will have all the modules in it, in a mobile app for iOS and Android. Was it the so first or second link you sent me that has the slash imagine <laughs> Feature. The first one has the slash okay. imagine. I'm going to do that, and one. then let's yeah. go to the, the next one. So, And I'll tell you about the last one while you do that. It's uh, like a team of people. So imagine you had a whole AI team, like a, like a whole agency of human beings that could help you. But, like, none of them are human. But they're all fine-tuned and trained and can literally talk to each other. So, like, in the future, you'll be able to have one team member speak to another team member in AI and loop you in using at commands like WhatsApp but not what's that web-based. So this, whoa, okay. So you could have a, a team. Like a whole team, that, yeah. But, but there's actually no people. No people. They'll write your website copy. They'll build your site for you. They'll do the SEO for you. They'll create the campaigns. Do all and the do they all collaborate with each other? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, like okay. They, if you guys are hearing this, he's literally saying that there's a, they're working you know, to plug large language models together, fill holes, uh, use massive level... Uh, API from ChatGPT and you know so on, and they're creating a platform where teams can uh, be built with no people that can execute tasks that you need done. So I, I will say, just take this moment to say, 
Um, the beauty, you know, of a team, we talked about this in past tanks, the, uh, the beautiful uh, Bill Gross had mentioned after starting many, many, many startups that the number one and the number two most important thing about a successful startup was timing is number one. And number two is team. Number two is team slash execution. And if you can uh, automate some of that execution while also, you know, people, people move businesses, businesses don't move businesses. Um, but in a real way, we, we want to leverage these new tools to help take over some of that, create more time for us as innovators to uh, be visionaries and, and get to the next curve. So I highly you know, recommend nobody to disqualify this as not adding a really important part of your startup uh, is a team. And if you can outsource some of that uh, and even have a degree of control, given that it's an AI for us, I think there's a lot of value there. Yeah, and it doesn't replace humans at all. It just it lets you augment the human experience. So, like, if you have one developer, now you have six. You can make six developers. One's front end, one's back end, one's UX, one's UI. And, you know, GPT-4 analyzes images. It can analyze something and write code based on it. So you can say, take this design, because we have a designer that's coming in, two, in a week and a half or two weeks, which will make, like, a landing page for you fully. So I'm, when I try to hit the link on my computer, it doesn't let me load it. Would there be something on my end wrong? What link did you hit? The first link you sent me. The second one does open. I thought it was my internet for a moment. Uh, I DC'd earlier, and that, that was what was up. I'm on cellular on my phone. But regardless, I have I have on, on, uh Yeah, um, don't click the link. I'm going to send you the direct access. That could have been the problem. It could be Twitter. Twitter's garbage right now, but and, we like um, it. So, so I'll wait. So what we're doing right now is we're getting back to the first link. One of the features that, that was really cool was slash imagine. We were saying imagine a school was the function we did in here, guys. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're just going back there because I didn't. I did it on my phone instead of the computer. Uh, so I'm, we're going to do it on the computer, and you know we'll see what's good here. Yeah, so I, I, I did hit the same link you just sent me, and it just says this site can't be reached. Uh, but really? the other links are, are good for me. Yeah. Where are yeah. you? Um, State. I'm in Colorado. Do you have like any blocking on internet? I don't know. I don't think so. Let, I, I'm happy to go ahead and I'll pull up in a different type of browser real quick. I'll do this fast, guys. Sorry about that. It should this. be Chrome. Okay. Yeah, I'm in Chrome. So I am in Chrome. Uh, let me see. Here, try this. Oh, I, I think I'm in. I'm in. I don't know what just happened, but I guess I'm in. <laughs> um, guys, I'm back on the first link. Sorry about all the delays here. Um, so it says in the box, now I have all the tiles in front yeah, of me. Yeah, you can just write forward slash imagine. Cool. And then write like anything, a dog, a school, a cat. Hopefully it works. Yeah. It says, give me a few seconds while I draw a dog. I asked it. I said, imagine a dog. So we'll let it run for a moment. You still get that error? I do. Can you take a screenshot and send it to me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That would be amazing. Guys, sorry, sorry about the uh, any delay that you don't or anything here. This is live, man. We're in the Innovators Think Tank. We're getting our hands on new, new technology. Um, so, but the other yeah. link could work that I sent you. Okay, no perfect. so I'll go ahead and go to that new link. We'll skip over this Imagine feature. Um, if we're able to get that up and running, I'd love to share with you guys. And even uh, with your permission, Ross, if I'm able to get that up and do slash Imagine, I'd love to post that into here oh, without yeah. sharing the link. But just share yeah, like, hey, this is what fine. the AI came up with. Yeah, okay, that'd be great. So I'm going to go to the newest link you just sent me. Got it up. We got all of our tiles. I'm on 3.5 Turbo. Is that where I want to be? No, you want to go to the one that the, the, I'll send it again to you. It's uh, this one. It's the one with all the team members. I'm in. This is really cool, guys. Holy cow. I, I hit the team the team one you sent me, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm in AI yeah. team. And, and am I allowed to just kind of share what all I'm looking at? I won't read the, the URL. You guys, can share so the gonna... screenshot without a URL if you want to take a screenshot. That's fine. Yeah, I think I might want to do that. This is, guys, this is sweet. So 
I don't know if this is default. Lisa Waters is Lisa Waters. She's she's not a real person, obviously. <laughs> this is an AI, right? But yeah. that's that, that's our our default girl, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. This is sweet. Um, Let me see if I can't get a picture into the tank real quick for everybody. Give me one second, guys. I'll delete her name so you can see the whole team if you want. Oh, hey, like list of employees? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, real quick, just to share with you uh, what I have. And, you know, I'm not even going to screenshot since I'm on my desktop. What I'm going to do is literally take a picture with my iPhone. Oh, that's cool. (laughs) Uh, and then I'll, I'll show you guys what I'm looking at. But this is crazy. So uh, it's, it says AI team in the upper left. There's a bunch of different types of team members that it looks like I can start training to do what I want them to do. Uh, and I'm going to post this and then I'll start telling you like what their job descriptions are. And then let's start building a team together, Ross, to do something. Hmm. Uh, and then, you know, if anybody, you know, if anybody's in the tank right now, and you, you know, maybe what we can even do is use what you're doing, you know, and with the team that you're trying to put together, I'll kind of build out in this demo. Um, that way you can kind of understand if it'll work for you and then maybe even get, get the software. So anybody, if you want to raise your hand or want to ask to come up to the front of the tank, you know, you're like, damn, I want to use my business as the demo here. Um, and we're going to build out a team. The three of us will work together in real time here and we'll, we'll build out a, a team. Um, so Kevin and Maddie, I'm not at my computer, but if anybody wants to come up, if not, no worries, but uh, this could be a cool opportunity for anybody that wants to take it. Is that cool with you, Ross? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, all right, guys, I just got these pictures. Let me get them uploaded for everybody into the, the nest. Boom. So you only saw about four. There's like eight, so six more. <laughs> okay, so we're, yeah, we're gonna have some fun going through all this. Um, Oh, hey, I, you know, I'd love to see this. Uh, we got Anida in here. Anidi, it's so good to see you, my friend. Anybody who's curious, if there's one person that appreciates the power of community and draws together people, it's my, my friend from Between the Brackets uh, who hosts this beautiful event once a month, and he really drives community development, um, and it's just awesome. He works over at Google. Um, he's in the tank right now with us, and, you know, just awesome to have him here. So. I just want to welcome up and welcome them up to be, you know be a speaker anytime and share any insight. Uh, and Edie, what we're doing here is we're we're taking folks with any project or business or idea and we're collaborating and we're helping them take it to the next level. Um, we're with Ross right now; he's more giving us a demo. But as all of us get our hands on this, as I go through this, we're going to have some questions and we're going to want to understand more on how we can use this as innovators. Uh, so this is a powerful tool. This is awesome. Um, anybody joining right now? Thanks so much for tuning in. It's great to have you. Um, let me go ahead and get these pictures put into our chat. Sorry, guys, about the delay. You can only do so many things at one time. Um, and it, it's literally me taking a picture of my desktop with my my iPhone. So you, you're, you'll have to bear with me. But we're doing it. We're doing it out here. All right, we got a tweet going live. Boom. So that way you guys can see my screen. <clears throat> it's uploading right now. All right, Ross. So we're back in the cut. Um, I'm now on uh, this new tile that's going to be launched, this new app. It's called AI Team. Um, I have this option to start picking different people who have different skills. We have Lisa Waters, the salesperson, Ryan Johnson, search engine optimization specialist, Dave Wilson, a business coach. Um, Guys, that list keeps going. There's just like literally there's copywriters, event planners, as you know, UI, UX designer. So uh, I don't know if we had anybody that was wanting to come up to the top of the space and, you know, build out a team with us uh, in real time, but you would be happy to have you. We'll give you like another couple of seconds to, to build up the courage and come on up and do it in real time with us. Um, it should be a lot of fun. If not, hey guys, don't worry. Don't worry about it. I know tuning in and listening on Saturday is just as much fun as uh, participation. So don't worry. Um, Ross, we got you uh, alive. It doesn't look like anybody wants to come up and, you know, have build out a team we, uh, right now. But given that I have access, maybe I'm the best to do it. Okay. Yeah, um, do it. So, so let's do it. So talk me through a little bit what, what I'm looking at. Um, you know, if Lisa Waters and she's a, is, she's a salesperson, let's go ahead and say I started a new company, right? I have a new company, Ross. And my company, uh, we... 
we ma manufacture guitars. All right, we make guitars and we sell them at stores. And now I'm going to need a number of different team members, won't I? So let's just assume that I, the next position that I need is a salesperson, which is an interesting role because this salesperson does need to engage in the sales process and really close, right, a potential buyer. So how, how is this Lisa Waters set up to do that? You want well, to walk me through it? Lisa Waters doesn't know anything until so you have to start training with her. So you got to right, tell guys, I love this. So what I'm looking at here with Lisa Waters, and if you guys have these pictures, you can go ahead and look at it. Uh, it says, hello, my name is Lisa Waters, and I'm an experienced salesperson committed to helping my clients achieve their sales goals. With my personalized approach and attention to detail, I can help you highlight your products and services, increase your customer base, and boost your sales. How can I help you sell more, question mark? Well, Lisa Waters, given that I have 100 different guitars I need sold, um, let's go ahead and get into that. So there's an output language. By default, it's English, um, U.S. Dave, if you were using this, you would hit the English U.K., right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and then we have default. Um, let's see. You can have tones, guys. So there's a default tone. There is a emotional, professional, humorous, educational, persuasive, and nostalgic. Um, what What would you recommend? You've used this tool, right? You've tested it. Uh, what would you recommend that I I use if I'm selling guitars? So what these? I normally do is I'll I'll leave it like how Lisa is normally. And then I'll talk to her. And then if I want her to change, depending on like what she outputs, I'll change the writing tone. This is great. We'll leave the writing style. We'll just keep it all English. I'll say, Lisa, I have a hundred guitars I need sold. Look, I'm, I'm kind of that boss. You know, I'm kind of that guy, right? I'm just telling her, hey, I need these sold. Mm -hmm. Boom. Just so you guys know, there is a talk to text feature too. So this, this definitely is going to grow. Imagine you, you're just conversing with your AI team. <laughs> uh, very interesting. So Lisa Waters says, great, based on my experience selling instruments, I can help you connect with potential buyers who are looking for quality guitars. With my marketing expertise, we can create an effective sales strategy that will highlight the unique features of your guitars and demonstrate their value to potential customers. Lisa can also do this. She can advertise. She says, I can advertise your guitars through various channels, such as online marketplaces and social media platforms. Now, my immediate question for you, sir, is how are we getting – can Lisa actually go to these platforms and post? That uh, would require so, this to yes. be connected with those platforms, right? Yeah, so the idea is like you'll have um, a spot where you'll be able to connect your Twitter and your Facebook and all that, and, and Lisa can auto post for you. Okay, interesting. So you can start connecting. You're going to uh -huh. integrate different points of connection with different Yeah, sites. we're actually integrating LangChain, which is a popular open source framework, which allows you to connect LLMs to data. Super interesting. Okay. Yeah, Beast even puts up a thumb up. Thumb up. That's awesome. So just, just so anybody knows right now, uh, what, you know, what we're doing here is I'm building out a team to sell my guitars with this AI team software brought to you by the Tech's, uh, Tech in Schools Initiative. Um, guys, so right now what I've done is I, I've asked Lisa Waters. I said, I need to sell 100 guitars. She says, great. With her expertise, she can put together a strategy. And, and she can make it happen. She also says she can advertise to various channels. So I, you know, I'm asking how, how is this connected with those channels? And that was answered. He said, you can go ahead and, uh, it, it will be able to connect things. Uh, what was it that you said? Lane change? Uh, so it's called Lang, like language chain, yep. like a chain link, Lang chain. And it's Lang a chain. Open source framework. So like anyone could use it if you understand Python and you could build out, um, like connections to different software. So like you'll be able to log in with Google and connect like your Google Drive. So you'll have all that data to talk to. And then you can also connect to like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube and all that. And you're gonna be able to do a lot of stuff. This is literally just the beginning. Yeah, so we have a couple people that have requested to uh, speak. Ahmed, welcome up to the, the top of the panel. Uh, Hal Haliru, Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Uh, you know, we have, yeah, of course. Did you guys have some questions? Or anything that you wanted to note, maybe talk with Ross about while we have him here. We're, we're live in a demo. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and actually get more pictures posted. If you guys want to go ahead and ask any questions to Ross or contribute to the conversation, we'd love to hear from you real quick. Um, well, Halidru and Ahmed, um, yeah, feel I think, free, my friend, go ahead. I think at this stage, I mean, I, I don't have much to contribute um, because we're already I'm just getting started and this conversation is something I'm looking forward to 
um, engage with. So let's carry on for now. You bet, sir. That sounds great. We'll go ahead and carry on. And Haliru, if you have something, feel free to raise your hand along the way. And anybody joining us in the tank, Therese, welcome back for another week. We have a couple people locking in on, you know, three, four weeks of joining us in a row. Um, so this is, you know, this is awesome. Ross, just to get you back online, I'm posting a, you know, a quick picture that I have. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Boom. Guys, this is where I'm at right now, live in this uh, training my team to sell 100 guitars. We have Lisa Waters. Uh, she's able to advertise through various channels that will be able to be connected. Now, she says, by showing off your assets with high quality photographs and detailed descriptions, highlighting their craftsmanship, sound quality, we can effectively market your guitars and generate interest among potential buyers. She says, with my proven track record of uh, sales success and your high quality guitars as our selling point, we can work together to increase your sales and improve your bottom line. Are you ready to sell those guitars and start seeing results? Um, the answer is absolutely yes, but I also have many things on my plate as I am the boss of these guitars. I watch, I do the manufacturing, distribution, uh, marketing. So I, you know, I need Lisa to take over some of this, right, Ross? So yes, that you, you these... could tell her to organize an entire um, sales, uh, what, would, what would you call it? Like a sales proposal for how this Yeah, a sales strategy. Yeah, sales strategy, and completely take over and sit in the driver's seat. You could just tell her that. Okay, I'm going to say organize an entire sales strategy and provide uh, an entire plan for me to sell all 100 of my guitars. I don't want to be involved much. Please do as much of this as you can. And then what's cool, I, I just like, want to stretch it. You could like take that strategy and give that to like the software engineer and tell him to start laying out your pages in HTML. It's crazy. Okay. So I could take the software engineer guy over here. You know, obviously we just kicked off with sales cause I just want to demo some potential. Um, I hope anybody listening and you think we're, you know, this, this goes far beyond just sales. I'm just trying to give like a demo, you know, I have a hundred guitars you could have a hundred of whatever, um, and you know, how, how do you sell it? There's a lot of, if, if you saw from the pictures, there's a lot of different people here. Uh, just giving a demo to show this. If you can do this with a salesperson, he's saying, yeah, hey, somebody can start writing H2, HTML uh, script for you. Uh, okay, so I'm asking you to do as, as much of this as it can because what I wanna do here, Ross, is, is push it. You know, I wanna push Lisa Waters to say like, I don't wanna do it, you do it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in guys. I'll tell you what I get. She says, sure, sure thing. As a salesperson, my goal is to help you sell all 100 of your guitars as quickly and effectively as possible. Here's a plan that I recommend. She lays out a five-step plan for me to sell 100 guitars. Um, let's see. She says, identify your target market, develop a marketing strategy, set competitive prices, offer discounts and promotions, provide excellent customer services, so in some sense, what I'm feeling right now, Ross, is that Lisa Waters feels like a, a salesperson consultant, like she's telling me how to do it. How can I get her to do it for me? Well, there's a bunch of different people you can speak to. So you want to plan out this way to sell. So there's a salesperson and then there's Joseph who's in sales. Okay. Yeah, this is perfect. So now how do I communicate to Lisa Waters and Joe like because uh, jo Joseph Martin, which is one of these AI professionals on the left, he's in sales. We want him to understand this plan that we have. I have a strategy right now developed yeah, so by these right routers. Until you're like logged in and authenticated, you're not able to save things. So your chats will not be talking to each other. That's only available when you like have the account and you're connected. Right now, you're not logged in. Okay. So um, totally fair yeah. enough. Totally fair enough. Like I'm not but able what to I get. To do is there's like a lot of tools. So we can go back to Lisa in a second. I wanna show you two other things. Please do. So first is- so Are um, you kicking me over some, some links? Yeah. 
Okay, great. Yep. Let me, I'll pivot. So this one, so, what's cool about it is it's going to let you do a few things. And I actually haven't tested the second thing. So this will be literally first test. Ever. Okay, awesome. So, um, boom, I'm in something called unsaged. Yep. Try so something the, creative, it says. <coughs> the idea is to combine LLMs together. Oh, hey, we have ah Ahmed who had a question. So sorry to interrupt you, Ross. My apologies. Oh, sure. Um, Ahmed, I know you had something. Come on in, my friend. What's up? Yeah, so I wanted to ask, um, in the fact that you are asking her to prepare a sales uh, guide, and she's done it, and you can actually pass this request to the um, person who is in sales, but uh, is this something that you can actually just ask her to do that without actually going into talking to the person who is in sales and not a sales consultant as such? Yeah, so... Instead of like having to go to another person or whatnot, it would actually at the other person, which would give them the conversation, and then the chat would go to them. They would just take over, given the context of what you're asking. So, okay, totally. So, if if I were to ask Lisa Waters and like Ahmed, are you saying if I were to ask Lisa Waters, hey, relay this to Joe without having to do like it would just do that without me having to go and tell Joe anything like that. Yeah, that's what LangChain is. That's what they exactly. do. Exactly. So, like, we're integrating that software to be able to do that. And the beginnings of it, um, you're about to see right now with Unsaged. So, this is the first time you can actually um, determine, like, who you want to talk to. Like, this is nowhere doesn't exist ever because it's only GPT, Bard, and all this at their respective websites. But what if they can collaborate together? And then what yeah. if that happens, and then they could take on autonomous this tasks, like develop a marketing plan, and then execute 15 tasks after that by themselves without humans. So... The way that we're building this is, if you look at the top right, you're going to see a selection. You see GPT? Yeah. Okay. And so I, I'm in uh, 3.5 Turbo is what right. it did let me. Now, you're used to, like, whatever the news says and all this stuff about, like, GPT-4 is slow but good, but kind of slow but also inaccurate at times. And then 3.5 is faster but also dumb. But then there's, like, other options called um, Bison and Claude. And so we've been experimenting with a variant of Claude. So you know how you can't put in, like, a lot of text? It'll always stop you, GPT? Yeah, like yeah once in, you like, get to a certain lot. point, it just says yeah. it won't take it. Well, what we're going to do differently is we're going to actually ingest that using Pinecone. So, like, think of, like, the web as swallowing that data and converting it into little numbers that don't equal data and then passing it in real time. So choose Claude Instant. 100k uh v1 so claude instant v1 100k 100k yeah now this let me tell you something this is like the fastest i've ever seen an llm move in my entire life josh are you ready Ask yeah I'm, anything, oh, I'm ready tell it to write you a 10 page or a 10 paragraph blog post about the power of ai when you're building a startup this is going to explode with information so fast, your internet can't even catch up. Well, guys, if I if I had something ends up happening and the space leaves, I apologize. So we're going to ask it to uh, write me a ten paragraph blog post about the power of AI in startups. Well, this is cool. I'm excited for you to see it. Claude, yeah, it just it just punched it all out. Um, holy Am cow. amazing. Okay. Can, can, can we can we just recap what that um, response that came out to be like? Just uh, um, yeah. Group, so group Ahmed, group. pretty much, I got slapped in the face with ten ten uh, uh paragraphs faster than I knew what to do with. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that Ross was yeah. He wasn't kidding that that moves incredibly fast. Holy shit would be my reply. Um, okay, so I'm gonna ask him to say, um, please write ten more. Just to see. Uh, okay. That's way faster than anybody would have thought. It's true. It? It's really ungodly fast. 
It's What's crazy. the temperature thing on the right hand side? It's so, a system prompt it, and then temperature. Yeah, so if it's all the way to the right, really creative. Middle is neutral. And also, you can have it write a blog in the style of TechCrunch or Forbes or what? one of these websites. Okay. Yeah. So, so walk me through that. <laughs> Ahmed's impressed. I think a lot of <laughs> this people is impressive. Here, guys, you believe it probably pretty impressed uh ross th- you know just want to say thanks for joining us and doing a launch yeah man here. and you know this is this is a lot of fun uh and you know apologies to everybody i'm doing my best to work through the tools um while also describing what i'm looking at but just for anybody just popping in right now i'm getting a live look at what was this called un unsensed or, oh, sorry, un- unsaged um and if you you know want to do ross just a quick like one or two cents overcap of what unsaged is you know we'll uh, let yeah, any sure. any of these new folks know so unsaged is basically what kind of like what you get at chat GPT, except with a lot more. So the first big thing we did is we introduced plugins. So developers, like anyone that's a developer can make their own plugins, talk to their own data. Super easy. We even published a guide how to contribute and make your own plugin for unsaved. Um, and when you use it, so it's private. And we also bring in Bison by Google, Claude by Anthropic, uh, GPT-4, 3, and DaVinci. And wow. soon we're going to have, oh, no, we have Cohere also, just not live. So Cohere is another one. The only one we're not including is Hugging Face because it's stupid. Like it literally so, doesn't know things. So we don't want to <laughs> include it. So, Ross, in the bottom left of my, and, guys, this looks a lot like, if you guys are curious what the interface is here, am I okay to post a picture? Yeah, yeah, just no URLs because these just, are all just developing no URLs. URLs. Okay, guys, I'm going to post a picture when I'm looking at it. It feels a lot like ChatGPT's dashboard, but there's more going on. There's more features going on. Um, one thing I noticed right away in the bottom left is import and export data, which is yep. really interesting. Um, what, can you explain a little bit about that feature? Do you see that top left? There's like icons. Yes. Yeah, let's go, th- uh, let's go through all this, so, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get a picture taken and post in what I see uh, the, right now. And the then, first one... Okay, so the first one you should see is the light bulb, right? Oh, uh, the very top one is the chat box, which oh, I think well, I'm in. Oh, we know and what chat yes. is. Chat is chatting. Yep. yep. You very could cool. make folders, but that's like not that crazy to make little okay. chat folders. And put your Let chat me try to do this without getting the URL in there. <laughs> Give me one second, guys. <laughs> and, and you can. So the the four options that are really crazy are one, you could save your own prompts, so that's really good. But the next one is where you're changing your system prompt, so that's when you want it to act different so like every word out its mouth should be in the style of edgar Allan poe that's where you would put something like that so you don't have to keep writing that you know absolutely and and then the last two are the most important so the one that looks like four little boxes this is plugins we could actually bring in plugins from everywhere including open ai plugins so it's cross compatible with what's out right now all right, guys, I just posted in here another tweet. That's what I'm looking at right now. This is the, the user interface from my perspective. Uh, then, um, okay, so sorry about that for the, for the lag, Ross. All right, so in the upper left-hand corner, I have my boxes. We already know what those do. Now let's go to the light bulb. And it says, uh, it says no data. Yeah, so that's because there's no prompt saved. This would allow you to save prompts you like. So oh, if you very have a cool. prompt, you could save it. Okay. Well, and I'd like to take this moment, guys, a cool prompt that I, I even posted on, what was it, snack prompt one time. So you're saying this is pretty much like having those types of like great prompts that you like just saved in this little yeah, library right, yeah, off the side. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. So, so just to share with you guys a cool, um, and sorry, Ross, not the detour, but this is an innovators think tank. I just want to share this little tool yeah, with anybody and likely something you guys would be able to do in here. And you know, ooh, let's let's use it to try to do this. I'll explain it, Ross. You tell me if we do it. So, uh, in one of the prompts I put up on Snack Prompt was something called the intersectional innovation prompt. Uh, uh-huh. So, an in innovation, if you're able to take two or three, uh, two or more, let's say, ideas and combine them to create a novel idea, um, we call that intersectional innovation, right? Rather than uh, just novel singular innovation. Um, so, one thing that you can do with language models, given intersectional innovation is I, uh, two or more ideas colliding and then reading between the lines, making a number of the assumptions, write up large language models alley. What I did is created this prompt where you can essentially just put in 10 r- random words. It could be anything around you or in your
field of study or not. And then you ask the large language model to give you products or services that integrate those two or more of those words in your word bank that you had just given it. Uh, and what you end up getting from that is like, you can get hundreds of things that are literally, it would blow your mind, right? It's just like, it emerges all the, you know, the 10 or 15 words in your word bank to provide novel products and services that could be created when you, when you put those together. Um, and that's just pretty interesting because then folks, you know, a lot of the great things we use in the world are, are truly intersectional innovations, uh, but there's, you know, a lot of pure innovation as well. Uh, so just wanted to share that prompt with, with anybody. So Ross, sorry to detour from you, but this is a section there where you could store something like uh, that type of prompt or ones that you might find that are useful. Yeah, um, and what's really cool about it is when you do it, you can even declare like <clears throat> what language model it should work for. So at the bottom, when you hit add prompt or add system prompt, um, was, you're in light bulb, but this would be in, um, so light bulbs are like prompt. So, okay. So a lot of people get confused. So there's like the prompt, right? Then the system. So you can like make the system always respond with that prompt or brain, quote unquote. But you could do both. You can save it as a system prompt or a regular prompt. It doesn't matter. Okay. Very, very interesting. Um, so now the third one for me looks like a little laptop. So that's the system prompt that you're yeah, referring so to. We have when you create um, a system prompt, they could be the default. So explain that. If I hit new system prompt, okay, yeah. So it made something. It says a name, and then it gives me the prompt. Great. Yeah, and then I can save that. Can you explain more in detail the difference between a system prompt and a normal prompt for us? So a normal prompt will essentially be forgotten after like a certain amount of tokens. I mean, a normal prompt. A system prompt will be in thought every response. Okay. Okay. So this is where I could type in, like, always, always sound like, uh, I don't know, Joe Rogan or something like that. Right. Okay. Very neat. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and push it to the test while we're here right now. So maybe I have a do, I can add a new system prompt, right? I'll go ahead and click on it. The name is new system prompt. Let's just call it like, um, who's somebody funny or famous or some, something, if anybody has anybody that we can put in, let's just do, uh, Will, Will Ferrell. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't even know if this is pushed live yet, but let's see. We'll just do Joe Rogan since there's a lot of stuff of him talking out there. Maybe we're being more fair. Um, and the, the prompt would be, so I, I could say like always reply in the voice of Joe Rogan. Right? Yeah, but I don't know if this is going to work on this platform. It's super new. This is day one. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm totally pushing. We could just uh, keep going through explaining yeah, how no, it's so used in the tool. After, after I show you this next thing, you know that first one you went to? So I, I a, think so. There's a custom area, which is a system prompt, and you can make it respond as whatever you want. Okay. And it'll just keep that in mind as you continue to work yep. through this like unrestricted chat GPT pretty much. Yeah. Um, what I sweet. wanted to show you here is the, you know, the thing that looks like the four, uh, this is the only thing that uh, we pushed today, the four little boxes. So this is super new. And the, I want to see if you could search Google. Okay, super cool. So on this far left-hand side, after that little, desktop thing i have like the three boxes yeah, and then one so of them is a plus sign the, yeah three dots and add plugin install from url yeah and and well, i can just try to add google no 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 so you're going to copy the url from up top like okay. your web browser and you're just going to once you paste it there you're going to do forward slash plugins forward slash google and this extra step is important because this means let's say you have your own like cPanel and website server, right? And you want to query your customer data through this platform. I don't want to have access to your data at all. So the way we do this is you can create your own plugin hosted at your hosting. We just use it. Oh, very interesting. Okay. So, so real quick, I hit the install URL. I copied my URL from the upper forward slash plugins. Forward slash. And then do I hit install first and then? Yeah, and then you're gonna see Google. So, so 
you want me to do put put that in and then i have so dot app slash google slash plugins yes perfect i hit install uh i don't know if that plugin came in do you see it on the left i do not so it would be the url i'm going to send it to you perfect it's, so it's, you'll uh, send me what to put in there. Yeah, you're just pasting yep. this in there. Yeah, sounds good. All right, cool. Let me... So this is cool because now you're going to be able to bring Google into the conversation in the feet, in the form of an LLM. So imagine you talk to Google, and this is new. Like, they just let you do this, so I just built it. Like, Google never did this before. And I think it's going to be crazy. To have this sort of interaction with Google. Can we have? Yeah, sorry, to, sorry trying sorry, to catch sorry up here. To sorry, I'm Josh. Can we have a screenshot of that no, updated no in the in the thread chat, please? Thank yes. You. Uh, we'll, we'll with permission yeah, yeah. from Ross, Ross can, of course. Can give us uh, our, our guy. Yeah, you can post anything. Just no development URLs is the only thing because you have private server URLs, not even real regular ones. I'm sure you see that. I definitely do. I'm definitely trying to like tiptoe and make sure I'm not at all uh, messing up here. <laughs> I don't want to ruin your launch here, brother, at all. So, okay, so I'm grabbing this thing that you just sent me, boom. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and put it into our plugins area, install from URL. I just put in what you had me do. And I did it, install. And then, yes, it added Google to the left. Ross, that's awesome. Um, if you, I think you might have your mic muted as well, sir. No, I was saying you're right. I did. But I was saying that's like the beauty of this, right? So like you don't have to worry about your data. You can build your own plugin and call it right in chat in context with any LLM. Wow. Okay. So, so now here, I have my just, plugin in right here on the left. Yeah. Go ahead and prompt. Tell me what to go ahead and yeah, write. So you're just going to say like, like what's the weather in and then your city. See what happens. Wow. And uh, guys, I'm in Denver, Colorado. There's lightning outside right now. <laughs> and put today, it's, it's booming. Like today, so it knows like today's weather. Okay, what's uh, can I say like right now? Yeah, and then try in your model, make it GPT four. We'll try that one first. And and make it GPT four. Yeah, and then we'll try you the other one. Sounds good. This what's is the, the part that's new. So this is untested. All right, what's the... So it's either going to work or it's not. Right that's now, okay. Contacting the system. The, it says contacting the plug-in system model. Yes, um, that's the new stuff. See? Okay, so guys, I'm going to take a picture of this before I get any further. So Ahmed, for, for you, brother, let me go ahead and get a, a new picture in. I need to cut, crop out our um, URL for our guy. Oh, cool. It's, whoa, whoa, no way. Ross, that's freaking sick, man. Right. So, yeah, okay. So, guys, I'm going to give you the results of this, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, it gives me the hour by hour forecast. It's lightning outside right now, and it's definitely getting that. Let me go ahead and get a picture posted. I can only do so much at once, and then uh, I'll get you guys caught up with me, and we'll keep moving forward. Thanks for bearing with me. Give me one moment here. So, so what I did is I took this this URL that he had sent me privately, uh, plugged it into now this chat GPT type of user interface. And guys, what it's able to do is now use this Google search plugin to reference the web for my questions, which obviously we all know in chat GPT, uh, chat GPT four, if I went to open AI and used it, it would not be able to give me an answer for the weather in Colorado right now. Um, so this is just a, a template or just showcases how how great it's filling in some holes um this is awesome yeah it's it's lightning right now sorry guys this is a little distracting and, and the cool thing is we're open sourcing the google search plugin so you can just copy it and do make it with your own data and your own stuff all right sorry i'm gonna crop out the url i would be devastated if i posted the url in here you know what i mean well, I i'd be banned it. you'd ban me from the from I could be blacklisted from the from the app. Huh. I don't want that. Here we go. All right, guys. Boom. Added. So this is what I'm looking at right now. A Google plugin. 
um, chat GPT interface. This is crazy. Um, all right, Ross, back to you, sir. I wanted to get Ahmed caught up and everybody caught up with the picture. Let's keep rocking. Uh, yeah, and so the idea behind the plugin is like you see the avatars change, so you know who you're talking to, which is one thing I think is really important that when you talk to different plugins, they all respond with their own logo. And so that uh, is something we created to make it a little easier to know what you're talking to. Right, where it's referencing the information from. Mm -hmm. And, and we built every part of this. So all you have to do is make three files, and that's it. And it'll connect to your data. Everything else is handled by us. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, this is, uh, well, this is definitely crazy. So if anybody has a question that you want me to go ahead and ask, I have uh, a chat GPT-4 on steroids um, with Google search weaved in. Does anybody have a good question that you want me to go ahead and ask? And we can really test some power here for Ross in, in real time. And also after that, uh, you can go get a news article that's like really long and put it into Claude 100K and tell it to summarize it. We'll do that. We'll do that next. Uh, absolutely. Because guys, like, part of the wrong. restriction with the chat GPT-4, we have James that's requesting to speak. We'll bring him on up. Uh, part of the restriction with chat GPT-4 is you can't input that many, that much, like a whole article, for example. Um, and uh, uh, it won't take that much input. So what's cool about Ross's system here is that it certainly can. James, what's going on, man? What's on your mind? Okay, brother. IVO is launching a satellite testing a new propulsion that has pro its pro propellantless propulsion. It's utilizing... And, and James, if you don't mind me asking real quick, my, my good friend, is this something that, that is rocking uh, with uh, the, the Tech and Schools Initiative? Is this a question for Ross? Yes, yes. It's to test the limits of this thing to understand if it does, if it understands, if we're going to test GPT and all that stuff. We're at, we're at the cusp of amazing technology, right? They've been hiding from us, but they're trying to launch it right now. All right. It's called IVO. It's propellantless thrust. It's using the waves of the universe which is unru radiation, right? Now, if you start typing that into chat GPT or whatever, it'll start letting you know what it is. So listen to my words, let it flow, and you will realize- Let it what? <clears throat> I think you cut out there for one second. Let it what? Flow, flow. Because- Yeah, okay. The The- the universe is different than what we think. There is a wave. There is this underlying, what they refer to in t television, television, is zero point energy. And that is unru radiation. It, 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 um, you could look it up. Hopefully, you're getting that. Uh, if you're following the conversation, you're going to look it up. It's going to let so this, in your mind, James, ties into something like chat GPT, given what, what dynamic exactly? So what, you, you have a question that we could ask this upgraded on steroids version of chat GPT with a Google, a Google plugin? Yeah, it's basically, I've asked it before, not that version, what you're talking about, but free energy and stuff is already, it's already uncovering. It's already being uncovered. But if you would <laughs> ask it, it would probably give you a more advanced version of even what I know, because that helps. So, so what, what question would you like, James? I love it, man. I'll ask it right now. Um, what question would you like me to go ahead and ask this system if you were to be in control of it right now? All right. Unru is going to know, obviously, it's going to know this. Unru radiation permeates the universe. It's the lowest... Um, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not the most advanced person on this, but it's very, it's very telling. And there's about to be a launch by SpaceX. So here's, here's my question. Here's my um, prompt. Humanity 
needs to survive, right? So here's my problem. Absolutely. Energy has been controlled. Power companies, everything controls energy. What if energy is free? Through unruh radiation and an asymmetrical casmir effect. Also, well, anybody listening time. right now, we are asking this thing some crazy questions, aren't we? We're not crazy, but this is a, we're really pushing it, huh? So, James, you kind of hear you heard that you know we're we're locked in. We have the Google plugin, and your mind kind of went towards, hey, we could find out you know some really interesting stuff if we really really push it. Uh, that's really cool, and I, I love the inclination to just like think about all the ways that we can uh, we can do that. Um, Ross, you're, you're mentioning to go ahead and push it to um the claude 1k right so maybe i go ahead and ask this question and then we'll push it over to claude yeah i mean it's cool to see because like both of them could have different understandings of what you're asking okay cool yeah absolutely and i just wrote out um what what he had just said there you know energy has been controlled uh you know, mentioned the unruh radiation and uh, uh, asymmetrically cashmere effect um so i'm just going to punch it in we're going to see what it says okay the future of energy, free and unlimited power. Imagine a world where energy is both free and abundant, derived from zero-point energy, which exploits the untapped potential of vacuum fluctuations and the cashmere effect. The concept of free, unlimited power could completely revolutionize how we produce, consume, and, and distribute energy throughout the world. Um, it goes into a couple main topics here. The first one it says is uh, power companies restructuring. In this new paradigm, power companies would need to adapt their operations to the ever-changing energy landscape. Traditional profit-driven models would be replaced by a focus on, ener on efficient energy distribution and management. I agree. Uh, I think they're already working towards that. But this, is, yeah, this, this would ensure that uh, uh, power is evenly distributed to all parts of the globe, potentially eradicating energy poverty. So it just gives me a bunch of sections, guys. Power companies restructuring technolog technological advancements environmental impact, economic growth, decentralized, uh, de sorry, decentralization of energy production. Um, so James, you're, you're putting up, man, you love all this stuff, huh? E equal access to energy, me too, you know, this is great. Shift in geopolitics, uh, very, very cool. So your, your first inclination when you found out a tool about this is you wanna ask it about what it understands about creating zero point energy for people. Guys, I think that's awesome. Come on, collaboration's gotta be the new currency. Um, and it's learning, learning about stuff and just hearing that perspective, somebody's you know, wanting to take it in that direction first is pretty sweet. Uh, I love it. So what you're saying, Ross, is now let's move it over to Kashmir 100K. Yeah, I mean, uh, Claude is different. He's uh, sorry, Claude. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't name it. They named it. Um, Claude is different because he um, like he's PC. So he won't get existential with you. He won't pretend to be your friend you can't really trick him we, we he's not really trickable okay um, and he's not good for like storytelling like creation he's really really good when you ask him straight up questions so if you put that prompt in i'd be interested to see what it comes back with you got it so uh we have claude instant v1 100k anybody looking at the ui picture that i posted i'm just changing the model in the upper right to claude instant v1 100k and we're running the same prompt which was energy has been controlled. Power companies uh, can uh, control it. What if energy is free through unruh radiation and asymmetrically uh, and asymmetrically cashmere effect? James, that's what I wrote. Um, sorry if I'm not nailing it perfectly. Yeah, it's the asymmetrical. It's an asymmetrical cashmere effect. That just means you block it one side of the unruh radiation with a cashmere effect because an, under one micron between two plates of metal of the same you know stuff <clears throat> it will block the unruh radiation because it's so long so it can't fit inside that little one micron and that pressure will hold those plates together so now if you asymmetrically utilize that kind of stuff <clears throat> you can um draw you know, pull something towards that use, utilizing a, 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 a block. Like if you think of a boat, if you're on a boat 
and you're getting towards the shore and you have waves on one side and you have the shore on one side, that one side is blocked. There's no waves coming from that side. So the waves yeah. push you towards the dock. Very interesting, James. Thanks so much for, for chatting about this. If anybody is just tuning in, I want to just do a quick capture. This is the Innovators Think Tank. We're on week number five. We have some big projects, businesses, uh, big thinkers joining us to collaborate. It's the new currency. And so I appreciate all of you being here. We're getting our hands on some awesome new technology. We're trying to talk our way through it, understand it. This will be in your hands before you know it. And so, you know, getting this sneak peek and starting to hey, understand that maybe you can build a team with AI. Maybe you can start uh, leveraging these tools beyond what you thought chat GPT-4 was falling short on. Uh, Ross has been working diligently to, to give us the stuff we want. So guys, just moving, moving forward this discussion, what we did is now I changed it to the Claude Instant V1. We asked the exact same question, and it's very interesting the, the difference in response. Ross, I think uh, this is something that you, I'm really glad you had us do this. So uh, when I did it with ChatGPT4, it just gave me a bunch of um, aspects of what we were talking about. It says the future of energy, free and unlimited power, power companies restructuring. It gave me all these points. And then I asked the same thing to Claude. Uh, it said, I appreciate the creative idea, but distributing uncontrolled and unregulated free energy to the uh, public would likely create significant risks and challenges. Uh, and then it goes into talk about them as such. So it says safety. Um, I'll just read this. So free and uh, uncontrolled energy sources could pose serious safety hazards if not properly managed. Without proper safeguards and engineering, people could be exposed to unsafe levels of radiation, electrical shock, burns, et cetera. Um, grid stability security implementation challenges is one turning this concept into a reality would require major technological breakthroughs this is really relevant for us as innovators because we look at these four main things of feasibility scalability marketability and desirability and sometimes you know like free zero point energy very desirable right um you know maybe maybe uh, feasible as far as the uh, maybe the theory goes, but there's going to need to be considerable innovations done on a technological front to turn that to a safe reality. Um, so, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people innovating and, and really pushing these types of things to the place they need to with that sort of algorithm and, and looking at that. So I um, just wanted to pull that out. But yeah, implementation challenges, of course, economic impact. Um, so it says, in summary, while the vision of a free or a free and unlimited energy is compelling, practically implementing it in a safe, secure, and sustainable manner presents daunting technological, logistical, economic, and regulatory challenges. A cautious and a phrased approach that prioritizes safety, oversight, and environmental protection would likely be needed. So that, it's interesting that the dynamic, Ross, between ChatGPT4 and Claude is, is as the way it is. Can you explain that a little bit? So Claude wasn't willing to go with our our run here right like it was less of a yes man for us mm -hmm. hey, can you explain that a little bit what's yeah what is... so there so claude is um claude was created by x open ai employees so open ai is chat gpt um and the idea is different from chat gpt uh according to them they want to create something that is more politically correct so if you were to talk to it for business it'd be really suited for that. Um, whereas chat GPT uh, has this uh, sort of hallucination issue uh, where it will actually just make something up. Um, and Claude does not have the same issue. Very interesting. Where does that, um, in terms of the other tools in, in the tool belt that innovators could go and purchase and get access to, uh, how is Claude versus ChatGPT4 being used in that uh, suite? And can people just as easily change it in the upper right with, with everything else that they're doing? Um, what do you mean? On my systems or general systems? Uh, general systems. Like if I were to, is Claude Instant V1 100K only on this unsaged? Is Correct. I guess, a, a, okay, sorry. Right. That, that's my question. Yeah, so um, the issue is that they are not actually a thing yet like they're Ooh. like uh, anthropic so if you look them up they're like super in beta mode right now and not okay really how are you getting access to this stuff uh so when i read about them i uh 
reached out to them when I when they first became a thing, and I reached directly out to the CEO. You know, as a founder of a nonprofit tech education company, they were interested in the conversation. Sure. So they they went ahead and gave us full unrecorded access, which is nice. Uh, to test with and start testing AI Tutor and see if it's something that it could be used, like it could be useful. So we've been testing with Bud for a while, trying to see like what's good, what's bad. So far, there's a lot we like, and I've been reporting things we don't like, so that they can make Flood even better for the public release to all of you wonderful people. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Ross, thanks for your contributions to new stuff going on. James, I, I know you had your hand open. I really appreciate you raising it and. Uh, we're, we're glad to have you on the panel. Thanks for giving us a question to really show the difference. You know, a question like that helps to, I'm sure Ross can agree, highlight the political difference between Chad GPT-4 and Claude, right? Like that was a pretty good question to show the difference. <laughs> I have another one. How about Bard, Google Bard? How is uh, Bard gonna be uh, so in Bard's the mix? So actual name is Bison. And Bard will be here in about a week. I'm literally still finishing the touches on him because the syntax is different. Everything's different. These LLMs can't make my life easy and all design the same. So every LLM is different. And that's what makes it difficult to integrate into one platform. Wow. But wow. that's the work needs to be done. That's what we're doing. That's the hard yes. part. Ross, I love it. So... Um, guys, for anybody just joining the tank, I'm using a demo live right now. Ross is walking me through some of this software. Uh, we're at the Innovators Think Tank, week number five, coming at you hot. Glad everybody's here on Saturday. Uh, let's get some knowledge soaked in. Let's have a good time. Thanks for being here. Ross, just want to kick back over. We have a Google, a Google search plugin and chat GPT-4 on steroids uh, going on on my screen. Are there any other plugins that you've played with that are interesting? And maybe do you want to talk a little bit about some of the potential other plugins yeah, that are so here and how they could be used? I'm going to show you one. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work, so God willing. I'm going to sure. have you pull this up on your computer. So this is going to be the first plugin that we're making. And cool. we are open sourcing the plugin as well. And actually open sourcing the entire platform. So this is going to be the first platform you actually don't need a subscription to use. you got to run it yourself and build it yourself. Will I take this link and install it the same way I did the other one, or is this a whole nope, new platform? No, this is a whole new platform, and we have not it. built a plugin for this because we just finished building the thing. All right, I'm, I'm, boom. I'm on uh, now a new thing, guys. We're we're shifting over. I'm on something called Pixio, right? Yes, it's new. Pixio, Pixio. It looks nice. Things are looking good here. Uh, Ross, before we get moving, I'm going to take a picture of this, put it in the chat so everybody knows what I'm looking at. They can get a reference, and we'll start working through a prompt. The images and whatever is going on here looks incredible. So we'll, we'll get into it in one sec. Let me get a picture, okay? You got it. <clears throat> okay. And you work on a lot of projects, don't you? Uh, yeah, so I actually use this link. I'm sending you two links. We're going to try the second one and see if it works. It's beta. And yeah, we probably are, are pumping out or working uh, about uh, 20 projects simultaneously uh, that are combined to create AI Tutor. And guys, I know the quality of the pictures I'm putting up. I'm literally taking a picture of my desktop computer, so bear with me. Um, you know, in this think tank, like we, we can, uh, it's hard to anticipate what's going to be coming down the pike. Josh, I see you requested. We'll go ahead and get you in here as a speaker, my friend. It's hard to anticipate what comes down the pike, so we just kind of have to work with what we got. So this week, given that I really want to show you guys what's on my screen in this private beta, or sorry, demo, uh, I'm just doing my best. So apologies. I just tweeted it out. That's Pixio. Ross, do you want me to start with Pixio, or do you want me to move yeah. to the link that you just sent me? Well, it's Pixio, too, the second link. It's just a new version that was just pushed like five seconds ago by my developers. Wow. Okay, guys, I'm, well, just give me two seconds. I'm Because this is a little bit different. I'm going to take another picture. We're going to put it back in the chat. And if anybody's getting impatient with me, I don't blame you. But I hope I hope you can hang on for just one second. Let me get, get this rocking. Now, um, boom. Josh, I saw you come up. Yeah, and, uh, before we go over to, to get into this awesome new um, platform, Josh, I saw that you came up as a speaker. Did you have something to say, sir? Yeah, no, I just, uh, I've, I've been only listening for for a very short amount of time. I just wanted to come up and join the conversation. Um, I think Innovators Think Tank was a really good idea. Um, and I think uh, there's probably a lot of 
great people in here that I could learn a lot from. So, yeah, Josh, I'm, I'm thanks so much for saying that. You know, after this being on the fifth week, we're two hours and eight minutes into the fifth ever think tank. I'm continually inspired by everybody that comes in here with such amazing ideas, with with such a amazing insight. I mean, I've learned more in the last five weeks of this think tank than you know I did not hosting it for sure. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that people come in here that that listen that want to contribute. Please come up to stage and anybody listening to this, come up to the front of the stage. If you have a question, if you want to contribute, that's what this is all about. Collaboration is the new currency. I'll say it until you get it tattooed. Um, this is the truth. So, Josh, um, thanks for being up on stage. We, we're really happy to have you. And um, let, I'm going to go ahead and get this new link posted. Okay, boom. It's in there. Okay, now what we the output of this, okay, when you're done, there's a special button that will allow you to download all, and you are definitely okay with posting the entire output of images. That's fine. Okay, whoa, so you just sent me over two different prompts. Yeah, right? we're going to talk about how this works. So, okay, if walk you look me through at it. Screen right now, what you see, this is the first time ever that you're able to control the entire stable diffusion, like at your fingertips. So, think mid journey, right? And mid-journey, you know about that, right? Yes? Uh, explain it for anybody in the tank. So mid-journey lets you generate images, but they are different than Stable Diffusion because Stable Diffusion is public and open source, and mid-journey is private source. What that means is if you ask for um, a woman with a bloody face because she just murdered her husband, you're not getting that picture. Okay, okay. Um, I got if you. you ask for Donald Trump sleeping with someone's wife, you're not getting that. Yeah. No, I mean, that makes sense, right? But does it, so it kind of violate freedom of speech if it's for art, you know? Like, this I, is like AI. It's not real. Okay, yeah, let's walk through it. This is really cool. Um, so so I, have, I have two prompts you gave me. You yeah, well, me we're going to talk about – hold on, because yeah, I want to yeah. make sure you know exactly what's going on so you don't do it wrong. So <laughs> I love first that. time ever interacting with Stable Diffusion, I'm just going to assume that. Yes, you would be okay. right, sir. So Stable Diffusion has been trained on bazillions of images, like a lot. So, And if anyone doesn't know what Stable Diffusion is, it's how MidJourney does what they do. Without Stable Diffusion, no MidJourney. I'm actually working with some of that stuff with uh, Snapchat and uh, Google. and. Oh, sorry, guys. Here, stuff. we'll go ahead and I think we have two people trying to chat at the top of the tank. We have Sushi. Uh, and Ross, so sorry to cut you off. I know you're trying to get us just totally no, like us good. moves caught up. Apologies. Uh, Sato, uh, Satoshi, and Sushi, both you guys, um, you guys had something to say. We'll let you guys go one at a time. Um, Sushi, go ahead and go first, and then we'll let Sato, yeah, I'll be, I'll be and then quick. we'll jump right back into our demo. Yeah, no problem, so, sir. It's great to have you at the top is, of the tank. The new tank they're rolling out with. How many people in here are working with Web3? I am. I think there's a number of folks that are. Okay, good. Um, that's what I'm here for is to learn more about that. I have... You know, a lot of the AR tech already built in and the camera kits and all that stuff. So I'm just going to listen and see what, you know, see what the, what he has, to, what you guys have to offer. Just want to say hi. Hey, great. Thanks so much for stopping in. Hey, also go, go okay. check out that Innovators Think Tank the second or third week. We did an entire Web3 session with Vinkatesh. Um, and there was oh, some really sweet. cool stuff and resources in there. Uh, it's like an hour long. It was the first hour of that session. And again, it was with Vinkatesh. He's out of London. He, w he won a Barclay Innovation Award and has a Metaverse, Web3, kind of all, all this uh, stuff going. We did an entire session on it. So I'll direct well, you there if you don't get everything that you want out of this. Uh, but thanks so much for joining us, my friend. All right. I'll, I'll, be, I'll probably speak up in a little bit. All right. Thanks. Sounds good. All right, Sato, what you got for us? Uh, yes. Since... The election is very important, specifically the presidential election. Why hasn't Congress rolled out a a very simple uh, federated blockchain solution so that registra uh, registered voters that have a uh, a an actual registration uh, so that they're able to receive like let, let's say a postcard with a with a pin number on it. Uh, to their registered voter address, and so that elderly people can just, by phone, uh, put that PIN number in with their registration data, and they would be able to 
vote by phone instead of uh, having to physically go out to the voter booths. And I think you are. You know, Sato, I know that the, the government is, you know, lags on implementing those types of technological pieces of infrastructure uh, that can make those things easier. And I hope as years go on and we get young, new young people who are awesome into office over time, they can start integrating that as such. Uh, I don't know how that'll look. And I, I do agree that transparent ledgers that can't be changed, uh, like blockchain technology, should probably be leveraged in something that needs security like voting. Uh, so I love where you're coming from on there. Um, thank you so much for sharing that point. Just to stay on topic, we have a, a, a launch happening right now with Ross at the Tech in Schools Initiative, and he has some in incredible tools that we're getting our hands on. So anybody joining right now, thanks so much for tuning in. If you look at the comments or if you even look at the Nest, you'll see what's on my screen right now. Uh, you'll see that we're, we're going over – uh, a, a new app and Ross is right now just going to tell us a little bit for us noobs about what this app is, what it does. And then we have a prompt that we're going to run. Uh, we're going to have some fun here. So Ross, let me hand it back over to you. Sato, thanks so much for jumping up. Um, and we're going to keep rocking here with Ross. Um, so before you paste the prompt, which is the fun part, I want to let you know what everything is. So first you have your things you do understand pretty easy prompt and negative prompt. Now, what's different about what my approach was, aside from like um, just putting in a prompt, is what if you can tell it what you don't want to see? So like it'll change the way that the image generates because a lot of times stable diffusion is like more like unstable diffusion and it gets a little crazy really quick. So in order to fix this, we have introduced negative prompting and positive prompting, which is super cool. Interesting, wow. So if you wanted like a logo that was not like painted style, but vector style, you would put painted style in the negative. Sure. It's what you don't want to see. The negative now, prompt. So anybody looking at this, pull open the nest. You can see the prompt and the negative prompt. That's what he's referring to. Um, so sorry, Ross, keep, keep wrong. Yeah, you're good. So what's cool is you have access to the best models in the world, including what Midjourney is using. So if you've ever seen AI photos, you know that sometimes they look like real humans or like fancy game characters or whatever. So what we've done is give you all the power. So what you're going to do is, with my direction, you're going to choose the things I tell you, and we're going to go over them. So prompt and negative prompt, well, you know what to do there. Just copy and paste. Okay. Yeah, so I'll put in what you had supplied. For Don't me. put the up. word prompt or negative. Make sure you redact that. A step ahead of you, boss. <laughs> Um, I got you, man. Give me one second. I'll get both of them in there. And this will be available on GitHub publicly very, very okay. soon. Very cool. Very cool. Cool. So I'm going to post that. We got the uh, both the prompt and the negative prompt in there now. Now, what's We're wild rocking. about this is you don't have to like pay anyone to do this. This is running on servers. So it's using diffusion models that are about two gigs each model filled with trillions of trained images. And this is how we're producing this directly on the web, running through, you guessed it, Vercel. <laughs> Interesting. So now there's a bunch of different models, right? Now, what we're going to choose is only two because we know what we want. Well, you don't. I do. Right. So you're, the models we want because we're going for – the end result of this is a beautiful woman that is like a knight or some sort of medieval character. And we want okay. it to look real. Like, I'm not here for, like, fake people. So what we're going to do is we're <laughs> I'm going not here to for choose, fake people. Yeah, we're going to choose Shinin's Beautiful V1. And then we're going to choose Realistic Vision 1.4. Just two. Um, you said uh, Shonen's Beautiful V10? Yeah. And then Realistic Vision V1.4. Correct. And then Got at the both. top right, there's a number output. We're going to want four. So we want eight images, four from Shinin's and four from Realistic Vision. So we're going to do eight. Yeah. and with, No, just four because it's four oh, per okay, model. Sorry, sorry, it's four. Yeah. Because this is the first time you could generate with more than one model selected. This is like groundbreaking technology right here. Wow. Like you're talking wow. about like using – if you were to select like – all of them, right? It would use probably 3,000 GPUs. Spin them up, use it, spin them down. 
Wow. Okay. It's, I'm it's, totally it's with you. It's pretty unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So now okay. we're going to do ratio. Well, uh -huh. we want, let's do square. Why not? Now the sampler, there's options. So if you want to read the options to the people here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it starts off as. And this is the type of diffusers that you could use. Awesome. So in the sampler, I have DDIM, Kuhn, Euler, Euler A, DPM plus plus 2M, Keras. Right. We're going to use DPM because it, it gives the best human. Perfect. So I put the sampler to the DPM plus now, plus. Now, if I wanted anime, I would use Euler. Okay. Interesting. So um, now we have steps and CFG. CFG is how close to the prompt should it stay. So we're going to do seven. It's like a good number. For the CFG? Yep. And then for the steps is how many times does it re-diffuse the image to get better quality? And that one, we're going to put 10. Now, all these are customizable. So you get to like generate millions of images and play and learn. And then wow. we even are coming soon with image to image. So you would upload your face and then it'll shoot out 50 avatars of you. So I want to share with everybody um, are you okay if I read the prompt and the negative prompt? Because I oh, think it's 100%. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting how this is written. Like what in, in the innovation point here, man, is like you including a way to tell it what you don't want is super. I, I, I want to read this for folks. We'll, we'll let everybody read between the lines a little bit. Um, you want me to change anything else? Or are you cool if I go ahead and read the prompt? Yeah, you can read the prompt. All right, awesome. So guys, the prompt that, that we have pasted before, and, and just so you know, we're doing all this to get an image by the end of this. We're using the software to ultimately have an image. Um, Josh coming back up to the front. Um, let me go ahead and read the prompt. Josh, I know you're up on stage and uh, raise that hand if you had something to say. But other than that, uh, so the prompt is uh, macro crisp quality, comma, head, comma, solo focus, sharp focus, uh, complex 3D render, ultra detailed, an extremely delicate and beautiful girl, half body portrait, looking at viewer, 18 year old blonde with a bun, emerald green eyes, a silver plate male that has gold outlines, um, real soft, l lustrous human skin, perfect skin, vibrant details, hyper realistic, beautiful background, uh, octane render, 8K, best quality, masterpiece, extremely detailed, CG, Unity, wallpaper, realistic photo. So these are all descriptions in ways that he's prompting to get this image that he wants. And now to help this thing really understand it, uh, Ross has built something that allows for negative prompting as well. And so the negative prompt here, guys, which if you look at the uh, comment that I put up, in the nest and you look at that negative prompt section. So I just read off the prompt. The negative prompt is bad face, no identical eyes, bad hands, uh, bad drawn mouth, uh, bad detailed eyes, bad mouth, bad quality. Like this is the negative prompt. It's like, this is what it doesn't want to see. Don't give me a bad face, no identical eyes. Uh, well, I'm going to keep going. Uh, let's see, bad anatomy, bad face, bad hands, bad body, bad feet, bad proportions, right? Uh, Worst quality, low quality, um, let's see, you don't want it to be blurry, don't want it to be poorly drawn, missing fingers, missing arms, missing legs, short legs, extra digits, uh, indoor. So, so right there, you were, you were essentially trying to say, Ross, that you want the picture to be uh, uh, outdoor because the negative prompt is indoor? Uh, yeah, I, I want it to be like, like in an outdoor environment, but like indoors. Right. So I was describing what like a castle foyer would be. Yeah. Okay. Low background, distorted perspective, canvas frame, three D, disfigured, bad art, deformed, extra limbs, close up, duplicate, morbid. So guys, sorry. The point of this is that this is all the negative prompting we're doing on the image that you guys are going to see here soon. Uh, and we just went over the, the positive uh, prompt. Now, I'll it, tell you one thing. If you notice, do you see the parentheses on some words? I do. Yep, yep. So that uses the AI, like GPT, to put in its own variant of, like, words. So that's a variable. So then after you hit prompt, it'll it'll generate, like, 17 versions of what long necks are described as so that you don't get yeah. any. That's genius. So what's the difference between two of these and three of these parentheses? Oh, nothing. Just my without it. 
it, like if you do regular, it's just regular parentheses. Like, like look at this. The three parentheses is code. It's directly talking to the diffuser. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, man. Uh, Josh, you had a question, sir. Would you have to? Oh, and James, you have a question too. Josh, go ahead, hit us first, and then James, and then we'll we'll keep rocking with Ross here. I want to get this photo. <laughs> yeah, uh, Josh, uh, what do you got, man? Yeah, how do I access this software? And then I also wanted to apologize. I had to take a call um, before. Yeah, Josh, no worries. Um, this is you know pretty casual. Although I know that Ross and I are locked in, so dude, no problem if you have something distracting you. This is actually a private demo that I'm just going through right now with Ross. Um, so I'm giving you guys available some... though inside uh, AI Tuda. So anyone who subscribes gets this Pixio. Right. Um, what we have in the chat, Josh, is that link to what he's talking about. The suite of products that uh, Ross is offering for you know innovators, and we went through a number of them already. Uh, but you can get your hands on on this product by going to that link. And hey, Ross, I don't know if you mentioned a price point for people, or you, you mentioned you could do like so a discount code point, of spaces. Yeah, it's um, actually so easy. So the price point uh, for everything, all included, is going to be premium, and it's still so cheap. It's like twenty four ninety nine. But if you get it, don't buy it. Hit me up; I'll give you a discount code. I love that. I love that. I'm definitely Maybe everything. I'm unlimited definitely GPT, unlimited images, everything. No restrictions. But but I'm gonna buy that. So where's the link? It's just myapps.ai. But if you're gonna buy it, go make an account and then just DM me, and I'll take care of the rest with you. But I can you make know, you. Uh, maybe over time, as we get more innovators to have the, this tool, Ross, we could do like a ITT innovators think tank code or something like that, and people can reference you in this tank in this call. Well, we maybe... can just make that all codes that I give out for here. So that'll be the code that I created. All right. All right. I love it, man. And thank you so much for, you know, I think if we can get, you know, Josh is going to download it. I am as well. If we can get more people to get their hands on and help give feedback and tell you the ways we're using it, I feel like it, it really pushes you as the creator. Uh, I know me getting feedback from things I work on uh, is almost a crucial part of even taking next steps. So um, thank you for being willing to do that for the tank, Ross. That rocks. And Josh, did you have your question answered, sir? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I'm good. Cool, cool, cool. Um, James, go ahead and get your question in. Then we'll go over to B. Steven, and then we'll, we'll keep cooking. Um, thanks for bearing, bearing with us, guys, uh, along the way. Um, I know reading off prompts and negative prompts, although you can't see them, can be tough. But I hope you're, you're getting a great idea for the magic that we're actually witnessing here. I, I sure am. Uh, James, what do you got? Uh, I really appreciate it. This has been an amazing space. Y'all are on the leading edge, the cutting edge, the horizon. Of all this stuff, I mean, it's getting insane to me. No one is picking up this stuff around me, and I feel I'm alone in this. <laughs> but yeah, I'm witnessing such a revolution, and I'm trying to get everybody on board. But what can you do? But I appreciate y'all for this. It's been amazing, and y'all are cutting edge, the horizon of what's gonna happen to the humanity james thanks so much for saying that my friend we really really appreciate having you in the tank i hope you come back week after week give us your perspective uh learn and continue to make an impact in your life your community your wallet the world um you know keep rocking on and be great my friend be Stephen, what's going on all right um i'm really looking forward to seeing the the output of this um this Ooh, um prompt. Yeah, you know, there's this um, thing about image generation um, AI, and especially DLE2, it has this known issue of having problems generating human hands and feet. So I, so I'm really I'm negative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, that's why I said I'm really looking forward to seeing the the, the result of the output. Man, great Steven, work, work how, over how awful would it be if we went all this way and I just never gave anybody the picture that we generate? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're gonna, I'm definitely going to give it to you, no. man. Just, just, uh, we got you. All right, well, we'll keep cooking. B. Steven, did you have anything else to add or should Ross and I keep moving to get this picture put out into the tank? Okay, um, I, I will want to say I'm quite impressed with the, 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 the work you, you guys are doing over there. Um, with the long chain and the, the, the various AI. You know, it's quite impressive. I'm mind blown. Like, I'm totally mind blown the whole thing. 
That is so awesome. Imagine that Saturday, 2 p.m., popping in a think tank on Twitter Spaces and we're getting our mind blown. Um, that's awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. All right, Ross, keep us rolling, man. Sorry. Sorry for all the holdups. We, it says seven and 10, right? DPM Karis? Uh, let me get back to where. DPM plus plus two M Karis. Yeah, yep. Good, in the sampler. Good. Yep. Yep. Okay. So two things. One, um, before you leave this page, if you want to send that prompt into like, so you can post it, it's really good if you ever generate this negative. This negative takes care of disfigurement 100%. So it took me okay. a while to figure this out. It works on most, like, even like uh, mid journey, this works. But not as good because they don't really have a negative. But when you use stable diffusion anywhere else but here, this prompt is pretty universal. So it's really, really useful. Cool. Would you be okay with me putting the negative prompt yeah, that yeah. you sent put, me put into the comments? Positive and negative, the full okay. text. Yeah, I'm gonna do that real quick, <clears throat> just so everybody can have it. And um, and we could do a few generations, not just one. So you get to see like what happens when you change settings. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, let me go to. So when you're done and you're you're ready to go, it should be top on uh, top right should say four images per model, and then you should just hit the generate image and just hang tight. You got it. Give me one second. It's going to take an extra second, so I apologize. It's like new today. We just no, launched no. it. Sounds great. It, it's going to take about seven seconds to spin up five GPUs, which is going to be enough to do this image. And then it's going to probably spin up 100. So actually, so my, my computer will blow up, huh? No, this all happens in the cloud, not even on, at you at all. It's awesome. So here's the positive prompt, guys. Just posted it into our thread. Uh, grabbing the negative one now. What he's saying with this negative one is you can use this, like when we purchase this, when we get our hands on this, uh, even in, in other platforms, he's saying this helps mm -hmm. to eliminate all disfiguration. Um, and like it, when we're trying to generate images of people, he's cracked the code in terms of what you need to tell this thing not to do. Um, and so he's, he's sharing that with us and anybody you know that may benefit from having this type of prompt, uh, that's the reason I'm putting it in here. And I think the reason that uh, Ross is so cool sharing it. So thanks, Ross. Both those are now in there, sir. Um, let's keep rocking. Now, previously, when you hit generate image, it would wait for about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, which is normal because it's spinning up GPUs. But our latest release today has got rid of that entirely. So cool. if you hit generate, they should just start popping in. I love it. And just to make sure, I'm going to go over. We have our square ratio, DPM plus plus 2M Keras sampler, CFG at 7, steps at 10. Images per model four, and then our prompts uh, as you use sent, and then shown in beautiful V10 and realistic vision V14. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. We'll generate images. I hope it works. All right, I, I hit generate image, guys. I'm letting it load and do its thing. Um, in the meantime, if anybody, you know, we've been going now for quite some time. If anybody has been in here, you know, for the whole length. Geez, you rock. Thanks for staying. Uh, really great, great to have you. Feel free to come to the top of the tank. Oh, okay. I got something. Are they breathtaking or horrible? Dude, these are great. These are great images. They, they, they I'm going to, I'm going to post them for everybody. Post to them see. all. I'm now post to post them, them. I made it easy. All you do is hit select all images and download. So select all then download. It'll put, put it in a zip. download yeah so it did is, okay cool how you can do this and what's coming next like in a week is you'll be able to put like what you don't want in five words and gpt will write the rest of the negative for you so guys these are the images that were just produced from the prompting from ross's ai platform here it's I pretty am, crazy uh, i'm not gonna lie like it's I'm unreal. go ahead and uh just get out the url so that way ross doesn't hate me forever Boom, save. All right, I'm gonna upload these. Guys, and you're like, about to be This is just blown. the beginning. This is day one, like zero day of launch. So it's crazy. This is the first day and it's doing, it's performing so well. And I've been these training it for a while. Were produced. It's crazy. It's awesome. Y'all cannot tell me that those are not extremely good images that were just produced. That's ridiculous.
That's that's pretty. That's that's ridiculous. Wait, you see them in like full resolution? So as you see, like everything's about to change, including artists. And so being able to control this stuff and being able to use it to your advantage is really going to be what separates people from other people and businesses from ones that fail and ones that don't. It's all about what you do with your resources. You know, in, in the age of creation that we're in right now, where there's so many tools out there to start building and, and easier than ever, um, I couldn't agree more with that point that you're making, Ross. I think that, and in my mind, those who start using these tools to build value for themselves, for their community, to solve a problem, those are the next generation of people who are not only going to be leaders of the, the tech future, um, but will inspire the younger people to, to take these tools and do great things with them as well. Um, and it's just so important for us to start looking deep into this and leveraging it. Uh, and I think it's what's going to separate, you know, some, some big players from some folks who could have been big players is they're, you know, them, them not using the tools at their disposal. Um, it's a huge reason I was really excited to have you launch a lot of this uh, in the tank with innovators is I think that this is something that they need in their tool belt that makes them much more powerful, taking ideas to impact. Um, and yeah, Ross, I mean, obviously this is really good stuff. Could somebody use this to, I mean, clearly they could use this to generate all of the images, media, uh, marketing that they would use for their company? Yeah, so basically um, everything you generate on Stable Diffusion is not like MidJourney. So like it's not protected in any way. So it's your creation and you own it as soon as you create it. In addition, Stable Diffusion is not limited. So like unless you're trying to do something that like seems like it's illegal, it's going to let you do it. So like if you asked for like a woman covered in blood, you're going to get it. Um, okay, on this thing, on your, on your yeah, version. Yeah, that's what's, what's great about it is, like, it's completely unrestricted. And that that's leaves nuts. the only thing that you have is the imagination that could stop you. And so I sent you, like, another prompt if you want to see. You just keep everything the same and just put the prompt different. You got it. Um, and and you guys will be able to do this much quicker this time. I'll, I'll normally, you, you would have to pay per image. So everywhere you go, it's per image generated, you pay. Except here, it's like as much as like the most fanciest Netflix plan, and you could generate like a bazillion images. Wow! And this all is this tool coming in the toolkit for the twenty five ninety nine? Yeah, it's all part of it. It's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Wow. Um, I don't know if I got the second prompt yet. Wait, okay. Yep. This is going to be, yeah, okay, so we'll do a, a whole different prompt, guys, and I'll make sure that we get the pictures from this prompt put up in there uh, as well. But really, you know, these, I, like I said, when we were talking with Lisa Waters or whatever, our sales rep, and we were just running some demos, this sort of stuff, you got to look at it from the lens of, you know, we're, we're generating, you know, not, women in castles and, you know, doing things like, like that, but how could you apply this to your work to take it to the next level? Um, you know, start thinking on that. So let's go ahead. I got, I'm going to get this one put in. Does this one have a negative prompt to it? Same negative. The same negative? Cool. Okay, yeah. so we'll just go ahead and put this in into prompt. I'm going to change it out and run it. And like, you gotta remember all this is not even like showing you an image on the internet. This is like creating this image. So if right. you were to alter the prompt in any way, it would reflect in the image. Like if you put your own, change something in my prompt. Like this it'll keep so the cool. same quality, it'll just alter it. Whoa, we got a astronaut thing going on here. So for example, just to draw a contrast, there is like that that platform where you can generate, you know, images essentially by prompting it in the same way i notice a lot of people what they'll do for example ross is t like put a picture of themselves they'll upload that 
and then they'll like get changed into like different things. Yep, right? that's like, coming like soon. You could literally see it up there. It's called image to image. What's it called? Uh, it's called image to image, but it's not out yet. Okay, so so you guys are actively updating all of this. Yeah, image to image will be live on, I believe, Wednesday. Wow. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to take these pictures that were just produced from the new prompt that Ross gave me, guys. I'm going to put it on in. Ross, will you talk to us a little bit? Uh, is there another app that, that we're going to be going to and exploring? Yeah, so I'm going to send you something that everyone's scared of. Are you ready? I guess so. Everyone's uh, afraid of this. All right. So this is called Baby AGI, the first glimmer of artificial general intelligence. All right. Let's get a little bit different. A glimmer. All right. Uh, guys, I just added the uh, pictures generated from the prompt sent to me from Ross just now. Um, all right. Let me go ahead and go to. So we're going to Baby AGI, guys. Anybody joining the think tank right now? Um, so glad to have you guys. We're, we're in real time right now working with Ross, talking with him about all the tools in his tool chest, learning what they are, and sharing with you innovators. So let's keep rocking. Uh, I'm going to click on this new link you just sent me. So I'll tell you how to use this one. It's fairly simple. So this one actually does tasks on your behalf, which is kind of weird and crazy. Um, but I love it. So all you're going to do is go to the model, and you're going to choose GPT-4. Got it. And then we're going to choose, we just came out with a new one. I think he's called the cat. Choose the baby cat. Yeah, baby cat AGI, huh? Yeah, so the baby cat is new. Cat is upgraded from uh, <laughs> the baby B and then the original baby. So original baby was kind of dumb and couldn't do everything. And then baby B could fly around. That's why his name is baby B. <laughs> but flying around and doing tasks is like not all I wanted. I wanted Google. So the cat goes to Google. Okay. Now okay, you're with you. you're about to see in real time is Lang Chain, and it's crazy to see it like with your eyes. I love that. You get to see the output for the first time. So let's do this, man. I'm, and guys, just so you know, are you cool with me posting this same same thing I did, right? Just yeah, you just all right. links. Yeah. Yep. yep cool. Because you right. got private so, links. Show everybody we're in baby AGI right now. This is probably about to be uh, pretty damn cool. It's a lot like the Chat GPT interface, the UI. Um, just as I mentioned before, other tools uh, clearly involved in in Ross's system here. Um, so let me go ahead and get this up for everybody to see. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody along the way here. Go ahead and get this up for you. So with this one, you get to like tell it something you want to do, like a task. So you could tell it like, Let's say you're you want to go shopping and you want to buy, I don't know, like something like a new television, right? Say like I want to buy a new TV, and I would like you to find all the best TVs available at Amazon and Best Buy because those are places I shop. Uh, be thorough and only look for things that have like the best reviews, and I I really want a good experience. So make sure. Like, other people have good experiences with this product before you recommend it to me. And then, like, that in itself is not even a prompt. That's, like, a clusterfuck of prompts. Right. And so what it's going to do is dissect that prompt and turn it into a bunch of prompts. You'll see. Okay. Okay. So talk me out exactly what you want us to punch in, okay? Kind of like exactly what I told you. Like, you want to buy a new TV. Okay. I want and to you, want to, you want to shop at Best Buy and Amazon. You only want TVs that are really good and that customers like, that have good ratings. And your price range is, uh, I don't know, 500 to $800. And then say uh, the TV should be a smart TV. Uh, and then say, please figure all this out for me and present me with options that I could purchase. And you can write, and bonus points for anything on sale. <laughs> See, this is weird. <laughs> this is like a whole different way of thinking about ChatGPT. Totally, like, totally. Oh, it's so fun, though. I just all right, love so it. I got that all in. And just think, uh, oh. And we'll and just, just let it rock. Yeah, sit back and explain to the people what you see as it happens.
because things oh, will happen so in real says, time. It says at the top, it says uh, your API key doesn't have access rights to GPT-4. Please select a model other than GPT-4 and run it. Hold on one second. Let me push it up real quick. No problem. So um, don't do anything. So you see in settings? Yes. Click that, and we have a special key. That's from yeah. our system. It's not open AI. Oh, okay. Okay. So you want me to put in a key? You, yeah, well, this is what subscribers get. Okay. Hold on. So isn't that twenty five ninety nine? Is that a monthly cost? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, prepare yourself. I think I might have given you the wrong link. So copy the prompt and just go to this link. That has the new update. No problem. Let me go ahead and copy our prompt. So same same thing. Just copy the prompt and put it yeah. here. And then I'll go. It's to the, the same one. UI. So what we're doing is we're releasing two versions, right? So version one is inside AI Tutor. Version two is is not an AI tutor, right? And you could purchase it and put your own key. It's like okay. open source, where we give you your own version. Wow. Uh, yo, I, Ross, before I run this prompt, I'm totally curious. Are you doing this with an entire team of people and you're just kind of the front guy? Yeah, uh, I have uh, a team of people, of course. Okay. I'm just yeah. the psycho CEO. I love it. All right, that's great. That's a great guy to be. Once we get through some of this stuff, I really want to ask you more about some of your team and how you guys are executing some of this. And obviously, as time goes on, um, your mission is very, very important. And all the tools that we've gone over today and are continuing to go over are going to be very impactful for innovators and entrepreneurs and, and anybody. Um, so I, I would love to you know, talk a little bit with you about how we can help you get even the best folks on your team, the best resources, expand you into different communities, get you in touch with universities, whatever it is, I want to try to help you. Yeah, uh, man. The community uh, would love that it, as well. It's been in over 85 schools already and counting. So, it's... Well done. I love that. Um, all right. So I, I'm now in baby AGI. We have the model. A, it's OpenAI GPT-4. We're on baby cat. And I just put in our same prompt, so I'm going to go ahead and run it. Yeah, and so the reason we, the other one exists is because if you want to put your own key, you can, and we're building it in that way, too. It says, create and cache. This process takes time. Please wait. Uh, so we'll let it go ahead and, and do its thing. So what you're, what you're seeing right now is in the background, in the background, like the AIs, Claude and GPT are having a conversation right now on your behalf. Wow. Claude is designing your task list. GPT is executing tasks. Claude is going to Google, returning Google scraped information, which you'll see with your eyes, back to GPT. GPT is going to formulate it and put it into a pre presentation for you. Wow. Okay. So, guys, I'm going to read you what I got here. This is what I typed in. Objective, I want to buy a new TV, and I want to show Shop at Best Buy and Amazon. I only want TVs that are really good and that have good ratings. My price range is five to $800. The TV should be a smart TV. Please figure all this out for me and present me with options that I can purchase. And bonus points for anything on sale. Such an amazing prompt. Um, so looking at the, so what it gave me was a task list. Uh, ID number one. The first task is Best Buy smart TVs, $500 to $800. And a tool of, was a web search. Um, so now it's scraping. It says that it's scraping the web for, and wow, it's going directly to Best Buy's. Uh, I know. It's, it's crazy. Pulling, it's pulling exactly what I've asked it to. It's, so it's doing the first task, essentially, guys. Just so you know, when I prompted it like this, it, uh, in, uh, Ross, if I'm not describing this right, you can definitely jump in. But what it's showing me is the six tasks that it needs to do. Correct. In order to get to the objective. Correct. And then um, it is just do doing them one at a time. So right now it's executing the task of uh, Best Buy Smart TVs, $500 to $800. It's doing a web search from that. And then with that, it will move on to Amazon Smart TVs, $500 to $800.
It's going to then filter the TVs based on good ratings and on sale from Best Buy searches, do the same thing for Amazon. And then it will compare the filtered TVs from Best Buy and Amazon and list the top options. And then of course, uh, our objective is met with the last step, which is provide a summary report, including tasks ex executed and summary of knowledge required, or uh, excuse me, acquired. Um, so obviously that's, that's us getting the report on the TVs that we want. How long does something like this generally take? So it's executing uh, like the first task. Like two minutes, nothing crazy. This, so this is, in a real sense, baby AGI, because what we're asking it to do requires human-level intelligence and input that where it would have needed to go to a number of different uh, sources, or sorry, we would have needed to do that, but it's doing it for us. Basically, it's yeah. doing it first for you. Yeah, this is, this is crazy, guys. What I'm looking at is crazy. This is all in a tool chest that's a toolkit that's available at, what is it, My apps. My apps AI. MyApps.ai. Guys, you can get your hands on some of this. If you message Ross in the think tank, um, we're going to be doing an ITT code to give some discounts. So Ross is gracious enough to try to get us um, uh, a code. Okay, cool. So the task has been done. Holy shit, Ross. It's just it's on task three now. Wow, it's pulled. Samsung TVs, Westinghouse, Pioneer, TCL, Insignias, all different sizes. There are smart uh, TVs. They're all within five, five hundred to eight hundred dollars. Okay, here's my summary. Wow, ta um, you're kidding. Let me go down to what it's recommending, so that way we can get that. So that just saves the human time and effort, right there. Yeah, like a lot of time and effort of like going to all that different, all those different places. Yeah, and even though like Langchain is like a developer community, but like developers, like Langchain retweeted us when they saw this because it's the best implementation of it. It's crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Task five, task six. Uh, okay, so we have our final summary, guys, on the TV. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, from Best Buy, we have found Samsung 55-inch class CU7000. Um, and then it lists a number of TVs and says that these options have good ratings are within the price range. And they actually gave me, they listed the ones that have 20 to 50% off, <laughs> um, which is helpful. You know, Boy, that, we, we, we gave it bonus points for doing that such, right? Um, okay. The task is now complete. I will tell you guys operating this on my end, my mind is blown. We just asked it to go ahead and look for TVs from two different sources and it used the internet to provide it a complete report. All the all the tools that LLMs are offering are now being put on steroids because of Ross. Sir, this is really cool. Um, you. you have a, a, a how many apps are in that myapps.ai right I now? I think ten. Okay, ten. Um, twenty five dollars a month. No, sorry, twenty. Twenty dollars a month. No, twenty apps. Oh, twenty apps. Okay. Yeah. Um, we Jeez. even transcribe audio into whatever language you want. Do you guys have an application on the phone? Yeah, so we actually have an iOS and Android app as well. Okay, great. So for anybody listening, you can go into your store and look this up. What would they look up? MyApps.ai? That's it, yeah. Once you get there, you're yeah. in the right place. And you can always hit us up on Twitter, and we have a support team that's always available. And we have video walkthroughs and live help sessions uh, for subscribers on how to use some of the tools because subscribers go to sleep one day, wake up with five new apps. So, <laughs> Ross, this is really cool stuff, man. We've been, we've been rocking now for a while. And the reason I wanted to just spend so much time on this, well, not only because you were giving a demo access, but these tools are very practical. Okay. Um, right. This is very, very practical. And anybody along the way, you know, who's plugging in the own variables of their business or things that they need to do, as we were looking at the AI teams, as we were looking at, uh, what was the one with the pictures? Uh, That's the Pixio. Pixio, yep. Um, guys, these tools are, are the, the future. In, in a real way, learning how to harness them is, is then you being able to create the future. Um, so we, we'd love to see that come to more, more to life. If you guys are able to get your hands on this stuff, um, let's say you go in and, and purchase this, you know, we're able to get a discount code. You guys get your hands on it and you have any questions, concerns, or cool results, please send them over at 
uh, Ross. Ross, is it cool if everybody just tags you? Yeah, you know, yeah. The nice stuff they have. We'll, we'll go ahead and tag TSI underscore org, right? Yeah, and we even have like a beta program. So once you're a subscriber, if you want the like bleeding edge, so like if you want Google Bison before like even if it's the platform, you get you can turn on beta access. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, for anybody who's been listening, and if you guys have any questions, you want to ask Ross before you know we wrap up some some of the apps. Uh, Ross, if you had another app you want to share, I don't want to step on your toes, but I did have some questions for you as an innovator, as you know, building a team, as a the crazy yeah, CEO anyway. to talk about it. I think that maybe you know we we could pivot a little bit and learn yeah. a little bit about you and and um, you know kind of the mission and and so on. Uh, and then we can go ahead and wrap this up and we'll let everybody have a nice Saturday. How does that sound? Yeah, sure. Awesome. 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 Well, so, uh, Ross, if you don't mind sharing with, with us, man, um, how, how old are you and how long ago did you start this endeavor of building out my apps.ai with 20 different, you know, things, obviously it started with one and it started one day. You want to talk to us a little bit about your journey so far? Well, I've been building Tech and Schools Initiative for, I would say, seven years, eight years at this point. And it wasn't until eight months ago where the diffusers and all that stuff happened with AI. And then I actually met someone on Twitter that works at OpenAI. We were chatting, and they recommended that I, I email them about what I want to do. And uh, luckily, OpenAI decided to partner with me, which blew my mind because that's pretty cool. And give me not only access, but like a whole bunch of credits to play around with. Because building this stuff, I mean, I could spend $1,000 a day in API, you know? Wow. Uh, and so like our users, I think, spend close to $700 each month in just API costs. Oh my goodness. And um, OpenAI has decided to help me by subsidizing my costs. So like they would half the cost, which makes it a lot easier, which allows us to keep it cheap. Sure. I'm not trying to, you know, make a billion dollars off this AI stuff. I'm trying to offer it in a way that's democratized and it's as affordable as Netflix and you don't just get one app. Because right now, if you want text to anything, you pay a subscription. And right I now... You want to democratize this and, and give somebody a way to access in one place a number of tools that can drive right. their success. And then, like, when a new tool comes out, it's not like, oh, you can add five dollars a month to add this tool it's like no it's free right it's part of that monthly value number that you're charging mm -hmm. and i want to offer like image generation and text all together generative ai and, and that's where i'm at now and next what i'm working on tonight after this is text to video and i'll have my first demo tonight oh, man can we can we maybe in a couple weeks have you back in and do a text to video demo well, yeah, hopefully it's text to video and text to 3D. Oh, man, we got to we got to do another session. Maybe what we do over time is help help innovators to get access to these tools as you launch them. We can do demos over the weeks. You know, we spent about 2 hours today, Ross, but maybe what if we even just did these like lightning sessions with AI, you know, where we're helping people understand how to how to use it, what the new tools are. Um, you know, maybe we do that once every couple weeks in the think tank. You know, I'd be really open to doing that, like kicking off, you know, 15 minutes. We talk a little bit about it, do a demo. Uh, yeah, I think what's super cool is like um, I would like create a way where like you could use it live and that you should give the output to people. Because a lot of people don't have access to these tech tools. Like yeah. outside of AI Tutor, Claude is not available. Wow. You guys um, hear that? Yeah. Uh, Ross, th that's awesome. And I love your mission. And I love the way you're sculpting it. You want to democratize these tools and you don't want to, you know, make a billion dollars, charge everybody an arm and a leg to use them. Um, you know, obviously there's, you know, a lot of folks in the industry trying to build things like this. What have you noticed in competition? Is there obviously, you know, don't highlight your competition, but it's always interesting to draft from what they do. What, what have you noticed in what other companies are doing and why is the Tech and Schools Initiative and the MyApps.ai uh, such a, a hard-hitting uh, suite in in now the landscape of a lot of products coming out. Well, if you're talking about from like the standpoint of AI, it's it's awesome because of all the stuff you just saw. But for what we do regular regular life with like schools and the government, and we offer over 180 tools on the internet, and we have replicated, copied, or recreated everything from Wix to YouTube, 
and it's wow. all private. So like we have, um, I will show you this. You definitely can't like send anywhere, but you can like tell people how ridiculous this is. You could just describe it, uh, but you cannot send it because this is where the COPA laws come into effect because students. Okay. But I want you to see what I mean by like replicate. Okay. Go there, right? Soon as you get there, okay, you're gonna feel weird because it's gonna look similar. Okay, so, so I just clicked on this link. You're gonna when you click it, what you want to do is you want to click explore. So oh. when I'm I'm here, it says happening now. Join edu. What I huh. ask me to log in essentially. Don't hit explore. It's a secret. Um, I don't I don't know if I see explore. It's at the bottom. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. Whoa, what is this? This is not Twitter. Wait, it feels a lot like Twitter. So what we created was something that could be like what Twitter is, but private for schools and students. So if you scroll down, yeah, these aren't like the tweets. There's no AI fanboy tweets. There's no VR is the next big thing. No Apple shit. No nothing. No Web3. No scammers. And it's just students learning how to code. Holy shit. Yeah, you're not kidding. And what? so when you think about when you take things that have already been done, like Twitter, and you implement it in a space that has zero access to something like this, you create an opportunity. Wow. And so this is what I mean. My mind is blown, guys. This is almost it feels almost exactly like Twitter. I'm scrolling. It's a timeline of a bunch of different students. Like um, you can click their names too. And like go to their, yeah. They have, oh my god, yeah. Is this pulling from their, from their Twitter? Is this pulling from no, Twitter and then making I a new timeline? I wrote this myself. This I wrote this whole thing. This is not even the same code as Twitter. Okay, you just made it feel like their profiles kind well, of feel they, like that. They open source the algorithm. Remember? Sure. I forked it. Oh, this is cool, people. Uh, and I can just explore different topics that people might be talking about. Yeah, and like if you find me, I'm the. It says I'm Mr. Roth, the admin. Mr. Roth. Also, well, you can't search me. I'm unsearchable. You can find me in the explore. I got you right here, man. 87 yeah. posts, 51 followers. So okay, this is really cool. Is this is this something where I can sign up, make an account, and contribute? Yeah, you or, can. Okay. Okay, this is yeah. really, really cool. What What is the future of this look like for other people trying to get their hands on, you know, what we're talking about right now? I know this is more... Like the Twitter like, thing? Yeah, dude. Yeah, so it's like private. So like if, you, like if the school wants this, we deploy it for them, and it's their own Twitter. So if a business wants this... And they get their own Twitter. Their folks internally could start... Yeah. yeah. You could even change the name. You could call it... Like whatever you want, new logo, new features. See, I always thought it would be great in a business to have a forum, kind of like exactly right? what you have here, That's where people could share ideas for you know the business or operations, how they could improve or ways things could go, and then other people in the business can like you know comment, like, and then upvote those, and then management can you know run a report and say here's what people are talking about in our business in terms of you know ideas or you know, whatever. The and it's is. great because students can contact me without having a cell phone. We even have we, – we partner with Discord. So Discord gives us access to Nitro, which is nice. And we also partner with DigitalOcean. So DigitalOcean gives every single student a server, which is nuts. Wow. Wow. And cPanel we partner with to give every single student a cPanel. So on this link that I'm on right now, if I were to – let's say just I were to sign up and start getting involved. This isn't – this is just the then main private server where – other people yeah. have the link that you gave them and then they're contributing? Yeah, so they're students. These are college students. Okay. And they're just from all around the world? Uh, all around the world, country, whatever program we're running. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, they, they can't get to here without knowing who we are. Like, we will not verify them. Right. Uh, we won't let people sign up and we'll ban people actively. Like, Super it's moderated heavily by my team of human beings. Soon to be AI in the future. Yeah, yeah, like Lisa Waters. She's going to be like doing your show. Lisa Waters should moderate this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what we will be doing in the future, potentially, is partner posts with brands. So, like, 
a brand that's education focused or like Microsoft that wants to sell laptops to students, then they could do an advertisement within this network, like a sponsored right. post, like Twitter. Yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. I'm not trying to rebuild Twitter. Like I don't care about that. What I want to do is build a community of educators who get blue checks. Every educator is a teacher with a blue check and students can join and stay. It's like staying connected from like your college. So they can go on yeah. with their life and get help throughout their time, stay connected. And when they're in school, uh, you know, we get like a few hundred users every few months because new students come. And it's part of their daily, you know, thing is like reflecting on what they do, learning and writing. Being able That's to reflect so cool. is the most important thing when you're learning how to build the future. I mean, these are all developers. And like, I'll tell you one really fun thing. You know what they did last week? What's this? Their assignment was to build AI teams. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's what they did. Yeah. Wow, very neat. So you're using, it's, you're, you're doing a good job no, no. of leverage. So, no, no, so I built it and put it in AI Tutor, and then I brought it to the classroom. I brought the source code, and I said, okay, now I'm going to distribute this code to everyone for free. All you have to do is change everything. So when you put it online, it better have a theme. And let me tell you the cool things that I got from Disney princesses to mechanics. <laughs> like, can you imagine, like, the sheer idea of, like, talking to a Disney princess that you <laughs> Um, And it, it gets weirder, like, because the one thing I was going to show you additional, which is crazy, I just sent it to you, it's something super weird. It's called Botcraft. So Botcraft is, yeah. like, social network style, but with AI. So you can create personas and bots and share them with your friends. Holy shit. So is this kind of like some of the profiles we might be seeing online on yeah. Twitter come that so are like right those now, AI bots? talk to our co-founder. His name is Nick, and he's in the form of a bot. Or you can talk to Batman. Oh, goodness. So people could put themselves in their own personas. Yeah, like you could do a live demo right now. You so could try. Good. So I can hit get started. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, and then once you're logged in with Google, you should be able to hit, um, like, the, at the bottom right, there's, like, a, looks like a compass. That's our current, um, you know, bots to play with. Nick is a real person, obviously. All right, I have got logged in via Google. It says you do not have any profiles yet. Add a profile to get started, so I'll add one. Don't add a profile. Go bottom right and hit the compass. Okay, yeah, I'll make, make one for myself real quick. You see the compass? Yep. And you should see Nick. You see Nick? There we go. Oh, it's still loading those tiles right now. There you I go. I see Nick. Okay, cool. So let me open this. So this open. is like an example of like actually chatting with your bot. Wow. So Nick is a co-founder of an ed tech company. He's a teacher and develops websites and applications for the web. He is fun, smart, and enjoys a, a good laugh. And uh, so I'm in Botcraft. We now have Nick, which was somebody's persona who was essentially uploaded as somebody I can talk to without actually talking to them. And he says, hey, Josh, summer's, uh, summer's almost here, and I can't wait. Got any exciting plans? <laughs> That's what the bot says. Uh, so, Ross, you want me to just go ahead and talk to Nick, right? This is a bot. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, Nick. I plan on going camping in the Rockies. So now he's the he's the co-founder. My question for you real quick, Ross, is how does somebody upload their persona accurately to something like this? Is there like a series of questions that are answered or does it take? No, you just put it in a body of text and it does deep training. Okay, so put in a body of text that I write about myself. Yeah, so you would hit like uh, the home at the bottom and then hit add one. And what's cool is they're like public bots. So like eventually it's going to be like a social network that's public and free and anyone could like make a bot and talk to it. Really good for students that need to talk to like a historical figure. Yeah, enter a detail. So cool. I can create a new profile uh, of a bot persona that I want to make. So I could make, for example, Cash Money Kev, who's in here. Yep, and you uh, need a link to his profile picture on Twitter. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll get a URL for his profile picture. 
and, and then I can enter the detailed description of the character to emulate, right? Um, and so then I would just start describing Kevin to me, right? Like who, who Cash Money Kevin is, is to me, yeah. what I want him to emulate, right? Like you are this. Yeah, totally. I'm just using Lane Chain. It's crazy. What sort of things can I have him do for me? Or is it just as simple as, it, it, in this instance, am I just going back and forth asking questions? It's fun. It's just for fun. Okay. So what if some, uh, like a boss, a CEO, somebody very high up at a company put their persona into somewhere where... Ah, employee... user persona. It's a user persona creator is what we're building this into. For companies that want to build new products and, and ask questions about the product to potential 22-year-old 20 Christy with two kids. Right. Right. That's a really good point. So you can start creating archetypes of your ideal mm -hmm. customer and then ask them questions about yep. essentially how you're going to sell them the product, how they would like to buy it, yep. things like that. Boom. So any innovators in the tank right now, this is something you want to get your hands on. You want to create the archetypes of your ideal customer and then start at talking to it about the product that you want to sell it. And this is how we get to that marketability piece and in innovation. We talked about those four things, desirability, scalability, feasibility, marketability. And this tool right here is really important in, in driving that marketability. Um, as we just talked about, you know, you're, you're able to create that archetype and discuss with, with that potential type of customer many different things. So let your imagination go wild there. Uh, Ross, any other cool uses for that or anybody, um, you know, want to share what, the, what they think this could be used for as well? Um, yeah, I mean, it's good for creating like personas, but like, I leave it to the users to tell me, like, I didn't even think about that. Some user told me they use it for that. Right now, the functionality is basically you can make a bot and it could do anything but take an action. So if you wanted to, like, talk to a historical figure, well, it's going to work. Like, you can paste in a whole biography in there. Um, okay, so there's, to... no, there's no chat limit here? No. Or character it, limit? No, and it's using GPT-4. And the best part about this is there's wow. context. So it knows who you are. Yeah. Okay. This is really cool. Botcraft. Is this part of the suite? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. So for anybody listening or anybody playing this back on a recording, uh, Botcraft is also included in the suite. And um, I'll tell you right now, this is going to be a key tool for some innovators. Uh, I love it. Ross, did, was there any... Oh, you have Batman and Mandy from the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy on here. Yeah. <laughs> profiles. Oh, man. I really hope people will download your suite, at least like a beta or do it for one month or whatever, and look through all these tools. Um, guys telling you, I'm so sorry that like I've been driving and having access to all this. and You guys uh, are, are, are just looking at the pictures that I'm posting on there. But please go uh, to the link, myapps.ai. Let's try to get some good access. Uh, Ross said that he'd be more than happy to, to give a discount code so we can at least get our hands on it. Um, really appreciate that. Now, so, you want to see what's coming tomorrow, but it's not ready yet, but I want you to see. It's a business solution. Yep, let's do it. Absolutely. Company. Absolutely. So this is wild. So I'm going to explain it to you, and it works, but doesn't do what I want yet, and it will by okay. tomorrow, hopefully, or the next day. But are you there? Absolutely. You got the thing I just sent you? Uh, no, I haven't gotten that yet. When you said, are you there? I thought you meant, uh, am, I, am I still locked in with you? And the answer is yes, Ross. We're locked in. We're doing this. I have not gotten a new link yet, though. All right, hold on. There we go. Okay, I think I got something. Fantastic. Um, cool. New link. Here we go. Data vibes, AI training. What is data vibes? So data vibes is the start of our enterprise platform and it's not built out yet. It does a few things that are super interesting. Um, one of them is given a user an API key off our system. So it'll allow you to build you like take the data and bring it to your website if you wanted to. So if you wanted to bring a bot onto your website powered by AI and your own data from like your business, yeah. this yeah. is the first step. Well, 
So it, what we're calling it data vibes because I see it as like dancing with your data. And I know that's crazy, but what you'll see when you get there is a login screen. So log in. Okay, so I'll hit sign in. Mm-hmm. And just I'll go on in with Google, of course. Give me one moment, guys. Okay. Now, should I skip the onboarding? In. What? Should I skip the onboarding? Um, no. What does it say? It says step one: train content. Um, okay. So what's cool about this is we're going to do the onboarding and we're going to hope that it works. Fingers crossed. So what I want you to do is go get, um, a, like you know, a text file. You can make a text file on your computer. Yep. Okay. So open one. We're going to make your first point of data. Okay. Yeah, wow. that's good. So new, and then I got myself a text document. So here, we're going to want to put something, like um, go to wiki and find like some chunk of data and just paste it. Not a lot, like like two, three paragraphs. This is a test. So just some data from wiki. Yeah, but then what we're going to show you, or what I'm going to show you, is you can actually pull it straight from a website live. Okay, so first go to a, uh, like a wiki page and just grab a chunk of data. Like oh, words. Yeah, yeah, just words. Okay. okay. So each of our users, the first step, once they become a user, is to get an API key here so that they could use data vibes. So data vibes is not my data, it's your data. Okay, cool. So I, I did uh, charging stations, like EV charging stations, and I'm just going to grab the wiki page, not the link, but the actual text in there, right? Yeah, just no, just some text, not the link. Yeah, you want a yeah. chunk of text. Yeah, chunk of text. Yeah. Paste it in your dot txt. So you create a text file, save as dot txt, right? Okay. And you're gonna upload that into where it says train data. Now you know it's there, right? So you know what to ask. So you want me to save this as just whatever? Um, no, it's gonna be like in the name dot txt, like text file. Yep. So we'll call this ITT. Do you know what's inside of it? Do you know what the words mean? What are what are they? Yeah, I know what all the data is. Yep. Okay. Um, so, so this is data, by the way, guys. I just pulled data on charging stations. Okay. Like, cool. like the wiki page on charging stations. How how much data do you have? Uh, I don't know, like uh, maybe a full page. How many paragraphs would you say? I would say it's ten paragraphs, eight paragraphs. Okay, half it. Okay. Because we, um, we're we still putting in the ability to do chunks. You got it. So the idea behind everything. this right now, what it does, is you can up, you can input a URL to like a GitHub and start talking to the GitHub. Like, how do I build you? You know? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, so let me save this file and then upload it. And now, when you, see, when you upload it. You got it. Cool. Let me Did save you see a this. Train button or something. Cool. So I made my text file with what we needed, and then now I'll hit sync files from GitHub. No, no. You just uh, you're gonna upload the file. There's a place to upload. Is there not? Yeah. Yeah. Give me one second. You're gonna like put the file in there. Got it uploaded. Now I still have two fields that need to be inputted, which is the import sample projects or select GitHub things. But so. All I've done so far, Ross, sorry, I, my, my screen and I had a couple things pop up, notifications. Uh, but so it says step one, train content, and I just then added that file into our thing. And once I did that, it says start training. You want me to hit yeah. that? Yeah, now it's going to glow. And when it glows, it's using Claude. Claude and GPT together, they're like BFFs forever. So now it says step two, query content. Yes, now you ask about what's in the text. Okay, what are... Test, you're testing to see if your deep training works. By the way, you just trained using deep learning and open AI embeddings. And you didn't even write a single line of code. Holy uh, shit. Just by putting information in a text file and uploading it, like this onboarding is essentially me teaching this thing. Uh, uh, it's, it's teaching the language model. Yep. You're making okay. your own language model right now. Okay, this is crazy. So I, I'm just typing in what is an EV charger, and then I can hit enter. Like, yeah. 
Does it say answer you or it says no, not yet? You know, it says, sorry, I'm not sure how to answer that, but we are all set training your files. Okay, what did you ask it? I and said, what, what is an EV charger? And is that text in there? Yes. Like, send me on Twitter the text so I can see what you gave it. Because then I'm going to show you how to link a website. You got so, it. Let me take a picture and send it to you real quick what I'm dealing with. And once you do that, you're going to be able to go to, like, data. Are you outside of the playground or are you still in the playground? I think I'm still on the playground. Is there, like, a way to, like, skip onboarding somewhere? Yes. I think in the upper right I can skip. Click it. For everybody in the tank right now, bear with us. We're just trying to get through um, some of this. Yeah, uh, this is more technical because this is not like letting the AI do the dirty work. You're doing totally, it. Totally, totally. It's for companies that don't want to give their data to OpenAI because that's what OpenAI is in case anyone here thinks that's not true. Let me be mm. the first to tell you. They train on everything. <laughs> so they're just take, they're eating up people's data. Oh, yeah. Every free user is like screwed. It's crazy. So you made to skip the onboarding? Yeah, you should get to the data tab. You see your one file there? In yep, the data? Sure yep. You see a train button or no? Yep. Train it again. And then you're going to connect that wiki article by hitting connect website, which is nuts. Connect this is all website. so beta. It's so crazy. This is like not even launching until at least a month. We're, we're fine tuning it. Wow. Okay. So, all right, I'm doing exactly that. Boom. Website URL. I'm just putting the same wiki where I pulled that stuff that I just sent you a picture of. Bro. Yeah, I mean, do you hit connect and train? Connect and then train. Okay, Great. so now it's training. So it's using that all the information from that website as well as my text document to train a language model to then be helpful for me answering questions. Correct. Yeah. Okay. You, uh, it says you have reached the quota of pages per website. Yeah, it's fine. Now go to Playground and ask again. To so go back to Query and Playground? Yeah, you hit Playground and then you can Yeah, ask me anything. There's an EV charger. I'm asking, what is an EV charger? Did we give it the wiki about EV chargers? Yeah, boom, it, it totally is locked. An EV charger, an electric vehicle charger, is a device that supplies electric power to the uh, charge the battery of an electric vehicle. Charging stations can be placed wherever electric power and adequate parking are available, such as residence, workplace, hotels. Yeah, it just gave me like a bunch of stuff. And it says summary generated from the following sources. So, Ross, I could, I could refer to many different websites here and build a language model that's just referring pieces of data that I wanted to. Yeah, and we – That's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, and you'll be able to have, I believe, 50 million points of data in our enterprise plan. Wow. So this this gives people the ability to build their own chat GPT oh, the way they want it to be. Better. So now you could go to, um, you should be like uh, in your project. You yeah. can go to component. You see that? Yep. So that's what it looks like on your website. Component, the uh, mark prompt React component offers a simple way to add a chat prompt to your website. Which so is hit open chat, code. and that's like a code you would embed. Oh, okay, yeah. So this code put into like a WordPress site yeah, or, or whatever would then allow. It gives you the code. And, and then it, it will communicate you, to this. It gives you a code. It gives you the, you can whitelist the production setup, so where your site will be. You have API access. And if you go to settings, you can generate your own API against us, against Data Vibes. Wow, and then this is embedded directly into your site. Yeah. Referencing all of your data that yep. you embed. Okay, Steven, you hear this right? Be Steven up in here, man. Our guy who works with WordPress people all the time, looking at, you know, delivering a better experience when they ramp up their usage. We even have a WordPress plugin coming in like a week or two. The AI Tutor plugin. Yeah, oh, oh there's going to be a WordPress plugin? Yep, it's going to integrate into Elementor, Divi, and WP Bakery. Incredible. And, and you know Pixio? 
Yep, that, that image it, one that we did to create those images. will auto-generate featured images on WordPress upon save based on the content of your article or web page. Incredible. It uh, just became a lot easier to build out a really impressive high-end site, I would say. Uh, this is really cool. This is really, really cool. Ross, I really appreciate you sharing this with me. I want to go ahead and take a picture of you what I'm looking at here with this uh, component stuff. Guys, I'm going to put this in here. I know this is a month out. Uh, this will be part of the myapps.ai toolkit, right? Yeah, everything. Is. Everything. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. So we'll get this picture put in. Um, what, where are you guys, you know, how, how big is your team, Ross? How many people do you uh, got? We're like uh, 12 people. 12 people. Okay, cool. And obviously, it's a private company. Uh, you guys are based Actually, out of New York. No, we are a nonprofit. Oh, okay. You're, you're a nonprofit company. Yeah, and, and putting this AI out is the only product that we built um, that actually people can buy. Outside of this product, people cannot buy any of our products. They are private, only working with the government and with students. Um, but this one's different because it requires, act, it requires like usage of an API. So basically, we decided to put this out at the lowest possible rate, meaning you're just covering your own use. And even then some, probably not. You're probably using more than you're spending. Sure. So with that, that $20 or $25 that they're paying, Ross, do they have, is there any added fees when they're using all the apps as no, far as? Uh, not at all. And uh, if, that, if, if things do change, um, which they might, obviously, because we're partnering with all these companies to make this happen, um, anyone who subscribes, it doesn't change at all for them. Um, okay. Right now, OpenAI and Bing and all these companies in DigitalOcean are supporting this. So, like, part of the reason why, like, like when you generated those images, you know, like, you know how much the hosting would cost for a human being? I don't. How much would it cost to, it to generate those? It would probably cost around about 800 to 1500 per month just to host. I mean, if anyone knows, like, serverless GPUs and how expensive they could be, I mean, insane. Like, if you rent an A100, like, oh, my God, it's the craziest price. It's, like, $1,000 a month if you're, like, slamming it. And you just, you know, each image is an A100. You made eight, bro. That's eight A100s. That's, like, if you take a hot second right now and look up what an A100 is. Look. I'll do it. Yeah, you should. Like, I don't even know the current price. It's so ridiculous. A100 price. It's $7,900. That's one. Oh, geez, yeah. Yeah, I see one is like 10,000. 10, yeah, that's just like one. And you and need the chip powering the race for AI. So you need eight of them to make eight images. But then you don't need eight of them after you're done, right? That's the right. idea. So I'm partnering with these companies to give me 100,000 A100s when I need them. Wow, okay. So that's that cloud-based GPU that you're talking about. Yeah, my living room would be on actual fire if I did this at home. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Well, well, hey, you know, Ross, we've been going. I know we went over a bunch of tools. We have, we still have some people that hanging out, you know, with us in the think tank. Uh, of course, this will be recorded, so people will be able to go back through this, listen to it. You also, know, hopefully... this is the first time we've ever done this, by the way. We've never done a public discussion about anything that we're working on, so this was really interesting. I'm so glad, and you know, I, I hopefully, hopefully, we were able to make it go okay. Uh, along the way and if we can continue to do more of these Ross I think we can knock out some of the you know issues along the way where we're going back and forth I know we originally wanted to meet beforehand so that way I could get a number of the links which didn't happen um, but no I think if you if you guys continue to do these live demos it's such great exposure for the product and such great resources for innovators that it only makes sense to to bring everybody together in one spaces and and do this you know as often as you guys are willing to over at you know, anybody or anybody at your team, you or anybody at your team are welcome at well, the, the one thing, cool thing that we're doing that we could kind of like partner with is I put out this thing on Twitter and around 400 people signed up and it's going to be a live sort of walkthrough on how to build your own basic chatbot using open AI, like wow. live with my developers and me. So maybe we could turn that into one of your one of your uh, spaces, but instead of spaces, it's going to be like live, like on, we're partnering with Zoom. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll, I'll shoot you a DM after we'll get the logistics figured out. and Let's uh, help take all building, the innovators to the next level. Building is easier now than ever. So I'm not Amen. saying like, it's not worth, like it's worth it paying for AI tutor and also like building your own stuff because 
using it, it can get expensive. So if you're like slamming it, like I've seen the bill hit almost a thousand. It's like nuts. But what's cool is that there's ways to do this not online. So like let's say like the beauty about AI Tutor, by the way, is it's completely online. So it's available whenever you are. But you can do this stuff locally, and that's what we're going to sort of go over. So like we're going to go over how to build something using local hosts that will let you generate images. So it's not really connected to the internet, but it still does. Like I'm using source code from sure. one of my apps to teach people. And then Absolutely. giving it out. Yeah, being able to localize that, not only good for security, but um, scalability within organizations and different uh, yeah. branches and, and so on. I, I absolutely see what you're going for there. Stephen, I saw you come up into the top of the tank and that you had a question. My, my brother, what is it? Also, thanks for being with us for four weeks, five weeks in a row now. Uh, I really appreciate you, my friend. What do you got to say? Yeah, um, I've got a quick question um, uh, regarding um, the, the AI product that allows you to create a, a virtual team um, to, to, to work on your, your, your project. Yeah, it's there a possibility of um, that virtual team, you know, conversing and maybe um, getting through, uh, will I say, more of like an infinite conversation amongst themselves and leading to several issues. Uh, it's, it's just a quick question to, to gain clarity regarding that. Yeah. Uh, the, the possibility of the, those AI teams communicating with themselves infinitely, you know, like an infinite loop or something. Well, I'll tell you, it's kind of like that. So what it's going to end up is AI Teams is probably going to stay the way it is, and it's probably going to turn into a plugin in something like Baby AGI that can do tasks for you. So it would say going to talk to Christy or going to talk to Trevor, you know, as one of those tasks, like when Josh was asking for the TV. Right. Because the future is in plugins, so all of this will end up in unsaved at the end of the day. That's cool. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, this idea that it'll all stack together to unlock the best product is really interesting. Uh, Cash Money Kev, our co host, what do you got to say, brother? Cash Money Kev, your mic may be having an issue. We cannot hear you. Oh, oh. Oh, no. There we go. We can, oh. We can hear oh, you now. Oh, okay, okay. I thought it was my internet going out again. Or Twitter <laughs> all spaces. good, all good. What do you got to say? Sorry, guys. Uh, I just wanted to say I had two questions for you, Ross. Uh, yeah. I didn't get to ask it earlier, but wow, I'm, I'm first off, I'm blown away. Um, immediately in the beginning of this conversation, I, I had an idea, like, or an idea hit me that so many uh, animation companies and artists are going to be utilizing your whole entire AI suite. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Kev, I think we lost you there. Oh, good. I, I, I totally see where Kevin was going with that, Ross. I'm sure you do, too. Uh, there's kind of like all those tools that work together that, I mean, really will start. We, we talk about uh, AI taking over the work for humans, and it's unclear exactly how that all works together. And then we do a session like this where we see how all that collaborates. And I think that's exactly what Kevin's alluding to. Yeah, I mean, at the very top, people don't – it's only people that don't understand what's going on think they're going to be replaced. You'll only yeah. be replaced by a human powered by AI, not AI. Sure. And once you understand that, then it becomes a lot easier. Incredible. Yeah. It, it, Sorry no, for lagging again. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, second no second problem, question my for that historical – So close. Oh, <laughs> so I'm close. Okay, for the, for second, the question. second question, for the historical AI uh, – uh, part of your suite where you could talk to somebody, let's say, like Abraham Lincoln, you uh -huh. know, and have a conversation with him. Uh, I, I had a, a, a thought, like, could you, like, it's kind of kind of deep. Could you, in a way, upload, let's say, your grandpa who passed away into, like, the AI and, like, have a conversation with him? Yeah, okay, so um, hang tight for this because I don't know if this is going to work, but Josh. That'd be pretty mind-blowing. Remember first link? I do. So go to first link and turn on your sound. So I forgot to tell you that, so you guys this. So regarding what you're saying, I've done it and it's weird for the people that that person like 
is for. I got one request and I did it. That's when I first understood that this tech is going to blow the world open, like crack the egg. Because I was able to deep train voices of people that don't, aren't here anymore. And it's like remarkable, like not good, remarkable. And then take data sets, like, like a whole lifetime of text messages and put that into the style of speech because it's just a parameter. And then all the data, as you see, he just trained data. So in theory, you can have PDFs, text documents, all about that person, and then train them all dynamically. Yeah, yeah and then uh, eventually you could just like update your passed away relative with like information of your life nowadays and have a conversation about that. It'd be pretty cool. You know? So like on the first link, what I've done, which is super weird, is I've cloned my own voice to test it. And That's it was crazy. Okay. And then I've cloned one of my team members' voices, and it's so remarkably good. And I don't know if you can like have people hear it. Is that possible? I John? might be able to. Yeah, I'm working on that. So okay, so um, all you have to do is go into the first one, go to settings, turn the voice on. Voice generation. Turn it on. So first line. And then ask a question, like, say hello. And like, choose where, the person. Where it says uh, speak responses, it says off or beginning. Beginning. And then as the person, uh, you're going to choose me. But then you can choose Valencia after. Valencia is better. So I fully uploaded myself into this thing. Now, you're not talking with Ross right now. This is a demo of my voice. And so um, I, I don't know if I'm in the exact link that I'm supposed to be in. Uh, I can just send you it. Yeah, let's give me a fresh one real quick so I can make sure what I'm going to do. What you're going to do is turn the voice on the way you did and select Ross V1. Hang on. So here's the link. You're going to go there and type Ross V1. And not type, but select in the yeah. set. Let me try to make sure I have audio that'll be coming in. Gabe, I see you came up as a speaker under the panel. You always got great things to say. We've been rocking now for a couple hours. Is there anything that you wanted to chime in and, and say, uh, given the work that you're involved in and what, you, what you've been doing and how it crosses over with, with Ross? It's, um, yeah, it's, it's super interesting. I see lots of potential crossover there. Um, I also um, have built a personal knowledge management system, and that's one of the, the parts that um, – I'm most excited with AI to actually plug directly into my notes and get my thoughts rather than what G GPT actually just, you know, spits out as the, the common content rather than my perspective. And that's always yeah, where I find them. Um, the work. The, the difficulty is um, posting lots of content in there. And, and even um, the demos that you guys were doing, you know, with one agent and then going from, say, Google to um, ChatGPT to Claude, that's something that I kind of do manually already, and I, I see the, the the benefits and the use cases of it. But um, it's I suppose uh, one kind of I suppose feedback wise, I feel like um, there's an information overload here. So obviously, um, you know, I deal with focus, and I'm, I'm aware that after sixty minutes, people start to wane on their information, and um, I'm I'm kind of interested in um, what. It, it, it's it's kind of like I, I was listening for a long time and this has been on a long time and I'm kind of like how can we help because this is a really cool demo at the moment but you know what can we do what you know is, is there feedback we can give is there any areas that need to be strengthened I don't think technical and code wise but is there business wise exposure wise you know future plans or bounce yeah, so ideas or uncertainties a, a, in there how, how can we help here as well because it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a think tank rather than kind of just no, demo. So Twitter doesn't allow um, sort of, I guess they do, like communities, but I have no idea how to do it, so maybe Josh does. So what we've done is we actually have a public way that you can beta, um, and the way you can do this is we have a private Facebook group, so I'll post it to Josh, and he can just give that link out, and once you're in there, when we get a new app, it sits there for like a week or two. It gets feedback from real-life people, 
And then, uh, and we have like 500 people there that actively give us feedback, like on every new app. So you can just go there and uh, I'll accept you. And then when new apps come, feel free to be as brutal as you want. My developers are actively in there. So this is a Facebook community, correct? And you're correct. okay. You're okay with me publishing this yeah, in yeah. our chat? Yeah, okay. it's pretty much public to whoever I give it to. So like, I don't mind anyone that like from where you are having it. It's just not public that like anyone could just join. Like I, I moderate who joins because it's okay. my Facebook page. So can I can I post this link into our nest? Yeah, you can All post right. it wherever. Yeah. Right. And what what Dave is saying is so cool because in the innovators think tank, one thing we love to do is this. It's this collaboration piece. It's this idea that we we as a tank have so so much diversity and skills and perspective and education, and whatever we can do to help even push you to the next level is what Dave is pointing out. Uh, this has been a really cool demo, and part of the demo is to help innovators. Like two weeks ago, we we had Syndicate Leon, and there are folks that help in raising funds. And so sometimes when we we have some folks on and they can deliver some tools and resources that can help innovators get funding for projects or gain insight and deliver their projects in a, in a more effective way. Uh, I'd love to do that and just spend a lot of time on it. Yeah. Um, and to the extent that Ross with you, you know, we, we, what I'd love to do is, you know, learn, you have 12 people, obviously there's a whole vision and you're moving forward. Um, you know, we want to help you grow and, and obviously you're well ahead of it. You have a lot of developers, you got a lot of good stuff. Dave is right. There's no technical or coding thing that we can do. Um, but a community of people who definitely want to help push you to the next level is paramount. And so I want to invite everybody to join that Facebook group that I just put in there. And if we can help give feedback for the new pro uh, products that are coming down the pike, that sounds like it's very helpful. Is yeah, I mean, Ross? yeah, like if you whoever joins and you go there now, like after you get accepted, the first thing you'll see is introducing Pixio, meet Pixio. It'll sit here for beta so people can generate images, start sharing on Twitter. And then we have like a special thing that will say generated by Pixio when you hit share. And like that helps us because you, we get to see the images when you tag us and be like, oh, this looks bad. You can fix it. And so during the beta, it's like actually completely free and unrestricted, which is super cool. So the last thing that entered beta was Claude. Claude recently left beta this week and entered unsaged into AI Twitter as an actual product. But it's been in beta for about three weeks. Sure. Dave, what's on your mind? One, th one thing I see that AI is doing is uh, alleviating a lot of the technical side of stuff for people. And um, for me, you know, I, I build websites. I'm quite technical. I, you know, I've delved into AI. I, I, I know what I'm doing. And even for me, there was, like, there's an information overload here. So I'm kind of thinking about, um, how how can this be kind of um, simplified for people because th they're, they're paying for the convenience of not going through all those steps themselves and I think there's um, there, there's a lot to do there for me where you kind of where we can really you know onboard mainstream people and say yeah this is great what's I'd be really interested in you know what what sets you apart without the technical side and you know what is that simplified you know what's what's the one thing it does that you know is that kind of oh well that's obvious to me that's simplified not to do it ai not to do with technology what does it actually empower me to do in an easy way i think that the messaging for me is is the part that that really needs to be um, refined because i think that there, there's there's so many capabilities and i think it's only when we got into an hour of digging into this and then there was kind of lots of ahas and oh wow that's cool how, yeah. how can we get that from the start? Because uh, I can see from the amount of listeners that are in here, we had a lot more listeners at the start who are looking for that simplification and that instant gratification. And if there was a scene to say, well, this is going to help you to do A, and everybody's like, okay, I'm going to continue listening for that, where I'm, I'm going to pay attention for that rather than the the kind of the setup and what it does you know so i'd be just really interested in you know what what does it empower me to do yeah no um so like a lot of those questions you know we're actively answering and we haven't even pub publicly pu put our campaign out yet like for with our videos we're building we have tutorials we have customer stories we have two new web platforms that we're building that are going to help onboard people it's all like in progress and the, what i wanted to do was get it out immediately because I had people that wanted it. So I had those people that like knew the thing they wanted. So I had people being like, I want to generate images for free. 
how do I do that? That's what I want. So like, I don't even care about your chat stuff. I'm paying 25 bucks because I want to generate images. And I don't want to be yelled at by mid journey saying no blood or your band. And that's like real users. So like, and then there's other people that are like, I want to chat. And like, I can only send five messages a day and I've been paying open AI $30. So you could pay me like half that. So, so get, the audience um, is already versed in AI. Yeah. But then there's people that don't even know what AI is. And like, that's that, something that's exactly that what I'm asking like, is, yeah. yeah. That's something we are going to like deal with. But like, we don't even like, it's changing so fast. Like, I swear to you, like, as soon as I think I'm finished, like I watch like, Google announced something or like we have a AR platform that's completely free right now for students and you can build, you know, like augmented reality, like how you can like mm -hmm. scan with your phone. So imagine you can make anything in a, a capture object. So like you could take a logo on a shirt and then when you scan the shirt, something happens. You get to build that product on the web. And like, that's like a whole other session that we could potentially, I can give you a demo and show you. Yeah, and do you know what I'm hearing from that though? For for an end user, I'm hearing paralysis of ah uh, yeah, but that's not my goal is not end user, so that's fine. My goal is government entities and schools, and so that's how we've been building this. Oh shit! Then I, it needs to be even. Then it needs to be even more simplified if somebody's no, no, getting so a wage is, and is not responsible. It actually is, believe it or not. They don't look at it as like all the different things. They don't care about it. Teachers use things like, for example, we partnered with Canva, so they'll use Canva in classrooms and then build AR and then build mobile apps all using our platform. So like right now I could send you, if you DM me, I'll send you a private link and you could demo our app builder. It builds an iOS and Android app with zero code. And you could publish directly to the store with our so, algorithm. So Ross, I just want to touch on something that I think Dave is pointing out <clears throat> and excuse me. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I got something in my throat there. Um, it seems that there's a lot of tools in this tool, yeah. tool box, let's say, right? Yep. And to the extent that these are used with the government and schools is awesome. But to the extent that this also helps innovators and creators and entrepreneurs completely elevate what, what, well, I uh, kind of forgot about that when I, since I've been building with the government and the students and then they built the AI platform and then everything sort of shifted because now people in businesses are buying it and using it and giving yeah, feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And so and one thing that I, I really like about where Dave's coming from here is like each one of these uh, t tools in the tool chest, it, you know, you mentioned 20 in there have something powerful that they do. They have something that they do that, that would likely really get somebody, you know, excited about I mean, them. The and, images you generated are insane. That's crazy that you could do that. And it yeah, doesn't absolutely, cost anything. Absolutely. And, and so, you know, I, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are thinking about this uh, for each course, one of those day. tools. Like what, what is the, you know, for example, what is the ideal customer, right? Who's the archetype of the, they literally the person can't that even prefer? believe like, and this is going to sound crazy, but like there's times I, I look at it and I'm like, we didn't even run our Google ads. I, I just partnered with Google a few weeks ago. They're giving us $10,000 in ads, like donated to help get the word out, which is nuts. Haven't even done that. And somehow we have like 340 subscribers and it just launched like in a month ago, two months ago. The, yeah. Just the bots, like the talking, the chatting. It's now been adopted by colleges widespread. Which yeah, is this is really awesome. interesting. Yeah. No, I, I think we're really excited, uh, Ross, for, for all the progress you've but made. We're all trying to learn. and I you know, would love to figure out a way how to show people who have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't know <laughs> how to do yeah. that. Sp speak, speak to me about that. So if you want yeah, to talk, man. we could we could chat. Who, who's speaking? I mean, That's Dave. Know. So, uh, Dave, I'll let you talk a bit. But Dave has been in the tank the last three weeks. He's been one of the heavy hitter, big thinkers, driving conversation about focus. Um, Dave, I'll let you go ahead and take it from there. But just wanted to say Dave has been, you know, a huge, huge part of the tank over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, so my background, um, you know, I have a framework for focus and it's all about neuroscience. But it, um, it basically fits into how we communicate as well. So I'm working with some um, educators as well on actually figuring out how do you actually get information across to people without overloading their brain as well. How do you actually get them to pay attention? How do you listen to them? And then my nine to five, I run I run a web and branding agency. So it kind of connects into that where a lot of my work is done with honing somebody's message and actually figuring it out. But the, the focus element is on top of that. So even when I teach workshops to people, there's a lot of um, kind of 
being aware of the cognitive effort that's going to go in if they have to digest new technical information and how that's actually going to go into the brain and how much they can actually retain in one session as well. And I think especially well, with well, AI, I think... We don't ever do this. Like Go the ahead. way it's being done here. What you're saying is definitely proper. Um, but when we do it with people, we do small groups of people when it's humans as like test people. And then we bring it to the teachers. We round up all the teachers. We do a thing with the government. We teach the teachers. Then we, we certify the teachers. We have our own certification platform. They get certified. They cannot teach it in their schools. Then the government tells them they could buy my program. Then they purchase access to the tools for a year. That's sort of the way it's been going. And it's been cool because I help a lot of kids and like a lot of students' lives change. Like I've got kids working in the Department of Justice. I got kids working for the NYPD and cybersecurity after my classes. But now, I just it's too good what we're building. It needs to be unleashed. So I just unleashed it, and like now I don't. I'm like learning. It's fun. Yeah, I so can't I even believe we got people Ross, to subscribe. I'm Ross, real quick, I think part of what he's saying there is when you're unleashing it, and and this is a really great discussion. I just want to say, and uh, Dave, I appreciate you coming up to the top of the panel and wanting to push it like this. Uh, first off, thank you so much. And Ross, thanks so much for, um, you know, fielding all this in a very real way. You know, you guys are on lock and have so much progress and have done so much really good stuff and uh, so much to learn. So thanks so much for sharing all about it. And as you unleash these products onto the public, <clears throat> I think Dave is pointing out that <clears throat> if you're the way that you teach people about them uh, can help them reduce their ability to be overloaded, that they yeah, might like have a better chance of using time. use case. What <clears throat> cover it yeah <laughs> yeah and and i think that's really good dave what are some of your ideas given focus um you know and, and people needing to kind of up front understand what they're signing up for and then looking for that over the next you know maybe 60 minutes when they're tuned in what sort of things would you add into this conversation for ross on you know bringing this product to away from schools and university which he has a very and excuse me government where which he has a very clear path of how he does that to increase adoptability because that's what you want, Ross. You want as many people to use it as possible. Um, and so getting people to adopt it is a function of them understanding what's in that suite, how it helps well, them. It's like that, and I feel like if it's in schools, that means more people get to use it because every school is 30 students. I mean, every class is 30 students, and every class we do like three, four classes. So it's like a lot, and that's what I yeah, want. Like, like, I want it, it to be helpful, and I want teachers to have to not build – lesson plans on Friday night and go out and get drunk with their friends and they can have my AI build the best lesson plans in the whole world because it's connected to the most information in the entire planet. Yeah, how cool. You're, you're Dave, speaking what? my language, Ross. You're speaking my language because um, I, I, I'm involved with um, a, a few providers who are doing a lot of um, unschooling and kind of online skills and I've been kind of helping them with that as well and how they're going to format what they give them. I, I suppose there's there's a few things for me here for for you know the typical user. I think the typical user needs the uh, really needs needs a bit of a format to how everything comes across. You know to set the scene. Here is the information I'm going to give you. This is why it's important. Here's the problem that's going to inoculate. Um, you know, for me, Apple does it really well where it, um they they use um, features, advantages, and benefits, and they combine all of those together, and it's like okay. Well, this is what it does, and this is, you know, what it will do for you, and this is why that is useful for you as well. And I think that kind of, that really simple format of just kind of, you know, FAB is is a really easy way to break down one individual app and just say, okay, here, you know, I, I know from experience because I've I've designed apps and kind of partnered with developers and they've developed the app, and I know that there's different personalities in that as well, and that. We, we can get into that stage of building and building and building. And because we can build, it's second nature to us. And what happens is then we have a, an onslaught of features. And, you know, the users are overwhelmed by the features. And sometimes it's impressive. And because we're, you know, in this movement for AI, it's also, you know, um, a, a trend that, you know, you're going to get more people onboarding. But what I'm thinking about is, two parts one that it's easy to understand but second i think as well even for typical general business users there needs to be some sort of positioning for the brand as well because i think right now everybody's going to get traction 
what happens with you know every day you have more competitors coming around and coming around and what is that brand and why would i stay with you guys and if it's just features someone else is going to announce a feature you know I, I feel like a lot of the time features because they can be they can be copied and emulated features are kind of like pricing that it's it can it can become a race to the bottom whereas if there's a positioning of the brand of well these guys just make a simple for me that's that's what they do and even though they add new features those features are all behind because they make a simple for me and i think they're they're putting the user force this is this is i i, I always say to people you know realistically when anybody is speaking even when i'm speaking now people are sitting listening and saying why should I care? Why should I give a shit? What does that relate to me? What does that benefit for me? And I feel like there there can be a huge cost of learning that's not taken into consideration here as well. You know, that for me is like, okay, well, actually, you're looking for this to do something because there's a problem. So you're already stressed or you want to be more productive or you feel like, you know, the, the, the market has changed. People want to come to a safe haven to say, okay, don't worry, we have all of the answers here for you. So I'd be kind of trying to, I think it sounds like you're in that beautiful phase of being busy and being reactive and just getting stuff out there. But I think it's, it's we're going to, we're going to get more of that mass adoption to it. And it's okay. Well, this customer base that you get at this time, when you're in the trend, how, how do they stay with you? What's the association they have with your brand as well? And also, how do you make those people that do come on board right now as those early adopters who are you know more versed in AI than future customers? How do you make those evangelists? How would If I became a customer tomorrow, how would I describe the product or the company to somebody else and say, you have to try this? And it's somebody who has no knowledge in AI. I'm not going to say, hop on and let me give you a demo and let's go through everything. I, I think, you know, any product that you can have that you could say, you really have to try this because it will stop this or it will make this better. And I think for me, that that's really, really, really helpful from, from that kind of, you know, brand evangelist point of view as well. But I think those two things really is the, the simplicity of why should I give a shit? How does it help me? Or how does it inoculate something that I'm pissed off with? And then second, the, the brand positioning of, you know, what kind of company is it? What kind of culture is it? You know, do I resonate with these guys? Do I connect with these guys? Do they have that same viewpoint as me? I think that the, the brand positioning is something that most people don't worry about to start, but I think that's the thing that carries you through to the future, that if it's done now that you can empower those people, I think you'll see the benefits of that in, in years to come as well. Yeah, no, I actually completely agree. Um, and we are like the mutant product that I have in my brain. It's like not real yet, but like all the pieces are. And like, I wasn't going to release it. It's only because people asked me. And after the mailing list hit like the waiting list hit like 250 people, they were emailing me every day. Like, when is the beta? Because I kept saying it's coming. And so I just released it in its current form. And people... Like, I've had it steady MRR for the last six months, which is crazy. Well, almost six months, five and a half months. And new users are staying, old users are staying. And I have data where I don't see what you write, but I could see that you initiated a chat. And so I'm able to capture metrics on each app and what's being used. So I know on my end what's the most popular out of the 20, and it's only about eight. And so that's what I'm doing is I'm letting the public test and the public will tell me, customers will tell me what's the best when they bring use cases. Like when people told, when I, I, a student called me because I give my, the support goes to my cell phone if no one answers. And they were just like, you know, it's really hard to tell it what I want, how I want it to speak with me when I want to learn something. And that's when EDU Pal was born. And this was two and a half weeks ago. And here we are two and a half weeks later. And Josh tested it in real time today. And it's not even included in the current platform for subscribers yet because it's like beta. But it will be like on Monday because it's ready. Like it's so ready. And now that student will be able to get personalized instruction from a tutor that is going to act very like a human. It will even test you and provide more info and search Google. And that's at a request. So, like, what's cool is 
um, Josh can tell you because he saw it when he went to Tudor Plus. It was like modules he saw, like tiles. So what EDU Pal is is just a module, not its own app. So we're beginning to be build and refactor code to be modular, like a Google plugin in Unsaged. The work in progress, but I I fully agree with you, and that is the end result. The end result is. Um, we are releasing probably 100 YouTube videos and tutorials. We have a docs website live that's starting to be put online. It has over 200 pages already. And we're going to be actually partnering with creators on TikTok. And we have a list of them already that are going to be helping um, sort of give free access. So they'll be able to go on TikTok and they'll be able to give away an account at AI Tutor for free for six months. And they could do that probably weekly. On their channel. Wow. And so, so these are the types of things that Dave's talking about in terms yeah, yeah. of you know the, you guys are definitely thinking about this, and obviously these aren't these aren't a done being thought about, right? This needs to evolve. Yeah. You mentioned eight tools out of twenty are sort of like the most popular, and there, and um, you know, like for example, the the URL, my you know myapps.ai, right? Um, I guess I I see where Dave's coming from. In terms of, and, and by the way, um, I know you guys are crushing it. So in no way is this a critique, but anything, just innovators giving some No, uh, it's some super notes, useful, you know? and um, I love crit any criticism, good yeah, or bad. Yeah, you know, and, and absolutely, and you guys are crushing it too. So, you know, but just in the conversation of um, making it marketable over time and carrying, like, this early audience, uh, Ross, you know, they're early adopters. They're, they, they will educate themselves. They'll go through those 100 videos. They'll do all that to use the tools. Um, you, we both can, and after testing them today, I can say that there's people that don't know what they don't know in terms of this technology. And a, a better pull-in or marketing or a, a way to show people what the, the tools in your suite are solving for them or can help them do um, in a very clean and concise way that sucks people in that maybe d never heard of you from the school or from the government or any area like that is yeah. an entire customer segment that would dra drastically increase feedback for you guys, revenue for you guys, um, new users. And so, and, and Dave, I could be missing the mark, but what it seems like to me is, you know, when we're looking at all these different tools and what they do, how can you aggregate those into concise language that can drive marketable action for folks that don't understand AI? Um, is, is that part of what you're getting at, Dave? It, it, that's that, that's definitely one part to simplifying the messaging that that it is broadly applicable, but also um, I'm acutely aware that early adopters are different to mainstream customers, and early adopters are also over time going to be less loyal, but also are going to want different features as well, are going to have different feedback as well. So it's kind of like. Who is who is that kind of um, medium term customer as well? You know that where you get all these people that may onboard early. They, you know, even even like me, I'm an early adopter with so much stuff. But that also means I have my eyes on the horizon constantly, so that if something else comes along, I'm like I'm jumping on something else and I'm stopping that and I'm canceling that subscription really, really quickly and really easily. And most of the companies that you know um, I stay with. It's not just based on the features. It's also based on that relationship. It's based on that brand positioning as well. So I'm kind of thinking about, you know, when, when things are on this kind of upward curve, it's using some of that runway as well to protect yourself to, for that downward curve, that it doesn't take a sharp downward, that you create that kind of brand rapport as well. I think that's, that, that's really important for companies that kind of go long term as well, that you have that kind of um, loyal, loyal followers who are not necessarily the, the early adopters. I think yeah, AI, no. every, everybody is early adopters right now, but that's, that's nice. And it's like, okay, take some, take some of that chunk of cash and of time and say, okay, this is who we're going to be and this is why we stand out as well. And I think, you know, I, I would say like uh, probably um, a good example is somebody like 37 Signals. I mean, there's the amount of uh, project management tools that are out there, but there's such a brand rapport for that company that they have a loyal following and they, they, they charge vastly more than Asana and ClickUp and other people like that. 
but they have that core base and they still have a, a really, really simplified message behind that as well. So it's it's more that and, and like Josh said, um it's I, I, I view the think tank as kind of spiraling partners. It's like uh, for me, is there is there areas that we can shine light in those shadows that may not have been considered or explored right now as well? And I think um, just just listening to you as well, I'm really curious as well of um, h- how you actually retain all of this information and all of these ideas because it seems like you have so many plates spinning and there's even these cool features you're saying, DM me and we can spin up an app within seconds, launch it on iOS. And yeah. that, like that was that that's such a big and useful thing, but because you've so much information going on, that was forgotten about th- till the end. And I'm like, no, no, how well, do you I make sure that th- th- that this is, th- the information is siloed in a way that it gets across the relevance as well to people? Well, I didn't actually tell anyone that. I was just giving you an example of the tools outside of just like that are AI driven that are already in production that thousands of students use to build and learn mobile apps. Like there are colleges that use it in their curriculum because it allows students to push directly to the app store without any code. Think WordPress, but apps. And I think these are the types of like points that get people just to say, holy shit, I got to download. Because oh, if, yeah, if, for sure. you know, if you're able to like grab that idea, you know, look, the no, like... no code app building. You know, not only that, but it comes with a suite of seven other things that let you build out the content of that app, generate photos, have people manage it, AI people manage it. You can sort of draft all the uh, ways that these apps work together in a concise way to market to the ideal customer. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. It's just like right now, let's say you get um, AI Tutor and you don't get any of the other stuff. That stuff is siloed. And just for like government and students, and then it's only available if companies want it, like a company can contact us and get like access to it or like their own installation. So like if they wanted their own install of this app builder on their servers, we do that as well. That's more enterprise, like a school would have it on their own server. That, so we give them a server from DigitalOcean then they can get their own install. So it's private. But like, this is also public too. So if I wanted to like turn that into a product, I could. And if you DM me, like if anyone wants to try it, the no code app builder, just shoot me a DM. I'll give you access. Like, yeah, how cool is that? Something we actually put out and marketed or anything. Like I told you in the beginning, I don't know if, if anyone like missed it from the beginning, but this is the first product we ever put public. So the other 120 products are just private. Because so everything everything we looked at today all 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 is in that suite. Yeah, like everything you that... saw today is public and available. But but what we're talking about right now is not. Yeah. Like it's not even available for purchase. So like if someone wants it, I gotta create a unique link for them. Sure, and, sure. And then Thank they you could... for offering that to innovators in the tank. You know, a resource yeah, to, to try to do that. I appreciate that. It's, it's cool, but it's, there's a lot. And, like, I don't want to overwhelm people. That's why it's, like, for, like, schools. Because they, they have this. It's, like, growing for eight years already. Like, imagine eight years of tools. Like, started with 20. Now it's 194. And, like, they range from build augmented reality in the web and develop your app and download it. Build regular mobile apps, download them for iOS and Android, or send to the App Store, your choice. Then Are we these- have... Huh? Are, are these 194 products all underneath your control over the last Yeah, years? I built every and, single one of them. And then you have 12 people that are working with you in the... Uh, all, yeah, my co-founders are all engineers. Okay. Yeah, very, very cool. And so taking each one of those products and letting them grow to their full potential and impact the most amount of people is definitely part of your purview, right? Yeah. Um, we even talk about, we have meetings um, all the time. And we talk about, like, which one of the apps we want to actually, like, bring out. So, like, right now, there's one app available that you can purchase. And you can't log in and pay SaaS. That's not how this works. You can actually purchase the whole installation for $2,000. And now you and your company can do augmented reality building. Like, for marketing, you can make, um, like, markers by uploading images and then placing 3D objects in a 3D editor. We use Unity to create it. But you don't have to use Unity. You use the website which has a WebGL editor built by Unity. 
Sure. And it connects with Euphoria, and you can do your own thing. Like, it's not our system. It's, we give it to you, and so, Rod, you pay for it. You're going to be successful. You already are. Now, the, the, I think that there's this line in this. I don't know exactly where it is, but there's, there's people who reach success and the people who totally disrupt. You know, we've all, we're all familiar with this idea of like a disruptor. Yeah. You have a lot of products in your suite that have the ability, given, given that you can shoot the arrow at the right person uh, in the right way, to really make some impact. And I'm just saying in a 194 product suite, I don't want you, Ross, to ever, you know, not, not benefit or disrupt the space that could be as such with all those, you know, products. And so I guess I just invite, you know, you to, to talk and collaborate with the tank on, you know, what sort of things that we're looking for to build and innovate and what we're doing in our, our business uh, and then help sculpt some of those tools to market to larger audiences of, of folks that could use them. Um, to me, Ross, you're sitting on like a gold mine of products that are waiting to be kind of put like, into a much like, you know, I don't know, in, um, in, a, in a side load, like as Dave might say. We could like go on and on about like how I did certain parts, but like I sent you a link just now, like just weird things have happened in my life. Like I went on a TV show, raised two hundred thousand dollars, and got that to start building, and then I took that, built it, and then still had two hundred thousand dollars. So then That's I started awesome. building more. Yeah. Wait, what TV show? Can you explain the story real quick? Real uh, sure. So I was on Entrepreneur Elevator Pitch, put out by Entrepreneur Magazine, owned and operated by Shark Tank. Um, I flew out to the studio. They selected me from like a million Americans. So fun. There were 12 people competing. Um, everyone failed and I won. And I, pu I posted the link and he could put it public if he wants. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put it up in the, the tank that right now. That is so freaking cool. I want you guys to see this. So if you watch it, I'm the first person in the episode and everyone else fails, but I fucking win. Let's go, dude. Come on. Come on. Come on. And my idea was so good that, like, they didn't even know what to do with themselves. And then everything I talk about, I built. Now. It's crazy. You need to take that to a writer in Hollywood, you know? Yeah, I know. You know, you know, I had a crazy idea. You guys tell me if it's insane. Take like $10,000, right? Or $5,000 cash and take it from like Meta, Oculus, whatever, Google, all these partners that I have because we're partnered with Microsoft and Meta. So we get like free headsets. It's sick. So I have like 30 Oculus and 10 Oculus Pro and like 20 HoloLens, 10 HoloLens 2. It's wild. Um, but uh, I wanted to give money, like five grand from these partners away to like an entrepreneur or a team, right? Have like a competition, like and televise the whole thing and then like give them the money and then build their thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put up, I'll put a path. Let's do it. But I, it's just an idea because I, I, I can get the money from people, you know, like I can call Microsoft or call DigitalOcean. Like I have contact like i was just on a phone call with yancy i forget his last name but he's the owner of digital ocean like ceo yancy wow. Spruley. and he was telling me like how he can't wait to deepen our partnership and i'm just like this is crazy like you literally just gave me thirty thousand dollars this is crazy <laughs> that's awesome stuff you've you've clearly been on the journey of an innovator my friend you, you're taking it's like, the impact uh, it's been something i swear like i need a film crew i feel like sometimes well, you know what would be awesome uh, too, Ross, is we th this week we spent a lot of time – or sorry, uh, this session we spent the last two and a half hours talking about these demos and going on with this stuff. Next week there's going to be a whole nother round of people with projects, ideas, businesses that are totally different from this. But they will need to leverage some of the tools and maybe could really use some of your insights and experience. Ross, I'd love you to come back on your personal account, you know, even if it's this account hear on what some of the businesses are, are doing, some of our startups are doing, and contribute as a speaker, I think that you could uh, really inspire and, and lift yeah, people. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Us. We're so, like, so not public that, like, I don't even, I didn't have a Twitter account. Like, I recently made a Twitter account. And I don't even have a Ross Twitter account. That doesn't even exist. Um, you gotta get but one. Get one and, and let I know. Me, let's get one. But what's cool is, like, when Elon took over, because, like, I, I knew his wife. So I was working at Google a long time ago. This is like a funny story. And I was at an event and I met his wife. So we retained contact. Which so like, one? Uh, the first one. <laughs> nice. She was like kind of old-ish. But she was she was like, like, I forget her name. It's like Janine or something like that. Some, some shit. But 
anyways, it was one of, uh, she, she said she born two of his children. So that was the first wife. Anyways, long story short, they must have had a conversation. Um, but he took over Twitter and I liked one of his tweets. And then he just was like, oh, tech and schools, I've heard of you before. You're doing AI and, and, and XR and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And then he just upgraded us to Twitter Blue. So then I'm like, okay, let's use Twitter. So I just started doing, doing Twitter. This is like fun. I never did anything like this ever in my whole well, life. Well, this is a lot of fun, Ross. And in real time, I think we had you know, hundreds of people over the last many hours join us and listen in, even if they caught one tool or uh, two tools from the demo. It was awesome. I'm sure you can look in the nest. We've had you know, a lot of people really excited about what you're doing. Uh, and it's definitely brought a lot of value. So you know, I'm glad that you're just now getting on Twitter. It's a good place to be. I am as well. I, I've had my account since, you know, whatever, you know, middle school. You're like school really or, good at Twitter. I'm like terrible. You're good at Twitter. Oh, that. man, I, you know, I really appreciate you saying that. I, I don't I have so much room to grow in this tank. And I'm excited over time to, you know, work with, all, you know, B. Steven, O'Nally, Dave, all these people that come, GD, all these people that come week after week to just get better, my co-host. Uh, but you, you crushed it today, Ross. And I think it would be awesome for you to get a personal account, start tuning into this think tank, because I'll tell you what. The archetype of an innovator loves that tool set that we went through today. Okay. That like uh, innovators need that, that tool set. So week to week, you know, Ross, if you come in here and provide that insight and help uh, guide some of the think tank with, you know, you can contribute whatever way you Ooh, see I fit. I have a really good idea. You know what we could Tell do? Tell me. You, you can come up with like a, uh, like a theme, what you're doing every week. And then I will put up a version of uh, of one of our apps that people can actually play with live. Like you can drop the link. That'd be great. Ross, let's do it. Let's, these are the, you know, we'll come up with a, uh, we'll reach out uh, individually, Ross, my co-host and me. We'll set up something where we can collaborate further. And I welcome anybody who is interested in trying to collaborate with the think tank or seeing what ways that we can, you know, bring innovators together, people who want to make an impact, people who want to take it to the next level uh, and collaborate because coll collaboration is the new currency. Uh, you guys, you hear me say it, I'll say it every freaking week until I'm blue in the face. Collaboration is the new currency. Um, so, Ross, you know, this has been an, an awesome session. And, and like I'm saying, week after week, uh, let's try to make something happen. And anybody that invite is open to as well. Um, and I just sent you the, a link to our site. It's not the AI site. It's like our site, the nonprofit that, like, runs everything. So if you wanted to like see a little about like what we do, I PM'd it. If you want to put it here, you can. If not, it's cool. Just so you can get a context of like, we're not an AI company, you know? Like we just build really cool AI shit and like people want them. So like I have no, like this is the only way to do it. Like I can't give it to everyone because like people use it a lot. Like I had one student that did 22,000 tokens in literally a month. Wow. It's like, and, and she's like, yeah. And I was going easy. She's like, wait till next month. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Uh, there's so many points of collaboration, you know, between us and between you and everybody in the tank. Guys, I just posted the link that he sent me so you can go right to the Tech and Schools Initiative. They have a place where you can make a donation, a place where you can check out their mission. Um, and, you know, everybody get over there and check it out. It looks like we had somebody requesting to speak. Sushi coming on in. Um, Sushi, you're up as a speaker, my friend. Love to have you. Uh, what do you got to say? Can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you now, sir. What's up? So um, I posted a, a picture of some of the tools I have in you guys' comments. I just want to bring that up with the, with the new AR goggles or new spectacles, I mean. Um, and I wanted to know if you guys thought the apples were any better than Snapchats and what your thoughts were on that before we ended, before I left. Yeah, yeah. You, sorry, you said if Apple's was any better than, than what? It's, it's Snapchat. Snapchats. Yeah, that's actually... Oh, I can answer that. Please, please do. So the thing with AR glasses right now is I have them all. Oh, in my I'm so room, jealous. So I have them all. <laughs> like, I have every single one of them and duplicates. So the only one I don't have is Apple. It will be here in three months. Oh. I should be getting, like, ten of them before the release. But I have uh, HoloLens 1, HoloLens 2. Magic Leap, Magic Leap 2, MetaQuest, MetaQuest Pro. That's everything out. And the Snap Lenses and Google Glasses. And Damn. the only ones that are amazing, like jaw-droppingly amazing, is Magic Leap. Magic two. Leap? It's incredible. Really? Magic Leap 2, number two. It's bonkers. Where do you get those from? And, uh, directly from Ronnie Abovitz when he was CEO. He literally delivered them to my apartment. It was the best day ever. Yo. 
Um, can I direct message you and ask you a few questions later on? You can direct message me. And if you're like in New York City or somewhere close, you can actually try all this stuff. In person. Well, I would love to do that. We have public um, we have public demos where you can book a public demo. It's free. Well, like, I'm, we're I'm, I'm actually going to get some of the Snapchat no. um, ones very soon and then potentially um, maybe try. I think. The Snapchat is not what you want to put your money in. If you want to get into a platform, get uh, the Windows HoloLens 2. It's amazing. Get Magically 2 and get the Meta Pro and get the Apple Glasses. Those four okay. will have you covered for the most insane revolution. Snapchat, it's hot fucking garbage. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good to hear. It is not. What you want to do is you want to, so like if you want to make a million dollars, in the next one year time, right? I'm listening. What you would do is learn. You would learn Unity, and if you need help, you can DM me, and I can have I, partnered with Unity. So I think can I like our Unity? Okay. Can I let you uh, huh? review what I've already built, and then you can tell me what you think, and then maybe give me some direction? Yeah. So you could review. Because I built a yeah, lot. Yeah. And then if you, yeah, yeah, but like we also partnered with Unity, so I have access to things that are not in the marketplace oh, yet. I believe that. I haven't that done much with Unity. Awesome. So. And I have um, in our own SDK, which makes Unity even easier to use and includes tools that we built ourselves, oh, which that's are amazing. open source. Have you, yeah, have you used Lens Studio? Yeah, I've used Lens Studio. I'm, I'm a creator on there, too. So. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, like, all this stuff is cool, and like, it's going to be interesting in the end. Like, what I've seen with... Um, Microsoft before they like released it and like people have paid me like my organization it was like a research grant to build out like for a stem lab to turn molecules into holograms oh that's cool and like oh my god the potential of money to be made and what's going to happen is going to be even like it's going to be like who's going to make more the AI developer or the AR developer well I'll make you sushi when I come to visit you in New York whatever uh you know, I'll do a private event for you guys if you want. I do private yeah, events for the Jaguars, so GTA. Cool. NBC, that's what I Sushi, do. Sushi, you got to do the Innovator Think Tank. When we do it in person, man, we're going to have a whole event oh, from uh, around the globe. I will. I'll have you come. You got to do our food, okay? I, and you listen, I go anywhere. I did the Tokyo Olympics for NBC, too. So, Thanks, come to Colorado. It doesn't but matter I, where. I'll go. The money's right. And the, well, the, you got to be covered. You know, you got to make money for the business still. Um, but I'll, but if you guys are willing to trade or barter, I'm all about that, too. With people right now, Unity is going to be the sole partner of the Apple Vision Pro. And if you go over to GitHub and you search, like, Apple okay. Vision Pro, you're going to find an SDK that's mine that I'm going to be open source. So if you like fork it, when we put it out, you're going to be able to use it. And it's going to be free. That's how I found you guys was uh, GitHub. I was like digging into <laughs> GitHub and like I saw Unity in there and I didn't really pay much attention to it. And I can see that was a mistake now. So I'll be messing yeah, with so that tonight. Unity is going to be the most important company in the future because they are cross-platform partnering with Meta and Apple. And magically, and what's even crazier is Nvidia now does the Omniverse. So our, we have um, a VR experience. So whoever has a VR headset, if you have one, you could DM us, and we can invite you to some really cool stuff. We have a museum for students with, that you can use your Meta avatar with and join with your friends and take pictures with a digital camera and send well, it to your teacher. Like I said, I would love for you to review my stuff. I'm not a student. I'm actually 36 years old. I don't have like all the credentials that everybody else has, but I'm very I, I'm like kind of naturally good with a computer. I don't know why, but I'm oh, you don't need it. credentials as long as you know what you're doing. That's all that anyone cares about. I got certification <laughs> that I've earned over the last two to three years, so that's good. But yeah, definitely send me your stuff. We are always building Unity experiences, and of course, we do contract out to build certain things. Because yeah, just... the main thing is I need direction. I need somebody to help me get some direction because there's so much out there. Like you were saying earlier, there's just so much out there. No, it's yeah. crazy. Like it's Nuts, so man. crazy. It's so hard Nuts. to hone in on what you could potentially there's, make. There's, with. The opportunity is like somebody just dropped a big bag of like a bank vault that you can crack easily. But you got if you you get too distracted with all the other stuff, it's crazy. Like what's so. killing me, what's funny is like if outside perspective and this spaces, if you look at it, you're like, oh, my God, that product is not going to be successful. It needs marketing, blah, blah, blah. 
Well, that's probably all true, but it's also like half true because like I don't do marketing and like I've never done marketing and it's just the, the, the actual stuff, like the platform students use and the AI itself is like what's making it work. So imagine if I actually did the marketing for it. It'd be like, right. so I have one more question. What computer do you, what, what, what laptop do you recommend for the new stuff that's coming out? Uh, so what you're going to need is like, uh, right. Like I use, so, okay. So I had a computer actually go up in smoke, like for real, for real. <laughs> um, so the thing is when, when I was deep training, so you remember the thing where he did the images, did you see the image generation? I right did, here? Yeah, I watched. So like that spins up actual GPUs. So my crazy ass went to Best Buy, bought 30 GPUs. And I oh, just wow. put it together straight up basement style, Silicon Valley style. And it just kaboom. <laughs> what computer so then, was it? It was, I built a brand new computer with a 3090 Ti to run the rig. And then 3070s, 60s, 1080s to help with the rendering. Oh, wow. Um, but I only was able to get one image every five minutes, which was just abysmal. But it works, right? The code works. So yeah. I was like, okay, got to scale up. So now... We run completely serverless. So I use one machine at home with dual GPUs, a 4090 and a 3090. And wow. they basically just do everything. Uh, when well, it comes to Apple, less, I went out. Less, like, less uh, advanced, I would say. <laughs> if you want like something that's an all-around good computer, I would go with the Tough Book by Asus. It's really, really, really good. Um, but unfortunately, Apple is not going to let you develop unless you have an iOS device. So I do. You need I have that. Yeah. Yeah, I got the MacBook. Oh, no, you need the, Mac the, the one. Yeah. The one and one chip in yeah, it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, guys, you, have you ever made an app before? Ever? Oh yeah, I'm making. I'm building two of them right now. Like, have you put it into production, like through the App Store? Um, not yet. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's going to do well. I've got. I've done a pretty good job, I think. It's got to be called God Sauce. Um, well, if so you, I'm a chef. So. If you don't, if you have any trouble, I can help you. I'm partner with Yeah, that. I would love that. That's there why I said I want you to look at my. Crazy. We can do like a Zoom or something like that. I could show you what I have, and you can be like, that's Apple crap, that's crap. Been, like, good. my worst enemy with App Review. Like, they're the worst. They'll be like, there's an extra space. Or my favorite. Guys, brace yourself for this one. If you submit something to the App Store and it signs in with Google, guess what? You're turned what? down, and it must sign in with Apple too. That's crazy. That's crazy. That must, that's that's crazy. That's like. Why would they do that? They're working crazy. together. That doesn't make sense. So, they rejected AI Tutor, and then I have to resubmit it with Apple Login. It's fucked up, man. Well, I'm I'm sure I've made plenty of mistakes. I've I never touched a computer until 2019. No. But joke. if you're actually putting something out, I can uh, send it to the part of my team that does the code review and production ready apps. So they'll tell you what's wrong with it, how you can fix it, and how you can make calls better or do well, anything I've, better. I, I've also got a sauce company that I'm, a, I'm getting ready to launch. Well, I'm launching. It's going into my sauce will be in Kroger's, Publix, all the big stores. Oh, so cool. And, yeah, that's part of what I need help promoting, too. That's why I yeah. even got into all this. So it's called OG Shrimp Sauce. I might change the name eventually, but it's by my, my company. It's called Sushi Will Sauces. So, oh, man. Well, I would love yeah, to have yeah. you in the tank next week to come talk with, you know, about yeah. your project, man. So, Sushi, yeah, I'd love to talk about let's it. Even, let's even plan to have you next week at, you know, 2 p.m. If you can make it, Mountain Time. Oh, I can. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll have you in next you week. Do you have a website we'll... live or no? My website is not good because I, I just is, – it's garbage, okay? My website is garbage. My good my good website is called Han Sushi Catering. That's my other business, H-O-N-S-U-S-H-I Catering. Um, and then my other one is Sushi Will Sauces. I'm probably going to – fix it tonight i just was playing around with it and didn't never where do you it, host so. it um i host it at square space right now i would don't want to host it there but i've got a lot of regular clients so that's why i haven't moved it and i don't really know what to do about it because i'm still the, learning the, about the seo the, um, and all this other stuff it's just a the, lot the um, sushi feel yes, free sir. to dm me i am um, I win awards for um, my web design and stuff like that, so I know what I'm doing. Well, the problem them, is yeah. I don't have a if lot you want of money right now. On it. That's the no, main problem. No, I'm not. I'm not fishing. I just for want to warn you. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not fishing for business. Okay. If you uh, awesome. if you want me to have a look over it and give you some pointers that maybe you can make some tweaks, you know, just small tweaks can make big difference. Yeah, I would love that. You're the man, Dave. I can use the help right now because, like, right now I'm building most of this by myself, like single handedly. Right. I put like over 
almost one hundred and twenty thousand dollars into this company um, in the last six months. So, and that was all my money. <laughs> well, yeah. you want, um, when you get a chance, shoot me like your email and a DM, and I'll give you um, a CPAP. So I'm, I'm actually driving right now, and I'm talking over voice text. No, no, and not I don't now. know exactly your name on here, so, so I, I don't I'm, want to I'm, lose you. It's just Tech in Schools Initiative. It's like the black dot. Tech in School Initiative. Oh, okay. I know which one you're talking about. So I, if I you have... DM me like your email, I will connect you with um, a C panel courtesy of Digital Ocean. So you can start wow, building the right that's amazing. You guys are awesome. Like, seriously, that, this is my favorite panel I've found so far. The other ones are all about crypto scams and all this weird stuff. I'm like, Sweet. <laughs> this is why we made it. I do not want to get involved in that. Well, you know, just to, <laughs> I'm sorry to, t- to take over real quick, guys. I, we're, we're coming up on this four and a half hour mark. Um, I got some places that I got to be, but I, I do yes. want to say just, you know, having have sushi, this just drives home the point. Sorry to say it again, man. Collaboration is the new currency. You working is, with Dave, right. you, you being able to provide some insight on what Dave's doing from all your expertise. And uh, look, look, you just mentioned how you put 120 K into the company already. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So let's get you collaborating to make up for some of that currency. If you know what I mean, so Wait, let's how start much folks who, what was that? What now? H- how much was it? 120k. 120k and since January, I've dropped into my company, and it's all sauce. It's, it's made. I've got, I've got the what do you call it? The, the inventory, and I've also got my. I'll have to send it all to you guys. I'll send it all to you. We're gonna through, talk uh, next week for sure, yeah. and we'll, we'll open up this whole book of, of your company, man. Plan. And I'm excited to talk about it. Me too. Yeah. I'm very excited. Uh, this is gonna be fun. I love it. Uh, I, Tons I'm fun. glad Tons I found you guys. Yeah, likewise. And, and you know what, Dave? <laughs> Dave, thanks so much for offering some some resources. And uh, Ross, you you know, man, I'll throw out the tank. You've been giving people resources and help. Uh, we really appreciate that. What you're doing for the community is so important. Um, Dave and Ross and everybody doing this. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys. And, uh, you know, as, as we go many, many more weeks down the line, I hope we can all take our, our stuff to where we want it. And we'll, well do it together. So this is great. If you guys have any final words, Dave, I'll let you go ahead and start. Uh, we'll go down to Ross, B. Steven, and then anybody else, and then we're going to go ahead and conclude this uh, this long innovators think tank. Yeah, appreciate it. No, look, uh, I th- I think the the end of this call just exemplifies um, what you were saying about community. Uh, I really do believe in, in karma and kind of paying it forward and you know helping other people out. And um, w- what we were talking about earlier about uh, innovators and having some sort of fun or something like that. That, that's something on my mind as well that I might kind of um, push on you guys in the future, but it's more to do with charity and non-profits because I, I pick one charity every year and I just donate my skill to them and help them out. And what I found is I can help them out to a certain extent with web design and online, but there's lots of other facets that they need. So I see even collaboration here that we can we can all pay it forward. It's not necessarily that we all have to just donate with money. We have skills that we can help each other out or we can help good causes out as well with. I'll donate my sushi. That's so real. <laughs> That's so real. You know, Dave, I, I, I couldn't agree more with you, sir. And over time, as we take your skills, my skills, uh, Ross, B, Steven, Sushi, everybody who joins every week, um, we're going to help to continue need to push people to the next level um and i'm really excited for that so dave i'm serious when i say having you in this tank means a lot to me ross what's up brother give us some final words um i will just say if anyone like aside from the ai stuff if anyone needs help with doing any of these things or wanting to do some of these things or wants to try any of our beta it's completely free to try apps not ai related and if you're like someone that doesn't have enough money to pay for hosting or anything like that or cPanel let us know and uh, we will do what we can to try and accommodate you with either our partners or straight up giving you infrastructure that we have that we can let you use or connecting you with our partners at canva and maybe getting you a free subscription for a year so like, there's definitely things that can happen so don't don't be afraid to reach out is what I will say Ross, thanks so much for that note. B. Steven, you're up on stage, man. If you had anything you wanted to say to the tank before we leave, I'll let you go ahead and do it, sir. Cool. No problem, Steven. Thanks Thanks for coming. Sushi, I'll let you go ahead and say something. Sorry about that. You're good. Sushi, go ahead and tell us, man. Give us the final All right, so I definitely am excited to hear that you guys have a lot of the knowledge I'm missing, and I hope that I can offer uh, sushi to you guys one day soon. That's, you know, we could all, if you ever do like 
public meetings or whatever, I'll definitely donate my catering services. That's great, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mattia, Kevin, uh, Kevin, we'll let you go first if you had anything. And then Mattia and guys, then we'll, we'll get wrapping up. I'll make it real quick. Uh, Dave, you're the goat, bro. Like coming in week after week, you, you've just been awesome. Same with you, Steve. GD, you're awesome too. Uh, Ultra Erica, you guys have been in here. And, and Tala, sorry if I just messed up your name. And all the guys that have stayed here the entire time. This has been the longest think tank yet. And it was obviously the best one yet. Uh, thanks to everybody that spoke today. Two of the most transparent speakers of their businesses. Wow. I, I'm still blown away. I'm going to have to go back, watch it two, three, maybe four times to digest everything, section it out. Uh, you know, Ross, like, you're a game changer. Uh, that's what I'm going to end with. And I hope to see you week after week. That's awesome. Mattia, you got anything for us? Just really the same thing as Kevy. Appreciate everybody coming. This was definitely my favorite as well. And can't wait to see everybody next week, really. This is awesome, guys. Thanks. Shout, shout out Kevin. Josh Hellman. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Shout out Josh Hellman for being the main host, you know, with the most – to give in this Facts. entire like uh, spaces this entire time, you know, he's put in the focus uh, for, for what are we going on? Four and a half? Like, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, this so man, for saying has, that, man has gas for days. I love that. You know, and again, it's because you guys, you guys give me that inspiration to keep keep rolling and keep keep making it happen. So, thank you guys. I hope I see you next week at the Innovators Think Tank. Uh, it'll be number six. Sorry about that, guys. I think we had to get – Sushi loves to run the uh, run the claps. It's not that we don't love it. Um, but, look, this has been awesome, man, and I hope I see everybody next week. I hope you have a killer, killer week, okay? Don't forget to keep innovating. Don't forget to create value, okay? Um, look, look, we live in an era where sometimes it can be easy to start going through the motions and, and you know, not – create the value in your family for yourself, for your, for your health, for your wealth that you know you can. And so I just want to push you guys this week just to do the most, do what you guys, um, you know, know is the, is the right thing to do. And, you know, you have a whole team of people behind you that when Saturday comes at two, we want to hear what's good. We want to learn from you and we want to push you even further. Um, so look, this is a community of innovators. We're, I'm really, really glad to have each and every one of you here. Uh, tell your friends, you know, let's, let's keep uh, moving this momentum um, to a place where, you know, if somebody comes with a project or a business or an idea, they come into our community and it's impossible for them to not be successful, that they collaborate with everybody that they, uh, they need, that they take it to the place where uh, it's impacting the world. Um, and we can do that with the community of innovators. So guys, thanks so much for joining me for four and a half hours. Um, Dave, I know we've, we've been like using up a lot of our focus and Time to go into park mode. Time to go into park mode. Enjoy your Saturday night, everybody. Um, I hope you guys have a great one. Keep innovating and be great, okay? Um, have a fucking great Saturday and a great rest of your week. And uh, innovators out. Continue to push people to the next level, um, and I'm really excited for that. So, Dave, I'm serious when I say having you in this tank means a lot to me. Ross, what's up, brother? Give us some final words. Um. I will just say if anyone, like, <clears throat> aside from the AI stuff, if anyone needs help with doing any of these things or wanting to do some of these things or wants to try any of our beta, it's completely free to try apps, not AI related. And if you're, like, someone that doesn't have enough money to pay for hosting or anything like that or cPanel, let us know. And uh, we will do what we can to try and accommodate you with either our partners or straight up giving you infrastructure that we have that we can let you use or connecting you with our partners at Canva and maybe getting you a free subscription for a year. So Dude, like, there's definitely things that can happen. So don't, don't be afraid to reach out is what I will say. Ross, thanks so much for that note. B. Steven, you're up on stage, man. If you had anything you wanted to say to the tank before we leave, I'll let you go ahead and do it, sir. Cool. No problem, Stephen. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Sushi, oh, I'll let you I'll go ahead and say something. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're good. Sushi, go ahead and tell us, man. Give us the final All word. right. So I definitely am excited to hear that you guys have a lot of the knowledge I'm missing, and I hope that I can offer uh, sushi to you guys one day soon. That's, you know, we could all, if you ever do, like, 
public meetings or whatever, I'll definitely donate my catering services. That's You're great, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mattia, Kevin. Uh, Kevin, we'll let you go first if you had anything. And then Mattia and guys, then we'll, we'll get wrapping up. I'm going to get real quick. Uh, Dave, you're the GOAT, bro. Like, coming in week after week. You, you've just been awesome. Same with you, Steve. GD, you're awesome, too. Uh, Ultra Erica, you guys have been in here. And, and Tala, sorry if I just messed up your name. And all the guys that have stayed here the entire time. This has been the longest think tank yet. And it was obviously the best one yet. Uh, thanks to everybody that spoke today. Two of the most transparent speakers of their businesses. Wow. I, I'm still blown away. I'm going to have to go back, watch it two, three, maybe four times to digest everything, section it out. Uh, you know, Ross, like, you're a game changer. That, that's what I'm going to end with. And I hope to see you week after week. That's awesome. Mattia, you got anything for us? Just really the same thing as Kevy. Appreciate everybody coming. This was definitely my favorite as well. And can't wait to see everybody next week, really. This is awesome, guys. Shout, shout oh, out Josh Hellman. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Shout out Josh Hellman for being the main host, you know, with the most to give in this Fox. entire, Fox. like, uh, spaces this entire time. You know, he's put in the focus uh, for, for, what are we going on, four and a half? Like, yeah, that, that's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. This so man, much for saying has, that, man. has gas for days. I love that. You know, and again, it's because you guys, you guys give me that inspiration to keep keep rolling and keep keep making it happen. So thank you guys. I hope I see you next week at the Innovators Think Tank. Uh, it'll be number six. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I think we had to get Sushi loves to run the uh, run the claps. Not that we don't love it. Um, but look, this has been awesome, man. And I hope I see everybody next week. I hope you have a killer, killer week, okay? Don't forget to keep innovating. Don't forget to create value, okay? Um, look, look, we live in an era where sometimes it can be easy to start going through the motions and, and you know, not create the value in your family for yourself, for your, for your health, for your wealth that you know you can. And so I just want to push you guys this week just to do the most, do what you guys um, you know, no is the, is the right thing to do. And, you know, you have a whole team of people behind you that when Saturday comes at two, we want to hear what's good. We want to learn from you and we want to push you even further. Um, so look, this is a community of innovators. We're, I'm really, really glad to have each and every one of you here. Uh, tell your friends, you know, let's, let's keep uh, moving this momentum um, to a place where, you know, if somebody comes with a project or a business or an idea, they come into our community and it's impossible for them to not be successful that they collaborate with everybody that they, uh, they need, that they take it to the place where uh, it's impacting the world. Um, and we can do that with the community of innovators. So guys, thanks so much for joining me for four and a half hours. Um, Dave, I know we've, we've been like using up a lot of our focus and time to go into park mode, time to go into park mode. Enjoy your Saturday night, everybody. Um, I hope you guys have a great one. Keep innovating and be great. Okay. Um, have a fucking great Saturday and a great rest of your week. And uh, Innovators out.